waiting for the bus. Oh, yeah. Now, then you keep talking yeah. about my fucking kick. And you're annoying me and aggravating me. And I'm trying to enjoy my kick. Hey, roll us on your wrist of plain giant. Standing at the bus stop, sucking on a lollipop. Once she gets pumping, it's hard to make the hottie stop. Hottie stop, stop, stop. You ready? All right, now. <laughs> this will be a crazy ride. I'm warning you now. The following video is broadcasting live, and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. What up and welcome back. I'm Jane, the plainest Jane, and I deliver syrup in the form of black news and celebrity entertainment. Listen, y'all, today my cat is nine years old. Leo, happy birthday. This is why I've been letting you slide. You, you've been just doing what you want to do today. Look, look at the people. I ain't got nothing in my hand yet. Come on. we Come on in, everybody. Hit thumbs up on your way in. If you don't hit thumbs up for me, hit thumbs up for the cat. God dang it. I know. Uh, we as people, we have a tendency to like animals more than people. You can trust animals a bit, a bit more than you can trust people. Where the treats go? Oh, here they go. We gotta wish the birthday boy a happy ninth birthday. I've had him for nine years. I got him when he was four-ish, five-ish weeks old. Okay, and it is his birthday today. Gave him some wet food. Let him get away with some things he shouldn't have been getting away with. And, okay, it's his day. Now, where did the one go to be dropped? Here. Come on, I got you. I, I, I got you. Give me a second. Come on, Leo. All right. All right. You've had your time to shine. Now it's time to get down. Get down. Get down. All the way down. Not just... Come on. Come over here. Get down. Buddy, don't make me embarrass you in front of your little friends. Get down. Get down. Leo, get down. All right. So he's been getting away with stuff today, so he just feel like he ain't got to listen to nothing. Tomorrow, we back to our regularly scheduled program. Matter of fact, not even tomorrow. What we got? An hour and 22 minutes, and we back to our regularly scheduled program because, baby, he got the game best. Uh, I hope y'all have had a wonderful week. I know it is so long since I've seen all of y'all. I truly have missed you all tremendously. I've been trying to get back here online, but y'all know I got my regular nine to five, my real life, um, and the things that I do outside of YouTube. Now, I find this, you know, th th you know y'all know things are always sticky in Hollywood and in real life, right? And y'all know that my channel... And how I navigate my topics and my subject matter, um, I always use the metaphor of driving a bus. So as a, a an experienced part-time bus driver, let's talk about the bus driver slander. Where am I going with this? If you're in the Discord, you already know my stance. But I'm going to unravel this for you all. This is a really interesting conversation that truthfully is not affecting anyone per se in real life. Like, it's really not. It's just a convo to have, to pass some time, and to engage in a dialogue. And everybody has their own think pieces and their ways about seeing it. So it, it it's really not a real-life construct because this dialogue, honestly, it's not going to change anybody's opinion about their standards and who they date and what they require, right? Like it's, it's honestly not. And that's my opinion, but let me know down below, put a one in the chat. If you would date a bus driver, put a two in the chat. If you wouldn't date a bus driver, let's start with the original question, put a one in the chat. If you would date a bus driver and a two in the chat, if you would not date a bus driver. Okay. Let's get that out the way, and then I'll look at those results in a second. But look, y'all, it's going to get sticky on this bus tonight. Happy Friday. Um, it's time to sit back, relax, grab you something to drink, grab you a snack, roll you something up, hit your bong, do whatever you need to do, okay? We're going to get into some things. It's going to be sticky. Um, I might hurt some feelings. I'm, I honestly might hurt some feelings. But you know what I did? I care about y'all. And and I look out for y'all. And I brought, I, I got I got my box of tissues ready on hand for the hurt feelings. <laughs> you know, I've got my tissues ready for the feelings 
that I'm going to hurt. Okay. Now we're going to get started and dive right into all of my thoughts. I actually want to go over some of this footage with you all because people heard what they wanted to hear. People heard what they wanted to hear. People were projecting their own insecurities. People were triggered by this conversation and they heard stuff that honestly never even transpired, never even took place. But don't worry. Oh, but don't worry. We've got our tissues here and ready for you. All right. That's for the feelings that we may hurt because we are aware that sometimes the truth and accountability, oh, accountability and the flat out truth is not always comfortable. Do we all understand that? No, yes, no, maybe so. Okay, we might not, but you're going to learn today. On this bus, you're going to learn. So let me know when you need a tissue if you feel like people's other people's standards hurt your feelings. All right. Now, if you are a bus driver, I know I'm a bus driver, right? But I don't think Ianla is my, I don't think I am Ianla's type, right? And it also goes without saying that Ianla is going to be 69 years old this coming September. She's going to be 70. She's already 69. She's going to be 70. So she already ain't my type. If it wasn't for the fact that she's a woman, it's the fact that she's nearly 70 years old. But if you are a bus driver, do me a favor, y'all. Do me a favor, Throw your applications at Iyanla Van Zandt because Iyanla said that she date bus drivers, okay? Iyanla said that she's dating bus drivers and I have quite literally, quite literally never seen a 70-year-old pick me. I have never seen, at least not one that's, that's this outright, and loud and articulating it maybe in some um in the nuances that lie beneath certain actions but i have never seen a 70 year old pick me but baby iyanla made history with this one give it up give it up give it up give give it up delicious give it up delicious baby because i i just i don't understand why why she's going this hard to be a pick me at the end of the day, but we're 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 going to we're going to get in for it. But give give it up, delicious. Give it up for the seventy year old pick me. We 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 we've gotta give it up for. It. It's bold. It's brave. It's risky. You would think the young people will be doing this. Oh, but no. We've got, we've got our, uh, we've got our, our, the older generations and our elders coming here and encouraging you to stay with a man because what? He's a good man, Savannah. That's a good man, Savannah. Woo! We're going to get into it. I have, y'all know I have a plethora of thoughts. There's so much that I want to speak about, but I feel like this bus driving situation is going to take up the entirety of the night. And I do plan on opening the phone lines because I do want to hear from you. And listen, you don't have to agree with me. We can have a constructive dialogue. We can have a passionate dialogue without us having to disrespect one another, right? So I will be opening the phone lines um, a little bit later, okay? Now, let me see what y'all had said about if y'all would date a bus driver. I said, put a one if you would, put a two if you wouldn't. I see a lot of ones. And that, you know what? That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. And I, I, I want to I wanna connect the correlation, okay? The correlation between the difference between Ebony K. Williams not wanting to date a bus driver and her stature um, and, and, and her income and her life placement versus ours. Because, like, we're not the same right? But I feel like there's some context, okay? There's some context missing here. So we're going to get started on Leo's birthday, okay? I, I wouldn't expect anything different from re regular everyday people who don't have the net worth, the access, the availability, the capital. Ebony K. Williams has a net worth of $3 million. So her dating a bus driver who might make 
let's just say 70, 70 to eighty thousand dollars a year. And sometimes in some places it's really more like fifty. But let's just go ahead and give it the benefit of the doubt and say seventy. To expect a woman that has a net worth of three million dollars to expect her to jump that far out of her social circle, her economic comfortability, to expect her to date that far down is asking a bit much. And this does correlate to everyday people like you and me. So listen, y'all, make sure, make sure that y'all hit thumbs up, have a seat on my bus. This is a bus, baby. I'm driving a bus talking about bus drivers. Make it make sense. Shout out to everybody in the live chat. Shout out to my channel members. Y'all are real. There's a little over 600 of us now, channel members. Um, shout out to everybody that subscribed. Shout out to everybody in the live chat. Shout out to everybody that likes to support the stream in a free way by hitting thumbs up. But also shout out to people that send myself or Leo cash apps for his birthday or just for general support, right? But let's get ready for takeoff because ah, ah we got some things to discuss and I do want to hear from you. Are y'all ready? Let's go ahead and get into it. The plane is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I loves me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me? Or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? All right, let's go ahead and get started. I want to get a couple of points off before we go into the video. All right, um, there are a couple of things that we need to go over in order to really add all the context. Because what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to take a couple of clips from social media and just go based off of two 60 second clips without really aggregating the entirety of the situation, gathering the context, the nuance, and everything surrounding this situation. And I feel like a great amount of that is missing. I feel like Ebony is being attacked because people only watched a 60, 80 second, 100 second clip. And they didn't really see that she agreed with the majority of what Iyanla had to say. 80 to 85% of what Iyanla was saying during that interview, Ebony agreed with it. A hundred percent. And people aren't catching that context and this clip has went viral. I guess, I think production knew it was going to go viral. Some people felt like it was salacious, but that's just media for you, right? Would you date a bus driver? Let's go ahead and get started. And outside of you wanting to support this stream, however you do, whether it's hitting thumbs up, whether it's sharing this video on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, your group chat, text message, whether it's sending a cash app, make sure to Proofread it, dollar sign, T-H-A, plainish, Jane. However you want to support the stream is okay with me. And I just appreciate your attendance, honestly. But the least you could do is do something for free. Hit like. Um, I really appreciate it. So listen, on today's episode of what the hell is wrong with y'all? What the hell is wrong with y'all? Okay, let's go ahead and just get into it. Iyanla Van Zandt, and I'm going to pull up the clip because there are some people in denial about this fact. I was in Demita Joe's chat yesterday, and there was a guy that was in denial about everything that Iyanla actually did and made up things that Ebony did, right? Iyanla Van Zandt presented Ebony K. Williams' personal preference as a problem. That is exactly what she did, and, and, and we're going to go ahead and start there. OK, someone says class structure is divisive, too. It, it class structure can be divisive. However, to expect a woman that's a millionaire to date somebody that's making 50 or 60 thousand dollars, it's not realistic. The same way that you got fat, ugly men that look like trick daddy that want to date a skinny, cute, young tenderoni. Unrealistic. You're not even good looking. You're not athletic yourself. So nobody talks about men and their unrealistic expectations, let alone their delivery. And we're going to get into that in a second later, too. Nobody talks about men and their very vain 
very surface level that sh your dress size and what you look like and whether you're wearing makeup or lace fronts has nothing to do with your character. And that's a lot of people's anchor talking point pertaining to this subject is what does the bus driver's salary got to do with his character? Well, actually, Ebony K. Williams never mentioned salary in this clip. She only mentioned that she doesn't want to date a bus driver. It's not always about salary. Sometimes it's about life placement. And will this is about socioeconomics. This is not even about a gender war or an occupational war. And a lot of people are turning it into, you're turning your nose up at blue collar workers. No, nobody is. But me being a grown woman, that's just about 30 years old, I wouldn't date a man that works at McDonald's. And so when we put that into context, when we listen to a woman that we know is a black woman, is a millionaire, is an entrepreneur, is an author, is a lawyer, she has a net worth of $3 million. Asking her to date that far out of her tax bracket is pretty unrealistic because should they create a family? And should she go into labor and decide, you know what, I want to take a year off because I want to be able to care for these children without just pushing them out and going right back to work. She can't easily make that decision because she can't lean on that man to financially support her, let alone his life placement right now. Why is that so difficult for people to understand? I don't get that, right? And so I feel like when a lot of women heard that question, us regular every day, because I ain't rich, right? I'm, I'm not rich. I'm not rich. In some places, the bus drivers make thirty-five to fifty thousand dollars. In other places, they make seventy to eighty. And then other people factor in the 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 capital that lies within uh, benefits, right? I'm here in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm telling you, if you're not paying any more than $1,200, $1,300, you're living in a place where you're dealing with rodents, infestation, or a massive amount of danger. It's not illegal to want to vet your men based off of not necessarily their salary, but their life placement and where they are within their career or where they aren't. Leo, what are you talking about? Nonetheless, this was a professional interview that Ebony K. Williams invited Iyanla Van Zant to have a conversation about, about the, the real subject matter of the interview was supposed to be about, and the conversation was intended to be about economic status and criteria and women showing up with so much quote unquote masculine energy and women that are supposed to be using their brains or women that need to be using their hearts more than they're using their brains. Yala Van Zant feels like there are too many women using their brains and not their hearts. And Yala Van Zant feels like more women, men need to be using their brains. Men are wired, men are put here to use their brains and women are put here to use their hearts. That's what the conversation was about, right? Iyanla turned around and asked Ebony, a millionaire, asked a millionaire a personal question about her personal preference and if she herself would date a millionaire and she honestly answered that question and the internet ain't been the same since. People have an issue with women having a simple, she didn't name off, he's got to be tall, chocolate, skinny, you know, slim. He's got to go to the gym five times a week. He's got to be this waist size, you know. But when you ask a man about their preference, oftentimes, what does it lead to? She asked that woman a personal question and what she, what, what Iyala proceeded to do was she presented that woman's personal preference as a problem when talking about femininity as it applies to either all women or black women because when we talk about the target audience of both of these women and especially Iyanla it ain't white woman 
So we talking about black women. So you're asking this one black woman about her preference and her, her because you're trying to gauge where she is or where she lands on a femininity scale. And honestly, the way Iyanla comes off, and listen, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with women possessing a certain amount of masculine energy. Okay, Leo, I got to put you out. You messing it up. Go on, get out, birthday boy. Get out, birthday boy. Jesus. We live in a different day and age. If we want women to stay soft and dainty and feminine and wait for a man to come save them, then you call them what? Dependent. They're dependent. You're waiting on somebody. You, and especially if you just so happen to have children, and even if you don't have children, you cannot just wait around for anybody, man, woman, Jesus, the aliens. You can't wait around for anybody to save you. So sometimes you might need a little bit of masculine energy. Women are paid less. D the data shows it. Men make more. And sometimes you have to be assertive. And then sometimes they still don't get it. And you have to be aggressive, let alone if you're working in a male-dominated industry. So if we're really talking about masculine energy and the fact that women need to release it, is Iyanla really the best representative, right? I don't have an issue with a little assertive aggressiveness, passive aggressiveness, whatever. But that's what Iyala defines as masculine. But baby, have y'all seen Iyala's clips of when she goes in on people? It's very masculine. She admits, I was a terrible mother, but I was a great father. Because she directed and she disciplined and had no emotion. She wants to force people into submission and to believe and to walk the path that she wants them to walk in. The way she conveys her points and the way she talks these things into people is very masculine. There's nothing dainty about the way she gets her point across. Has her delivery changed a bit since Fix My Life? A bit, but not much. I was on her live stream today about this. It was given very much masculine. You're upset that these women aren't conforming to the bullshit you're trying to shove down their throat. Not to mention how the reason why the dating pool is full of piss and so polluted is because women of your age, the 69 and 70 year olds, y'all pushed out and y'all birthed all of these men. And so you know the dating pool isn't full of a bunch of candidates who are quote unquote black millionaires. And so you want us to lower our standards so that we can make dating us and the access to us easier for your sons to reach without them having to work for it or without them having to meet our standard. Your generation did this, Iyanla, not us. Because how often do we find that in black households back in the 60s, 50s, 80s, 70s, whatever, 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 if you're, if you're above 15 and you're watching this video and you have male siblings or you've seen any dynamic within the, 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 the black family, they're harder and hella strict on the girls and they coddle the boys. Tell me I'm lying. And this is the whole point right here. The fact of the matter is she has a preference. She doesn't want to date a bus driver, period. When these niggas, when these Kevin Samuels and shits are out here saying, I'm not dating no big Shirley. She can't even fit in my Ferrari. I'm not dating a woman above a size six. I'm not dating a woman with little titties or small butt. I'm not dating that. Is that hurtful to women who don't meet that expectation or fit that criteria? Potentially. But are we out here crying a fucking river? No. Does that come off as abrasive or aggressive? Yes. But are they coddling us because we aren't their preference and they're out here dating and they want to choose the way they want to choose? No. Instead, we just entertain niggas who will date us women who are above a size six. A lot of people have noticed I've gained weight in the last year. Yup. And if there are men out here who don't want to deal with me because I'm a size 12, I'm not sitting up here trying to argue and say, that's so hurtful you won't 
date a woman over a size six, you ain't got a shit on. If I'm just going over to the men who enjoy love handle and, and who understand the joys and the luxuries that exist within plus size women because that doesn't speak to my character, right? My size doesn't speak, and the fact that I don't wear lace fronts doesn't speak to my character the same way an occupation doesn't speak to a man's character. And that's the whole pinnacle of this conversation. A job doesn't make a man. You don't have to, y'all don't pull these men aside and tell them about how they come off when they had, see, because it was funny when Kevin Samuels was doing it. All the men thought it was funny. Now, all the men are in a tizzy Oh, she sound like she throw she she putting her nose up at, at, at bus drivers. Do men not put their nose up at women they not interested in? They be fat, ugly, and flavor flav looking, and they want a skinny, pretty woman. Does anybody call them out? No, they just chuckle at the expectation and move the hell on. Why is it illegal for a woman to have preferences and it's okay for men? Stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Nonetheless, Iyanla presented Ebony's personal preference as a problem. And she literally asked this millionaire woman, would you date a bus driver? The woman said, no, if he owned the bus, I would, but otherwise, no. And Iyanla said, see, that's the problem. That's your problem. If he loves driving that bus and he loves his mama, why can't you date him? Excuse me? Excuse me? Iyanla says so many problematic things. So many problematic things within that interview and the live stream she did earlier today. She scolded Ebony for her stance or her preference. She scolded Black women in general for their expectations. And the conversation has largely turned into reprimanding Black women for what they desire or what they will or will not tolerate. And I think that that's bullshit. It's bullshit. You can't name me another race origin, creed, nationality out here. And I I Iyala is famous for talking to black women that way. Let's start there, right? But how many black men do you see her talk to that way? Don't worry, I'll wait. See, because the real fact of the matter is Iyala Van Zandt is one of those older women that look the other way when black men were being raised up or lack thereof. She looked the other way and expects black women to mate with men and finish mothering them in the way that she didn't even mother her own kids. And yeah, I said it because Yonda said it herself. She said, I was a terrible mother. We're going to listen to the clip in a second. She said, I was a terrible mother. I was a great father. So. Y'all are expecting us to pick up the pieces. And listen, you're a woman with limited options. You're about to be 70. Of course, you might maybe accept a little bit less. But for us young, supple, cute, beautiful. And not to say to Iyala, Iyala really doesn't look like she's going on 70 to me. She honestly looks like a 55-year-old woman, in my opinion, right? So I'm not trying to call her ugly or anything. But as you get up there in age, prime example, share. You start just doing or taking whatever because you like listen i ain't i ain't got that much longer go but you talking to 30 and 40 year old woman expecting them to bend their standards and to grade on a curb and it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense no other no 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 no, no other race of people are saying listen you're a little too uptight with what you want lower it a bit if you want to get a man that term, I can do bad all by myself. Some people hate it, but honestly, if it, it the term I can do bad all by myself isn't even about doing or being bad. First of all, it's cheaper to do bad all by yourself. But if you're all by yourself and you're happy and you fall in love with yourself in a way in which you never have before, it might have been a relationship you got all out of three years ago and you fall in love with yourself. That peace that you have is, you can't put a price tag on that. And just to get into a relationship, just to check off the I'm not lonely box, to sign up for hell and shit that's going to throw you off mentally, baby, I've been there. 
I've been there in an abusive relationship. It was difficult to leave. Data tells us it takes a woman in an abusive, a physically abusive relationship. It takes seven attempts before the victim of it, which is typically the woman, successfully gets out of that relationship. And I stayed in that relationship just because I didn't want to be lonely. I tried to leave several times. I probably tried to leave like eight, nine times until I successfully finally got out. But I still had to deal with vandalism. He still knew where I lived. He still knew where I worked, right? I'm not lowering my standards and just dealing with any Tom, Dick, or Harry because I don't want to be lonely and I'm afraid that the older generations are going to judge me. First of all, we should have been learning from y'all, older generation, y'all 70-year-olds. Y'all should be teaching us to learn from y'all's mistakes. See, because y'all dealt with Grandpa Charles, who had another family across town, who was knocking you across the room, pushing you down the steps, you lost your front teeth, you're wearing dentures now, and y'all tolerated anything because y'all didn't believe in divorce. Y'all believed in that ride or die shit. And really, you shall be teaching us to learn from you, but instead, you're teaching us to go out here and accept the bare fucking minimum. Y'all are teaching us that our standards are in the way of our happiness, and that's not true. You can be happy by yourself. You absolutely can. And I would rather be happy and at peace by myself and have, you know, calmness and a grip over my household and my environment rather than invite somebody in that's causing turmoil just because you need to sign up for a relationship because you ain't got one. It ain't that many out here. So just go sign up for some. Absolutely not. Something's wrong that you're telling us this. I'm wondering if it's just a dog whistle for you because you just want to be taking the pound town. Does Iyala just want a whole bunch of bus driver applications so she can get some dick? Because Iyala's been married twice. One time she was married to a bus driver. We're going to get into that a little bit later. So I'm wondering if she just wants to get taken to pound town and she's just saying this to troll. because she just won a whole bunch of bus driver applications so that she can get her macaroni and cheese stirred up every night or what. But the way she doubled down on it today lets me know that this is about a little bit more than eggplant for her. If you accept class structure, then dating down doesn't make sense. Mm, right, I, I do agree. Um, it, it, it depends on if you're dating outside of your tax bracket for somebody that makes 2000, 8000, maybe even let's just say 10,000 less than you. That's not really bending too much. Right. That's just being a little flexible. But to date, let, let's let's say let's just say Ebony K. Williams with a net worth of three million dollars. Let's just say let's keep it on a low scale. Let's just say she make five hundred thousand dollars a year. Why should she date a man that makes 60 to 70 thousand bucks a year? That doesn't make sense. And the equivalent within that context, which a lot of us women heard with understanding her net worth, her income, her disposable, her lifestyle, socioeconomics of it all was Iyan is asking her to take several bumps down the Planko board. Shout out to y'all who watch uh, The Price is Right or who have ever watched it. Iyan was asking her to step so far outside of her comfort zone. It's like, man. I make this, this man makes this, and that's not that's not shitting on him. Great that he makes an honest living, but that's not realistic for me, right? So would the average person on this stream date a bus driver? Yes, but would you date down, right? Would you take that demotion and income from a partnership uh, as, 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 as steep of a demotion? Would you take that much of a step down as Iola was asking Ebony to? That's the real nuance that's missing from this conversation. And I haven't heard anybody touch on that. If I make $120,000 a year, why should I be dating a guy that makes 37 k If she makes $300,000, $500,000 a year, why should she date a man that makes fifty dollars or $60,000? K? It was the leap. The leap is different for Ebony compared to us right but it's still it's almost like a free fall 
down there to get where he is. And that's just talking about money, not to mention sometimes your career placement and trajectory has a lot to do with your character development and your mentality and your social skills. And I don't want to teach you how to behave with my friends, how to make money. I don't like, I don't want to teach you all of that. That seems like a chore after a while. And honestly, black women, we've been there. We've done that. We've been there. We've done that. We've been there. We've done that. Most of us did it when we got fresh out of school, whether it was high school, college, or both. Some of us did it while we were in school. Dated men we had no business dating just based off of their life, life placement. But we'll get there. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. So I have a lot of thoughts. Oh, I wish I could go through all of y'all comments. Uh, but, you know, it 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 is a chore to build a man up, especially when either he doesn't want to be built up or he's tricking you into thinking he wants to be built up. But really, this is just part of his representative and what he does to keep you reeled in. But let's keep going, right? So, again, this conversation was the, the real subject matter of the conversation was intended to be about economic and status criteria, women, women showing up with so much or too much masculine energy, women using their brains more than they're using their hearts. And the conversation has largely turned into reprimanding Black women for what they desire or what they will or will not tolerate. And listen, for Iyanla to say, a man thinks or operates from the mind, women are supposed to think or operate from the heart. I'm trying to understand the, uh, I'm, I'm really trying to understand what the fuck is wrong with both? What's wrong with both? What's wrong with using both? There is no one gender that's supposed to use their brain and not their heart and then their heart. You're supposed to use them both. Hello? Like, what is this? I've learned that Iyanla Van Zandt is good with words and all she does is mix them around consistently to sell people shit. She's right two times a day like any other broken clock. Like Umar Johnson be right sometimes. Hell, Azalea Banks be right two times a day too. Another unhinged, broken clock, okay? But to act like women are not allowed to use logic and they're supposed to operate from a point of emotion all the time, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Allowing your heart to lead you and pushing logic aside, it can be very dangerous. And a lot of us have been there, done that before. We've learned from when, when we were younger and we first moved out of our people's house or, or, or uh, um, you know, whatever the case is. It can be very dangerous. Most of us did this earlier in school or fresh out of school. And you can't use your heart to protect yourself. When it comes to protecting yourself, when it comes to survival and life advancement, you can't use your heart to do that. So for you to say there are too many women operating from their brains and not enough operating from their heart is you want us to be dumb. And really, honestly, you're using your brain to pander to women who are either already just trying to be submissive to any Tom, Dick, or Harry. But Iyana very much uses her brain. She doesn't operate from a place of her heart. Not to mention she's dishing out this advice and she's seemingly a single woman. Not to mention she was married to and divorced from a bus driver. You cannot use your heart to protect yourself and there's nothing wrong with using both. And protecting yourself should always be a priority. But you can't do that if you're always working from a place of emotion, which is AKA your heart. A lot of us have been young and dumb before and being young and dumb is throwing logic out the window and operating from a place of pure emotion and nothing more. But I like him. But what are his life circumstances? He either ain't got no job, he lost a job, he goes from job to job, whatever the case is, that doesn't get you anywhere and no parent would advise their child to use their heart to do everything that they need to do in life. You know what that's called? That's called being naive. So Yon Van Zant sat there and said that there are not enough women who are using compassion and nurturing and elegance and divinity and majesty and holiness 
There are two and, and, and grace. She said there the, the problem is women who consider themselves to be a boss. The problem is women that consider themselves to be a diva or in charge, or they have massive assertiveness, or they're demanding. She said we need more grace, compassion, nurturing, elegance, divinity, majesty, holiness, X, Y, Z. If you want to call yourself a boss, if you're a CEO, why should if I'm a CEO, why should I not call myself a boss? And if I if my man is really my equal, what's wrong with me calling myself a boss? What's wrong with that? I don't know where Eon is trying to lead us, but baby, I ain't going. I got my neck brace on. It stops here. I got my neck brace on. I'm not going wherever the hell um, Auntie Grandma trying to lead us because it doesn't make any sense. And, well, let me read this super chat. Thank you so much live from NYC. I had two daughters and I don't want them to be inspired by a mentality that rarely gets results. Most women think like Ebony are singles or had short-lived marriages. Hmm, let me read this again so I can really understand your point. I have two daughters. Rarely gets results. Most women think like Ebony are single and have had short-lived marriages. I mean, Iyala has had two marriages and both of them ended in divorce and one of them abused her right? Was putting his hands on her when she was six months pregnant. Um, another one actually left her for somebody that they both knew. And she consistently called him broke. So whether they're short-lived marriages or long-term marriages, you're getting advice from a woman who has several failed marriages and she has yet to show us that this newfound formula of just going out and dating bus drivers and not thinking about money, salary, sustainability of our potentially growing family. We don't have anything to prove that this is actual logical advice that works. This is a single woman that admits that she still needs work because she still shows up and a um, she, because she's a control freak. Right. And a control freak is masculine based on her descriptors of these these different things. So she admits that she still needs work and she has two failed marriages and she's single right now. So. I don't know. Thank you for the super chat. I'm trying to understand. I'm, I don't want to. I don't want my daughters to be inspired by a mentality that rarely gets results. I mean, like, where are Iyana's results? I don't know, because I feel like Iyana is not married right now. Ebony has never been married. She's had a fiancé. She had broke things off with her fiancé. She's not married. So if that's the case, you know, he said most women that think like Ebony are single have had short-lived short marriages Iyala is single, two failed marriages. Ebony is single, no failed marriages because she's never been married. So if that's the case, you don't want advice for either from either one of them. If I'm interpreting your comment correctly, so how do we really know that Iyala's advice? Is solid, it works, it's foolproof. Can she show us other couples that she has coached or other women that she has coached and this has worked on? And they had, because even if it doesn't work on her and she's dishing this advice and it works for someone, where is the success rate? Because she says she's still in, what, what, I don't know if she used the term rehab or training, recovery. She said, I'm still in recovery. So if you're still in recovery, then you still don't have all the answers. And where's your knight in shine and armor since you got all the answers to how to get a nigga? Where's he at? Oh, he, oh, he doesn't. Because there's plenty, plenty of bus drivers, babe. I'm not sure if Iyala really is really willing to date a bus driver or she made a moot point and now she's just sticking by it. But there are more bus drivers than there are black, black bus drivers that are men. There are more black bus drivers that are men than there are men that have the net worth and the disposable income and financial security that Iyanla had. So if that's really true, she should be in a relationship right now. She should be on her way to marriage right now. She shouldn't be lonely. She shouldn't be single. 
I mean, using her 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 her, her logic against her. I'm just saying. Thank y'all for the super chat. At Miss Love Zone sends 1999 says great job, Queen. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all coming through and supporting. Thank you so much, Queen 67, for the 999 super sticker. I do appreciate that. All right, y'all are coming through. Now, let me continue with my points. Here's my thing. I feel like I feel like Iyanla Van Zandt is extra sensitive. Okay, extra sensitive and is willing and ready to coddle black men in their feelings. And she prioritizes them over black women and their feelings and how they feel about stuff. That's how I feel, honestly, because it's, it's what, what if that hurts that man? What if that hurt? What if, what if, it, what if it hurt? And it's, it's like, okay, there are things that they do too. And here's my point with this. I would love for Iyala to even the kill and speak to and reprimand and hold black men accountable for their expectations and for their standards and for their shortcomings and, and the vanity. Really speak to that. Because if you feel like it's vain and women shouldn't be worried about money, then men shouldn't be so hooked on looks. Let's talk about it. Speak to and reprimand because all, all you doing is badgering black women as if it don't take two to tangle or as if women are the only ones who, you know, have expectations that other people deem to be a bit mm, side eye and sus. No, black men have side eye and sus preferences and expectations and standards as well. Stop playing with me. You got the fat and ugly ones that want skinny and pretty ones that couldn't even do 10 jumping jacks or 10 push-ups or 10 jump ropes right now if you paid them to. But they not coming up off wanting a skinny woman and a pretty woman and a fit woman. Where are the videos and things calling that out? Where's it at? A lot of this, a lot of black men's expectations and their standards and what they're looking for in the dating world is based on imaginative sex. <laughs> they want to picture themselves having sex with the woman and they, they're thinking about if they're going to enjoy it based off of how she looks. It's vain. It's surface level. It's churlish. It's insubordinate. It's based on looks. Is Iyala going to have all this energy to... See, Iyala is the type of person to tell a woman, not on my watch. Not on... You know, she she's going to get there with you to beat you into submission to what she thinks. And she hasn't proven to be a healed woman and a woman capable of finding a long lasting relationship to even be qualified enough to be this aggressive while shoving this type of bullshit ass advice down our throats. Tell me I'm lying. We all seen Fix My Life. Some of the shit is funny because it's shock value, but in other words, it's like, that's not how you help people heal. You use these people's hurt to be harsh to them. Mo Nine times out of 10, they were black women. And you enjoy turning around and embarrassing them. Even worse than their original problems made them look you enjoy that. You relish in that. And that's a lot of what that older generation does. They envy the younger generation, especially if you got some looks to you. They envy the youth and they're rude to the youth. Oh, but not the men, not the black men. Oh, but they're always going to have some sideways ass energy towards the 30, the 20, the 40 year old black woman. But let a 40 year old that works at McDonald's at the fry station come in the house on Thanksgiving, what you want to eat, baby? Let me, but you, the man shouldn't have to make his own plate. Clear the way. Clear the way. Let's make his plate. Let's, don't hurt his feelings. Don't say that.
eat y'all a baby. I'm hip to your bullshit. And a lot of what the fuck you got going on, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. And if you ha- if you if you had this is the reason why I, I I mean like people want me to hop into Jerry Springer's slander. Jerry Springer was an equal opportunity dragger, exploiter, storyteller, whatever the case is. Iyala is not. She specializes in trying to beat black women into submission and reprimanding them for what they crave or what they desire or whatever area of them isn't healed yet. And it's clear Iyala is not fully fucking healed. She's not. A bus driver could provide for my bills, but not Ebony's. And that then got that lady hot. You can't bully her into dating somebody she doesn't want. Exactly. Exactly. And here's one of the bigger problems I have within this conversation that I heard Iyala Van Zandt. Let me get you some tissues. I see there's a couple of people in the chat who disagree. You can respectfully disagree, but you can get disrespectful and name call if you want to. My mods are going to get you out here, but here's a tissue for you, babes. Babes, do you need a tissue? And if you guys, if you're getting a little sensitive over the truth, we're going to get to delivery in a second because delivery does mean something. But (laughs) women are incriminated for delivery, but men are able to say whatever they want, however they want. And it's cool. It's funny. It's cute. It's a kiki. It's a cackle. But when women aren't coddling men that they omit, it's a problem. But when men state their standards about who they want and what they want, they're not coddling the people that they're omitting. I don't want a woman over a size six. I don't want a big Shirley. In other words, I don't want a fat woman. Hair always got to be laid. Hair always, some of them got a hair preference, a texture preference. Do do, do we see 10, 8, 89 videos made today about how they state their preferences and how it seems like they might be a little harsh to the people? Mm, no. So let's stop. Ebony never said anything bad about blue collar workers. And we going to get there. We going to get there. Okay. So Iyana said earlier today on her live stream. This is how I know she loves to be rape black women. It makes no sense. Iyanla Van Zant said, a lot of your standards are set up in such a way that your own father couldn't even meet those standards that you expect someone else's son to meet. Let me read that again just so that you understand. Iyanla said, a lot of your standards, Black women, a lot of your standards are set up in such a way that your own father couldn't meet those standards that you expect someone else's son to meet. People talk about if Iyanla has daughters. She did have a daughter that passed away. But the nerve of you to bring up something that I have no control of and connect that to my standards. Let's just say I had a shitty father. Let's say I had an absentee father who was on some Bryant McKnight shit, who valued his stepchildren more than me and barely checked in on me twice a year. What the fuck does that have to do with my standards? So, ma'am, what? If my dad, let's just say my dad was trash. Let's just say he was trash. Should I be expected to date trash or lower my standards to meet or match his level of subpar parenting? The nerve of you to think that you ate with that, Iyanla. A lot of your standards, your your own father couldn't even meet those standards. So, (laughs) no, you like to play in younger black women's faces. And because you have little to no options left because you're going on 70, 
right? You plan on meeting the Lord in the next 10, 15 years. And I'm being generous with that, right? No shade. You expect us to just accept any and every old thing. I think the fuck not. My father being shitty has nothing to do with my bar and where I expect niggas to be. There are a lot of people with shitty fathers out here who go out and find somebody who does something better than the way their father showed up in their life. And I mean, talking about standards, my father couldn't meet. I, I, I mean, my parents were broke up before I was even born. So I don't know how he showed up in a relationship. All I know is what I heard from this side and that side. And I wasn't there. They've got conflicting sides, right? You got her side, his side, and the truth. Three sides to every story. So you even talking about how my father showed up in a relationship, it makes no sense when I'm talking about an actual relationship. I can speak to his parenting skill or lack thereof, but I can't speak to his presence or lack thereof in a relationship. Make it make sense. Why did you think you ate with that? And are you accepting less? Because Iyala Van Zandt, you, you in the relationship that you have with your father has been quite turbulent. You even married a man just to get the approval of your father. So everything ain't been sweet with you and your parental relationship either. Why did you think that that was a flex this morning? T.W. says, Jane, my son thought you were a stud. Maybe you should get your son off the fucking internet. Do I really look like a stud? And I mean, if I was, I'd be extremely cute. But what was the point of your comment, babes? Your son thought, how old is your son? How about you tell us that? Do I really look like a stud to you? And it's okay if I do. You look like a cowardice ass nobody in my comments wasting your time this Friday evening. That's what you look like. You also look like a shitty parent, too. Get the fuck off my live. All right? Mm. Mm. I look like a stud. I had to highlight that shit, too. My son thought you were a stud. Oh, really? So... Black women are often told to adjust our standards. We're very often told that we need to adjust our standards because we've got societal pressures coming from all over the place, coming from all over the place. And it's almost as if Black men can say and do and attack women in whatever type of way. Black women are told to accept everything that they're presented with, especially if it's from a man. But then if you got a mammy or a pick me like Iyanla telling women, shut up, sit down, listen to that man. He's a good man, Savannah. Going up for these niggas in their pregnant, barefoot, submissive shit. It's almost as if, for example, Ebony shows up to the breakfast club and Envy turns up on her a bit. And she's expected to sit there like a pretty little cupcake and not return that type of energy. This is not the world. We don't have the privilege of being a white woman where a white woman can be gentle and remain calm. And everybody's going to prioritize her feelings. Case in point, Iyala on her live today. Black woman in the comments over and over and over again telling her how like it's not our responsibility to raise up a man or to deal with a man that makes significantly less than us because it can be stressful. It can be taxing when you're dealing with a man and you make 40 or so percent more than him. He's oftentimes angry. He's oftentimes triggered. You and your life placement and your career trajectory is constantly um, it's constantly triggering and reminding him of where he is not in life. He has an attitude. You can't go out to eat as much as you want to because he's insecure that he cannot pay for these things. He cannot provide these things. It's not easy dating a man who makes less than you. It's not easy. It's not.
And it's only but so much you can do to make yourself small to help him and his ego feel a bit more inflated to try to make it seem even when it's really not. He giving you whatever he can, whenever he can, because you're paying the bills. He might give you $400 a month. The rent might be $1,200. The BGE might be $300. And everything else might be an extra little $300, right? That's almost like $2,000. And he just giving you a little $350, $400, whatever he can afford because you're quote unquote working with him. It's not the resentment ain't always coming from the side of the breadwinner. Sometimes the resentment is coming from the side of the man who feels like I should be able to provide, but I can't. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm not, I'm not even asking you to go anywhere expensive. I like to go to either Fridays or Outback two times a week. I do. The check don't be no more than 36, 47, 52 bucks. I'll pay for it. I don't care. This is what I want. I want to go out and be in public sometime. And then you can, I was in a relationship with this guy one time and I wanted to go out. He was like, why don't we just stand here and have some hot dogs? And I'm like, I don't want no hot dogs. I don't want to make anything. I just want to go and have one appetizer from Outback, the coconut shrimp, the bread, have a glass of wine, go on about my business. We go out, we have it. The bill is literally $36. I pull out my card and I pay and he got the biggest attitude. Why would you just, why would you pass me the card under the table and let me pay for it? You got me out here in front of all these people looking like I can't pay for shit. And I'm like, regular couples, they switch off on who pays for the bill often. The, I mean, even if you do make the same around about the same amount of money, the man don't always pay. And if we're in a relationship, like, what's the problem with me? Pay? You want me to do this whole, I ain't going to call it, look down, look down. So that you can pay with it. It's, it's still got my name on it. It's still like, and then an, ad, an attitude the whole time we're sitting at the table because they feel like, oh, she order, I can't really order much. I get what you want. This is not an expensive restaurant. We're not spending no more than a hundred bucks. Then the whole way home and the rest of the night, they got a whole piss poor attitude. So then you get to the point where you start not literally making yourself small by not wanting to go out and doing shit that you don't want to do because you're dealing with an insecure man. It's not okay. It's not easy. It's, it's, it's very uncomfortable. But to get back to the point, Black women are often told to adjust our standards because there's a slew of societal pressure coming from all over the place. People with the, 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 the famous quote, what happens when time goes by and you're still lonely? You know, you can hop into a relationship just to cross off the uh, not lonely checkbox, but still be miserable as hell. Still be just not even still be miserable as hell, become miserable as hell because you were happy and you were at peace and you fell in love with yourself and you healed some things that needed healing in, in, in the interim between your last relationship and the one that you just jumped in just to not be lonely, right? And it is important to find peace in being alone and falling in love with yourself and prioritizing yourself to better understand what elements of dating or people disturb your peace so that you can better decide what you will and will not deal with. It's called boundaries, people. It's called boundaries. And Iyanla and some of y'all are using math equations like it's just that simple to plug shit in. And, and, and again, Iyanla is sitting up there 70 and single. SS. 70 and single, dishing out some abrasive advice that is not conducive to the plight and the experience of the black woman. Dishing out this advice and she doesn't have near, near power couple or example to show that this is actually good advice. Not only do we know that it's trash advice, where can you show us that it actually worked since you dishing it out? right? Iyala and some of y'all are using math equations to get us to adjust our standards for romantic relationships as if it's just that simple. It takes a bit more than probabilities, right? Because that's, that's what Iyala is talking about. Well, it ain't but so many good men out there lowering your standards a little bit to give more men access to you, as opposed to requiring that men meet a certain bar, 
how dare you come down on a woman and say, because listen, when you're dating, you you know, you go on these dating apps, Tinder, Grindr, or whatever they are, people list their preferences and there's nothing wrong with that. There's some things that are negotiable. There's some things not. Let's just say I was on a dating app and I want a guy that makes $90,000 a year. Um, I want him to have his own home, but um, if he has an apartment, that's okay too, right? But I also want him to be tall and dark. Let's just say I find a man that meets all those expectations, but he's light and short. Those are my negotiables. How he looks, the physical shit, the vanity shit. How dare you tell me that my non-negotiables, I need to bend on those. Otherwise, I'm not going to find anybody because you're going strictly based off of probabilities, flat out math off of a calculator. And that is not how love and that is not how dating works. It takes a bit more than probabilities in, in a basic math equation to determine whether you had the ability or the patience or the willingness to tolerate certain traits and characteristics from people, especially when you consider longevity. There are some people in this dating world who don't want to waste their time. And why fall in love with somebody that doesn't meet your prerequisites just to have a short, good time, knowing that long term, you're not going to be able to settle down with that. Because once you catch feelings from somebody, it's hard to break that bond. And let's get into the spiritual aspect of it, which is the unnecessary soul tie. We all grown, right? Most people, most people are not waiting to get married until they have sex. Some are, right? But most ain't. So what's the point of me sitting here falling in love with you when I know what I want on a long-term basis, right? I'm looking down the road and seeing if you have what it takes to really like go on a long-term journey with me. And I realize based off of my, 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 my standards, my boundaries, my preferences, that you don't have what it takes. What's the point of me getting attached to you, then having to detach from you at some point? Everybody's not good at detachment. Hell, I might be good at detaching, but you may not be, which may cause a crazy person to keep showing up to my door every day, whatever's going on. And then I have this unnecessary soul tie to you too. Now that we done did a little something, something, we done knocked a couple of boots. Now I have an unnecessary soul tie with someone that I knew from the beginning didn't have what it took to actually stay in my life throughout the long run if I'm looking for a long-term partner. So no, I'm not just settling for any Tom, Dick, or Harry because Miss Iyala Van Zandt wants to get her boots knocked and she's claiming she'll date a bus driver, but I ain't seen TMZ pop up and catch her with no goddamn bus driver. I ain't heard her come out and say, here's my bus driver, man, and I love him. All I know is she used to be married to a bus driver and they got divorced. So at what point is this convincing me? At what point, if you have a preference about, and again, Ebony never mentioned life placement. I'm, I'm sorry, Ebony never mentioned salary, right? Because sometimes it's about life placement. It's about you wanting to acquire a different skill set that transcends beyond whatever it is that you already have. Okay. So sometimes it's about life placement, not even about the salary. I don't want to date anybody that works at McDonald's because I'm concerned about, first of all, I worked there for four years, but see, I was a teenager and I feel like it's, it's, it's an appropriate place to work when you're 16. But I don't want to deal with somebody that's got to deal with McDonald's customers every day. I don't want to deal with anybody that has to smell like they work at me <laughs> because there's a certain smell, that grease and everything. Oh, it's annoying. And then at the end of the day, you also have, um, you also have, you know, the income. So when somebody has a, just like, look, it's a preference. Pilots make a lot of money, right? They fly planes. Okay. I wouldn't want to date a pilot. They're not home enough. I need more presence. I need you to be, I need you to be here. And so 
I can say I don't want to date a McDonald's worker, but there are some high end workers. I wouldn't want to date a rapper either. I don't I, that their lifestyle and whatever. It's not for me. Pilots and rappers are high earners. So there are some occupations. It's okay to not want to date. That's not me shitting on them. That's me being honest about it. Some people would say, I don't want to date a pilot because look, they might die. That's not condescending. That's keeping it realistic about the probabilities and the chances of what could happen to you on that job, your mentality, your availability, your life placement, and everything else. And everything else. So when I say that Iyanla and some of y'all, because I see some of y'all in the chat, say um, some of y'all are using math equations to get us black women to adjust our standards for romantic relationships as if it's just that simple. It takes more than probabilities in a basic math equation to determine whether you have the ability, the patience, or the willingness to tolerate certain traits and characteristics. And a great amount of people are oversimplifying the process of vetting a mate, really oversimplifying it. Just date anybody. Forget what you actually wanted. You just need to get somebody. I don't think so. Using nothing more than probabilities. Most of these men are below your standards. So if you want a man, lower your standards. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Okay. Let me see. There are a couple of y'all I want to block. Go ahead. Say, say something else so I can block you. Okay. If you disagree and you want to be disrespectful with your disagreements, say something else so I can block you, please. So, nah, let people stand on exactly what they want. Men do. All of men's metrics are based off of physical appearance, which have nothing to do with standards. Some of the most homely women, right? The term homely comes from most women who actually tend to the household and keep your house spick and span are not quote unquote lookers. So that's where the term, oh, she looks very homely comes from. Meaning she's not your IG baddie. She's not, you know, worried too much about her physical aesthetic. She's worried about her character, your household, your kids, and y'all's ability to sustain and maintain all of those things. So let people stand on exactly what they want to stand on. Whatever their preference is. I mean, hell, I wouldn't date a Flavor Flav. But with me having gained a few pounds, who would I be to say, I mean, who would I be? I mean, it, it would be my preference. But who would I be to say, I want I want a skinny nigga that's in the gym five times a week when I'm never in the gym? I barely want to take a walk. Like, that doesn't make sense. And a lot of people have nonsensical preferences. But hey, Kevin Samuels preached to his fan base and all them niggas that it's okay to call women fat. And you had the big, the, the fattest and the ugliest and they look like they ain't brushed their teeth in three weeks. Look like they need to take a bath immediately. Oh, but they want a size six pretty fine spicy Latina or whoever, whatever they want. Let people want what they want at the end of the day. If they end up lonely, they end up lonely. But you don't have the right to tell people to lower their standards because you're going off of some math equation. Compatibility and finding a romantic partner that you can deal with that's not going to drive you crazy because you can be in a relationship that drives you nuts. I've been there before. I mean, when I finally got out of it and I healed my friends were like, you were not yourself when you were in that relationship and you were trying to get out. I, I and, and when I play it back, I wasn't myself. I was in a relationship that drove me crazy. I didn't want to be alone and it was an abusive relationship and it was difficult to leave. So we, we've been there, done that. Right. To be honest about black woman, what, what Iyala Van Zandt, Iyala Van Zandt, Van Zandt was on her live earlier today talking about how did this turn into a black woman thing? I'm speaking about woman in general. Iyala, be for fucking real. 
What's your demographic? Don't act like you don't know your demographic. We know your demographic. You don't. You use your brain too often and not your heart. You know damn well what your demographic is. White women do not prioritize you. You are not the voice to black women. And white women definitely are not dating down. And a Becky called into your show today and told you what us black women have been saying repeatedly. And you heard it when it came from that. He, she said, I want a white woman to call in. White woman calls in and she said, hmm. I see what you're saying. The white woman said, it's difficult to date, date men that make significantly less than you. She heard Becky. Oh, but when it came to us black women saying the same thing, she omitted us. She dismissed us. And so, Ianli, you're absolutely talking to black women. Your audience, your core audience is not anything other than black. That's what you give, that's how you present yourself, and that's what it is. And to be honest, for you to be telling us to go date a damn, um, to go date somebody that's extremely far out of our tax bracket, truthfully, we've done that already. We've been there, we've done that, we got the t-shirt and the shoes to prove, okay? And we still have the emotional scars to prove that we've already done that before. And you have too. There's a specific type, let's just say, right? There's a specific type of hot stove that burned us. It might be the way we were dating. It might've been the men that we were selecting. A certain type of men that we were selecting represents the hot stove in this metaphor and it burned us and we did it more than once. So we've learned like, listen, this might not represent all of them, but I'm not trying to get burned anymore. So I'm not, I'm, I'm going to avoid this certain type of man in the dating pool because I've been burned. We'd be fools to keep going back and touching it because it may just be cold this time. Loosen up. It might not be hot this time. Lower your standard. My standard is to not get burned, right? This is a, this is a hot stove. But you come in here all 70 years old using your elder privilege. Listen to your elders, the older, listen to your grand, so much wisdom to say there's plenty of stoves out here. All of them ain't hot. But we've had our own, see, first of all, advice is not one size fits all. It never is. But when it comes to your own personal life experiences and something that's burnt you two or three times, a stranger can't come up and say, well, touch it again. The fourth time might not be hot this time. I don't think so. I don't think so. So logically, we're not taking those type of chances. Logically. And that makes sense. And when I say we've done that already, this is pertaining to lowering our standards. So let me let me let me paint the picture for you. Let me let me let me elaborate, right? Fresh out of school, high school, college, whatever, and or the first time we moved out of our people's house. We settled for a guy because when we were in high school, we fantasized about the guy that we wanted to date. Oh, I want him to be in this field or that field. And I want him to have this and that. But as soon as we get a taste of the real world without the uh, the drawbacks of our parents being overbearing and hovering over us and curfews and shit like that, we be out here living, okay? And a lot of us Black women have already tried and settled for a guy that we knew we had no business dating based on his life placement. We might not even have been able to articulate it at that time. It was a small guy I was dating when I was 19. We might not have been able to articulate it, but we settled for a guy that we had no business dating based on his life placement and the areas in which he lacked. And we spent countless hours of precious time, emotions, and patience, and nurturing a young-minded man, despite his age, and trying to motivate him, to elevate him, to want to do better. And some of them, you know, they pretend. They pretend that they're interested in changing their lives for the better, but it never materializes. 
If it's anything that my late teens and early 20s taught me, it's that potential ain't shit. And trying to play Bob the Builder to a nigga that don't have no ambition when he's supposed to be leading you oftentimes doesn't work. Sometimes it does, because sometimes they might just be having a little depressed period or whatever. Um, I've seen it work a couple of times, but most of the time you find a nigga ain't got shit, can't keep a job, quit jobs, get fired, <laughs> and have four jobs in the last two months. But he gonna talk that talk. Oh, I wanna do better. I wanna start this business. I wanna do that business. I wanna do better. that <laughs> potential. It 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 doesn't materialize. And when it starts to feel like a chore. When it starts to feel like you're raising a child, you're picking up where his mother left off. And really, where did his mother leave off? Because was his mother ever around? It's not my job to raise this nigga. It's not my job to instill some get up, go out, get out and make something of yourself into this nigga. There's nothing wrong with inspiring your partner, but having to create the motivation from the ground up and hoping that it sticks when all they do is they waste your time and they waste your emotions and they waste your money. And then they guilt trip you when you're ready to leave. You're ready to leave and it's, oh, you think, oh, you think you better? And then you got to deal with the gaslighting and them trying real hard for three weeks. And then, okay, I might stay because he really trying now. And you get comfortable and he realized you stand and then he just stopped trying because it wasn't a him to try at all. It was just a gimmick to get you to stay. Don't nobody got time for that. We did that shit in our 19s and 20s. And, and again, it's not always about money. Can you contribute to this family that we might make? At the end of the day, if we get into a relationship and we doing the bump and grind, a kid could come at any moment. At any moment. It's not only about do you have the money it takes to maintain this child. Are you really going to put in this effort to, to care for this child, the emotional labor that it requires, the physical labor, going out and playing baseball with the kid or, or, or whatever it is, doctor's appointments, whatever the case is. It's not even always about money. It's about life placement. It's about what you aspire to do, your life's trajectory. It's not, it's, it's really not even all, always about salary. So that is, it's, 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 when you put all of that into a man, it's valuable hope and energy that we could have been pouring into ourselves or another man who was really ready to better his life. And it's very taxing to build a man up. Okay. Taking, taking the place and taking on the duties that his mama should have instilled in him. Again, it's okay to inspire your partner when it comes to, um, you know, just motivation. It's okay to inspire your partner, but when you have to instill it yourself, it's, 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 it's too much. It's too much. It starts to feel like a chore. You're paying most of the bills. They're giving you whatever they can afford, which sometimes they be lying about. It can easily turn into a very stressful dynamic. They resent you. You trigger their insecurities easily because you're far more successful than they are. You're a constant reminder of what and where they aren't in life. This is a conversation about socioeconomics. This is not a conversation that is a gender war or gender bashing. And so, um, good point. Okay. Good point. Woo. I done barely took a sip of water. So much I had to get off my chest and I still have a lot to get off my chest about this subject because baby, It's a lot. Coming up next, I want to get into intent versus impact. I do think it's very important to talk about intent versus impact because a lot of times people feel like because I didn't because I didn't intend to hurt your feelings, then I'm not apologetic for the impact. 
because that wasn't my intention. And this has been something that honestly I've said in almost all of my relationships, like that's not an excuse. You hurt my feelings. And I, well, you're talking about a one-on-one -on -one relationship, right? So it's an analogy that I bring up a lot. It does tie into this conversation. We had Ebony K. Williams take a trip to the breakfast club yesterday morning and things got really heated with her and DJ Envy. And the analogy of intent versus impact, and I'm not sure if excuse me, if they use those exact words, but that's the that's the exact dynamic and correlation that came up while she sat there as a DJ Envy uh, <laughs> exerted his beige rage onto her, right? <laughs> so I do want to talk about her visit to the Breakfast Club and I do want to watch some material with you all so we can listen to exactly what was said. Um, it was important for me personally because I think that this has easily became a very emotionally charged conversation. Um, people hear clips online all the time and they hear the little isolated clips and they form their opinion and they double down and they get emotional to the point where they're out here insulting people and calling people names and, you know, dragging people when they don't even have the full context, like in its entirety. So I think the full context is important. And I think listening to it twice in its entirety is important. All the clips that I'm going to play for you today, I've listened to two times on my own because when you're emotional, sometimes you do project and you do, you do, um, you hear, you project, you project, you hear something that's based on your experience. And sometimes that never even took place. For example, when I said I was light skinned and a lot of people felt like um, I was colorist because they felt like I wasn't light skinned. It's okay. We're moving on. We're moving on. But I'm just saying. <laughs> I even have people admitting that they were projecting their own struggles with color and their past trauma. It was my own trauma. That's why I was mean to you, Jane, when you said you were light skin and people, oh my God, you're not light skin. You're brown skin. Why do you hate yourself? The fact that you call yourself light skin and you want to be a part of a club that you're not into. I can't support your channel anymore. I'm unsubscribing. Why do you think light skin is better than brown or dark skin? Who said that? All I said is I'm light skin. But when people are in their feelings, they hear what they want to here. Okay. So it's important to listen to these things and slow them down. And I made sure I listened to these things twice and I took notes two times. I took notes the first time I listened to them and I took notes the second time I listened to um, these things just to really make sure I know, yeah, just to make sure I understood, right? This is just this is such a layered conversation. I'm grateful for the conversation, though. It's definitely something to do. Um, and basically what Ebony is saying is that her sentiment wasn't based on salary. It was based on um, ownership, Black ownership, and Black people really aspiring to do better and to consistently grow their skill set. Like, don't just be complacent with the job that you got when you were 33 and then you turn 55 and you're still at the same exact job and you never tried to level up, right? So um, there's a lot more that we need to get into, okay? Um, oh, baby, who was arguing about it? Oh, baby, when I tell you they were dragging me for Phil saying that I'm light brown skin and not light skin. And I think I'm better than other people. And they were like, this part of your face is dark. So you guess what? If I walked out my house in Baltimore right now and said, I'm anything other than light skin, I would get clowned so bad. Baby, I might even get shot. Because here in Baltimore, and, and, and it's, it's sometimes it's a regional thing, right? But here in Baltimore, this is light skin for me. Like, by the time I push on my forehead and push on three different points in my face, all three of them are going to be red. I don't think that I'm better than anybody. And I advocate and I talk about stories about people who are darker than me quite frequently Right. I advocate for black justice um, and, and inequality and all that other shit. 
our liberation and whatever. And you don't have to be light skinned for me to do that. I cap it. Matter of fact, I've always been attracted to darker skinned people. But I mean, these people were down my throat about it. Okay. You can go look on the channel. The video that I did addressing the backlash, it, it, it was it was plentiful. There were like 50 something comments of people trying to drag me saying that because I called myself light skin, I think that I'm better than other skin tones, right? Or darker skin tones. But the video is called, I'm not light skin, I'm sorry, or I'm sorry, I'm not light skin or something like that. Facetious title. Um, but nonetheless, whatever, child. Um, so let's go ahead and, um, <laughs> yeah, it was strange that night. Um, <laughs> I'm going to start bringing it up because I'm still just so surprised at so many people. But when you talk about skin tone in the black community, people get really, really, really touchy about it. And they start projecting. And, and it does remind me, and it correlates to this conversation just slightly because it's like skin tone is sensitive. Some people, I was teased about my skin tone when I was younger by the darker girls, right? But darker girls were oftentimes teased by the lighter girls when they were in school. And so when you talk about something that's so sensitive and people have trauma attached to whatever side of the spectrum it is, people get in their feelings and they hear what they want to hear and they twist your words into something that matches their trauma point, which is where this bus driver slash income conversation is triggering so many people. And you have to think that bus driver that makes on average 70 or $80,000 a year will never be able to match Ebony K. Williams' lifestyle. And that's not her being mean. It's just her preference. It's just her preference to want to date somebody on her level and in her bracket. That's it. But there's so many people projecting their income, their occupational insecurities. They're projecting those things onto not only Ebony K. Williams, but the people participating in this conversation People are projecting, if you take a stance, that's not, and of course there's nothing wrong with fucking bus drivers. Hello, I used to ride the bus and I used to work at McDonald's, okay? So there's nothing wrong with blue collar workers, but if you have a preference, you have a preference, right? Me personally, I wouldn't date a guy that works at McDonald's. I just wouldn't. Do you work high up in corporate or do you are you flipping the burgers and fries? So is that then mean? to say. And then if I say, I don't want to date a guy that works at McDonald's, do I need to turn around the group of people in which I'm omitting and that I'm not interested in? Do I then need to turn around and coddle the group that I'm omitting? Because do men do that? I'm not interested in fat women. If you're over a size six. If you look like Big Shirley, I don't want you. And then they turn around and they coddle Big Shirley. Nothing wrong with fat women, but I just, they don't do that shit. They don't do that shit. So why should women be expected to coddle groups and categories of men that they're not interested in, that they are omitting? Why? I can see why bus drivers would feel like we catching a stray bullet. Just like if I say I'm not interested in the guy that works at fast food, I don't give a shit if it's McDonald's, Burger King, or Subway, or Chipotle, Sarku Japan, Arby's, Hardee's. Chick-fil-A, I don't care where it is. If you work in fast food, I'm not interested. If fast food workers heard that term from me, would they feel some type of way? More than likely. But that's just my truth about who I am and who I'm not interested in. Am I then required to write a dissertation about how great fast food workers are just because I'm not interested in them? Pizza Hut, and try, I love me some Pizza Hut, but I'm sorry, baby, if you work there, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm past my 20s. When I was in my 20s, <laughs> when I was in my 20s, period. But I'm past that. And so it, it, it's just like when men say they don't, they, they only want a skinny woman. It's just like, in your head, you might be like, damn, I'm not skinny. Am I about to cross somebody a fucking river? 
No. There's plenty of men out here that like love handles. Okay. So I, I, uh, niggas want to be niggas want to be coddled real bad. Real bad. Real bad. Real bad. KFC either. Popeyes, none of that. And especially not Popeyes. Y'all real stressed out over there over that chicken sandwich. Mm-mm. 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 Like, what's wrong with people? One Tree Empress, what is up? I love you too. We're expected to accept their preference but get demonized for having our own. Pure and- Hello? Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Men can have preferences and we can't. And theirs is based on looks. Not what I can do for the house. Not for how I can care for you. It's based on looks. Meanwhile, if we're focused on money and life or, or life and career placement, oh, that's so wrong. When that really has a lot to do with if we screw in, the family we may or may not create. That's important to know if you can support me. Hello? And then we're going to get into the conflicting how Iyanla is of a particular age. Iyanla is of a particular age. See, I keep wanting to go on break, but there's so much that I want to say. Okay. 23% of our country are single parent households. 80% of them are led by women. So a lot of times you get pregnant, you have these babies, you might complain to your homegirls, you complain to, to your family, your friends, your parents, your grandparents, whoever. And what is the first thing they tell you when it's a nigga not helping you out with the baby? I've heard way too many of these conversations. They're going to help you out with the baby. He's either not putting the effort or the money or both, right? The first thing the older generation will say is, if you knew how, was he doing that before y'all got pregnant? Yeah. Were those his habits that he was exuding before you got pregnant? Yeah. Well, if you knew he wasn't making enough to sufficiently contribute or help you out, then your ass had no business laying down with him. Have y'all ever heard an elder say that? Because I've heard plenty say that. Y'all need to be smarter. Y'all making these decisions with these men who it was clear the red flags were there that he couldn't provide for y'all when y'all was just fucking around. You had no business laying down with him if you knew he couldn't provide what you needed to maintain a potential budding family and or you. So before falling in love, to take these things such as caring for a child for 18 plus years, sustainability, how we'll be able to continue to provide for and to prioritize our family. It makes perfect sense to think about money, energy, and what you're willing to do without me having to get on you, without me having to nag at you, because that's important too. Right. If I have to nag at you to get you to do anything or to get you to do everything or, or, or anything that I need, I'm more comfortable with watching what you would rather do without me having to jump on you about it. Because the nagging is going to get on your nerves at some point. Sometimes nagging can get you results. Other times it's like I've got to nag in order to get you to pay for the kid's shoes. Take the kids to some of the doctor's appointments. I've been doing it all. What would you rather do when I'm not telling you what you should be doing? What's wrong with considering his what he's willing to contribute when it's not referencing anything monetary or fiscal? And when it comes to money, what, what's wrong with me taking those into consideration? Because both of those and I feel like Iyala being the person that she is, I'll admit I was a horrible mother, but I was a great father. So. You've never been a mother. So do you really understand a mother's plight and what they go through with begging a father to do more and to show up to the plate? So for you to ask women to throw certain things out of the window, which directly contribute to the ability to maintain and sustain a family. Children are expensive. Have you ever taken a, well, has, has he on the taking a look? Y'all ever seen a bill of a woman that just got finished uh, 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 having labor and how much that bill is? 
let alone the formula and the car seats and the bassinets and the insurance and the deductibles and the doctor's appointments and the schooling and God, the daycare. The daycare be damn near as much as rent. And I'm supposed to date a man that is several notches outside of my tax, below my tax bracket and be okay with that because he loves his job and he loves his mama. Mmm. The dust. I think I got the bird flu. Anybody need some tissues? Tissues. Tissues. Tissues for anybody. I'm wrong for taking that into consideration. Woman called into Iyala's show today and said, I married my husband when she was when he was unemployed. Iyala said, Yes, yes, you married your I'm sorry, what happened? Two of them called in and said that. And she was so happy. Yes, accepting these niggas at their lowest. Accepting them and I'm settling down with them. Why? Because you know that your generation had a lot of mediocre ass sons. Y'all are bothered by the word mediocre. But that that's why you want us to lower the bar because you know what your generation pushed out can barely graze our expectations. So you want us to lower it to make it easier for them to access us in our romance and our intimacy and our partnership. And for that, we gonna use a little Iyana on a little Iyana. Let us go to the bush and we. It was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. Iyanla had like five callers today. She was all down for talking to the ones that agreed with her. The ones that disagreed, she got them off the line in about 18 seconds. Becky, she let stay around a little bit longer. But she was still like, oh, we, we, we can move on. We can move on. Because she's like, I have a hard time dating down. They're insecure. They have bad attitudes because they're like jealous of where I am in life and where they are in life. It's not easy dating down. Stop acting like it's just that, especially for a woman. A man, I might get it. I can understand a football player walking into a bar, right? And wanting to scoop up the barmaid or the bartender because she's hot, she's young, she's fine and shit. Now all you need to do is instead of being a barmaid and keeping that bar tidy, keep this house tidy. And do you have a high sex drive? Boom. That's it right? A guy. But a guy's natural role is to provide. But for a woman, it's not the same. I, I mean, a 70-year-old a mammy, y'all? A 70-year-old mammy? Baby, she need them cheeks clapped real bad. I'm telling y'all, if y'all are on my bus and you drive a bus, Put your application in over at the Iyanla Enterprises because baby, she it's giving cobwebs, it's giving she just needs some pent to trait. Show this, B 
because what the hell? It don't make no sense. Y'all laughing. I'm I know I'm being serious. You're getting popular in Toronto. Oh, really? You telling Toronto about me? That's nice. I never knew that. All right, y'all. Listen, there are 200, there are almost 300 of us here right now. Can everybody please hit the thumbs up button? It's free. If you're looking for a way to support the show, you can either hit thumbs up. You can send the cash app, dollar sign, T-H-A, right here on the screen. Double, double check it. Proofread it before you hit send, okay? It's dollar sign, T-H-A, playing this, Jane. But also, it's not all about monetary support. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Drop some comments. Drop some pancakes in the chat. And we'll be right back in 60 seconds to continue this conversation and very vital discussion <laughs> we'll be right back get into this black owned business stickies it's got things for inside your home outside your home and even on the go jasminemadeit.com is your new destination for black girl magic mugs tumblers and even wine glasses you can even customize the tumblers and wine glasses there's a lot going on for a low price over at jasminemadeit.com. And if you've been serious about wanting to support more Black-owned businesses, here's your chance. Let jasminemadeit.com handle all your problems for family and friends. You ever had a friend over and they just wasn't catching a hint or paying the rent? Y'all asses all get to step in. <laughs> yeah, tell them to get to step in with this nostalgic Mart themed doormat and shop over a dozen different doormat designs over on jasminemadeit.com. All right, stickies, you know what time it is. It's time to put your money where your mouth is and shop black today. Make life easier for you and your household by taking your family's hot or cold beverages on the go with one of these unique tumblers. It's insulated to keep your beverage at temperature and it comes with a few different reusable straws and even the specific brush that you need to wash it so you can keep it sanitized and germ free. They've got all kinds of designs to match your mood or style. So grab something for your wife, the hubby, or even the kids over on jasminemadeit.com. That's jasminemadeit.com, and I'll see you over there. All right, we're back. Here is my cup. Just so y'all know, I do not do bullcrap advertisements. I don't, I don't. I try out the products. I make sure they're great. There is no minimum purchase requirement over at jasminemadeit.com. You can use my code Jane for 10% off. Okay. This one is really good. I enjoy it because you can either use it with the straw or without the straw. And it has this thing where you can keep the temperature like where you want it. You can do hot or cold beverages. I typically do cold beverages out of here. But the couple of times I had to do <clears throat> hot beverages like hot tea and stuff, it kept my beverage cold for three hours. I went in Target for two and a half hours and came out and my tea was still hot. So jasminemadeit.com is a really good place for you to create customized wine glasses, tumblers, whatever it is that you want to design. And then there are some things that are already designed too if you don't want to worry about anything. But if you got a friend that's like getting married or you need bridal paraphernalia or reception, whatever the case is, you can do like bride groom type stuff or personalize it with their name. It's a really good website. Use my code Jane for 10% off. Okay. Let's continue this conversation, child. I had to take a breather. It's been an hour and 49 minutes. And I still have so many thoughts. Oh my gosh. And I do still plan on opening the phone line. <laughs> I am, um, and especially if you have a business, put your logo on there and, you know, do your thing. Um, I still have a ton of thoughts and I still plan on opening the phone lines. Okay. So, should I talk about this yet? Let's see how much is left. Uh, should I talk about this yet or should I get to the video? Um, okay, I'll just, I'll get this out the way first and then we'll get to the video. 
So intent versus impact. Now, I definitely can't play the Breakfast Club's video because the Breakfast Club likes to um, they they strike people like they're they're really strict on you using more than two and a half seconds of their content. So I can't play it. But if you get a chance, check out not just the clip, check out the full uh, interview and encounter with Ebony K. Williams on the Breakfast Club with DJ Envy and Charlemagne and the two guest hosts that they had today. It was very interesting to see. And DJ Envy had a particular stance on this subject where he was like, listen, you hurt a whole community of people, the blue collar workers. It was like you were scoffing at them. It's like you were shitting on them. And, you know, she's like, that, that wasn't my intent. I was just being honest. And he's like, but you hurt people. You hurt feelings. Feelings were hurt. And, you know, my whole thing about that is, um, truth oftentimes hurts and accountability oftentimes hurts as well. Truth and accountability is not a belly rub. It oftentimes does not feel good, right? Truth or accountability, they oftentimes do not feel like a neck massage. And some people want to hear what makes them feel good rather than the truth. And in order for us as Black people to progress or move forward, we have to become accustomed to the truth. Do people have to go out of their way and be mean or rude? No. But a lot of people took Ebony, and that's why we're about to take a look at it. They took her stance as disrespect when really her stance was just her stating her preference. So, um, and like I said, the the there are a lot of people that want to be coddled, and the majority in the folks that want to be coddled, um, they're men. They want to be coddled um, based on where they work or whatever. She literally said, I wouldn't date a bus driver. I would date him if he owned the bus, though. And people heard what they wanted to hear. They heard all types of stuff. Listen, trauma makes you tolerate a lot of shit that you don't deserve because you don't want to lose people. And healing makes you realize that some people don't deserve to be in your life no matter how much you love them them being the bus driver <laughs> them and, and and it's the bus driver in ebony's sense right whereas oh, a bus driver's income honestly might be more on par for me an average citizen but let's just replace like contextually i feel like a lot of women really understood this question but a lot of people just took it away for ebony it's the bus driver because she's bumping down boop, 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 several brackets to whatever. For me, I would be bumping down boop, 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 boop to date a fast food worker. And he might have a good heart. He might be a hardworking man. He might love his mama. But no matter how much I love him, that doesn't mean that I need to be dealing with a guy with that type of a life placement. It, 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 it won't be great for me. I will exert a lot of energy trying to build him up. I might be disappointed in the end because it doesn't the, the 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 it doesn't materialize. Trauma makes you tolerate a lot of shit you don't deserve because you don't want to lose people. Again, I was talking earlier. A lot of people are in a race to not be lonely because they're trying to prove something to society. The first thing society will say when you have a standard that they don't meet is, "Oh, but you still single though." Oh, 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 but she's still saying, oh, but you sing when you lonely, though. So a lot of people are in a race to just get with anybody, somebody, somebody that goes against their morals and their values, their standards and their expectations. And they tolerate whatever the hell just to seek approval from people. Iyana Van Zandt being one of those people. Iyana Van Zandt has married two men in her life. And she's admitted that she married one of them because she sought approval from her father. So holding on to company, holding on to someone because you don't want to be lonely is not a flex in, in, in any way, shape, or form. You're exhausting your tolerance level. And what happens when you exhaust your tolerance level? when you finally explode or break, because you will, 
that explosion is not the representation of who you are. And it's typically untimely as hell. It's not in private when it's just the two of you behind closed doors. It's typically like you reach some sort of breaking point. And that's not representative of your entire character. The thing is you've exhausted, you ignored your boundaries. You've done way too much and accepting other people's bull crap and you snap and you can't control the moment the, the, the top breaks off that soda. It's like shaking up a soda. It's always at an untimely time. So there's no point in exhausting your tolerance and what you're willing to tolerate and, 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 and bending your boundaries in a way that they really shouldn't be bent. Trauma makes you tolerate a lot of shit that you don't deserve because you don't want to lose people. Healing makes you realize that some people don't deserve to be in your life, no matter how much you love them. And you can love that man that you maybe met that works at McDonald's. You can love the man that you, you can love him so much. That doesn't mean that he deserves to be in your life. Until uh, unless or until he can do better or level up. You're not obligated to give people time because they're quote unquote good people or they appear to be that way. How long does it take to assess, to determine if someone is a quote unquote good person? How long? And that answer is different for everyone in every different circumstance. Because a lot of times when you're out here in the dating world, you're not dating these people. You're meeting their representative and what they want you to believe about them, which is contrary to their true being. And for some people, their true representative wears off after three weeks, other people, three months, other people, six months. They're able to keep that representative and that full presentation of them up for so long until eventually, three, six months later, you're able to see who they really are. Miss T. Taylor Baby said, hey, Jane. Hey, Miss T. Taylor Baby. Rachel says, white and Chinese marry up or especially Indians were the only race that's okay living in shelter with a man. Yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're the only generation that's saying date, date down, lower. And Ayala can say all day, I'm not saying lower your expectations. But if your expectation is to not date a guy that makes forty or fifty thousand dollars less than you or more, and you're telling her to entertain somebody like that, you're totally asking them to lower their expectation. And 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 and, and income, career placement, life placement, the amount of energy that they're able to exert to their priorities once you observe that. Those should be non-negotiables for the most part, right? You might only want to date a man that makes, let's just say, I don't want to date a man that makes $30,000 less than me, but you meet a guy that ticks every other box and he makes $40,000 less. Okay, cool. But what she was asking Ebony K. Williams was something totally different. And being negotiable on a, a visual, uh, on a visual scale, you know, that's, that's something to consider too, right? You wanted him tall and dark, but what if he's short and light? But he's got everything else. He's got the job, he's got the position, he's got the, you know, you might, but arguing with people about their negotiables and, and, and things, talking about oh, that doesn't define their character, neither do looks. And that's what men base their, the majority of men's structural attraction is based on imagine, uh, uh, imaginary relationships and imaginary sex. So ultimately, I feel like Iyala was pushing her aspirations. 
at 69 and a half, almost 70. She's a 70 year old woman. Iyanla was pushing her aspirations onto Ebony K. Williams and other black women. A woman who is self admittedly, quote unquote, in recovery from being a control freak and not allowing a man to properly lead. And she still very much comes off as a control freak and as masculine, especially when people disagree. And hey, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing to have a slight amount of masculine energy. Sometimes men have feminine energy, right? And sometimes women have masculine energy. It's a part of the human experience. Just because I was born a woman doesn't mean that I'm not ever going to have masculine energy. Just because a guy was born a guy doesn't mean he's never going to have feminine energy and have emotional days and just cry. Or I'm not going to have days as a woman and just be masculine, let alone when we're, when we're living in a society that's male dominated. So I honestly don't find anything wrong with the balance of having masculine and feminine energy. Just like Iyana was like, too many women are leading with their brain and not their hearts. We need these women to um, think more with their hearts and not their brains. Like you, you want women to live in their emotions and not in logic. First of all, that's the first blow that we get when we make irrational decisions that are based on emotions, right? They be like, oh, she's not using logic. She's coming from an emotional place. We cannot live and operate solely 100% all of the time from our hearts. Now, we naturally always have a heart, and we have more of a heart than anybody. A man and a woman can be walking up the street holding hands, and we see a dog. The dog might look thirsty, and the woman is the one to be like, oh, I don't have any water random dog then we'll get in the car and we'll still be like damn that dog didn't have no water men be like the motherfucking animals is animals <laughs> like our heart is always going to be something that is attached to us we are not men in skirts however again 23 percent of the country is single parent households and 80% of those single parent households are led by women. We cannot wait for men to come rescue us. It would be great if they did, and sometimes they do. I'm not, I'm not about to act like there ain't no quality men out here in each and every tax bracket, because baby, I done seen and experienced some things. But to become dependent on somebody to come and 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 pick you up like you a, a newborn baby and it's the stork and they about to drop you off like that's not gonna happen and if our parents and our grandparents and our mothers didn't teach us to listen rely on yourself because if 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 and when you rely on him to do everything and all for you and you stay in your feelings and you, he's going to fuck you over because he realizes you're dependent or codependent on him and his ability to provide. And that's why women have grown the ability to not only provide for themselves, but defend themselves and stand up for themselves and be assertive. And then sometimes the assertiveness the assertiveness doesn't work and sometimes it does become aggression because sometimes men get aggressive and for me like i'm in media this is a male dominated industry radio podcasting youtube it's a male dominated industry you can't just come on here and just be soft and supple the entire time it doesn't work the same way a regular woman and or mother can't just be soft and supple. Sometimes you got to put some bass in your voice to get people to understand and to respect what you need and what you've paid for, what you will and what you will not tolerate. And you can't wait for a man to show up and do that shit for you. It's great if and when they show up and they take over that role. But you can't just be waiting on a man and just let him. I just want us women to be in divine femininity and 
you can't just you just wait for it and 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 not develop no thick skin in the meantime and in between time in the interim. No, ma'am. And the nerve of you, 70-year-old mammy, to be telling us this shit. When you were married to a bus driver and you were on the Oprah Winfrey show literally saying, my man ain't got no money, my man ain't got... You married a bus driver. Girl, I... It's not much out there except less. Huh? When they say I can do bad all by myself, it don't necessarily mean I can even do bad. I might start off bad by myself because I'm healing. This last relationship was crazy because I accepted this nigga that you describing right now. And that's why I'm doing bad all by myself because I'm healing because I dealt with this nigga that you describing right the fuck now. It makes seventy thousand dollars less than I make. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I'm healing and shit. And then when I finally get better and I'm still by myself, I'm not just inviting any old Tom, Dick, Harry, or bus driver or McDonald's worker up into the space because I just don't want to be lonely. My happiness means a lot more than the societal pressure of and. and the societal pressure of not being alone. This is a woman that married because she wanted approval of her father. What approval do she want now? She's clearly looking for, for approval from some fucking where. I would play the clip, but the clip is owned by Oprah Winfrey Network, so I can't play it. He said this. She was on a clip. She was on a show with Tyrese Gibson, yes, before he became a crybaby, and Run DMC. It's very dark sided. Very dark sided. I'm 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 some tired of it, y'all. Y'all ain't finna wear me out. Sick of it. She out of pocket. I'm about to open the phone lines, even though we really need to be watching a video. I need Bye. to stop. Y'all need to grow up. Grow up. I'm tired of telling y'all to grow up. Y'all need to stop it. I'm tired of it, y'all. You ain't finna wear me out. Let's just watch a little bit of this stuff just so y'all can hear. Mm. Just so y'all can hear this energy. And I'm gonna see how much of it I can get through. <laughs> and then I'm gonna open the phone lines. Drop a phone emoji down below in the chat. Drop a phone emoji or a three down below in the chat if you can't access emojis, if you are interested in calling in and speaking point. Like I said, you don't have to agree with me to call in. I'm not going to attack you if you don't um, agree with me. But let me know if y'all want to call in with a three in the chat or a phone emoji. Ciao. Woo! Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is. Oh, Jesus. Iyanla Van Zant, we are so blessed to have you here with us today on the Rio. I want to start here with um, something that we share, uh, which is that we are both attorneys by trade. Um, you are a lawyer, you have a legal background. And as women in the law, Iyanla, do you believe that that uh, lens, that legal lens, informs our perspective and the way we show up in the world as women? Oh, absolutely. And that's why I got out. <laughs> yeah, very, very masculine, very intellectual, uh, almost stripped and robbed of humanity. 
it really shows the dichotomy between the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. Um, and for me, it just didn't feed my soul. Uh, and so I had to get out. I feel that. And I do feel that uh, I might have heard on a date or two, Ayanla, that we are not in a courtroom, Ebony. Um, you can put the gavel down. Um, and I do <laughs> I do feel it can spill over um, into the way I show up in my womanhood, which is really the center of this conversation today, uh, Ayanla. We want to discuss masculine energy, feminine energy. Uh, I do want to start with kind of a news framing, which is that women's rights across the country, especially black women's rights, they're under attack. Uh, lots of laws are banning abortion. They are regulating what we can and cannot do with our bodies. Um, what do you think happens for black women uh, when this type of siege is at play and we don't feel we have anyone to protect us? Right. Well, the first thing I think we do is we go into anger. Um, we go into anger without a clear ask. It doesn't make sense to be angry unless you've got to ask. <laughs> you know, what is it that you're asking for? People can say anything in the world, but that doesn't mean that they get a right to do it. It doesn't mean that they get a right to affect you. But because so many of us are programmed and conditioned and educated to think like men, we respond like men. And when I mean men, I don't mean two-legged beasts. I mean, I mean, in the masculine energy, and it becomes competitive, it becomes aggressive, it becomes against them. And that's not who we are as, as women. It just isn't. Um, and I think for Black women, particularly for us, the way that we've been programmed and conditioned and educated in the society to expect less, to accept less, mm. to be angry and to complain, but to not really step into our authentic self, our authentic power as well. So we should be expecting more. We should resent expecting less. Can we do that with a feminine demeanor? Can we go into our job with a feminine demeanor and a pretty dress or the best outfit that we have and get more? Or do you need to be a little... When you're demanding a pay raise, is your etiquette the most polite of the light you can find? Because is that going to be persuasive to people realizing that they need to make a change? The nicer you seem and the more you let them know that, hey, I'm just nicely asking for more money. The more they're going to fuck you over. And she's very aggressive slash she's not, I wouldn't even say she's assertive. And listen, I'm not, I'm not knocking her for it because I realize how I come across too. I can come off aggressive to some people as well, but I don't look at it as a negative connotation, but how she defines it. It's like women are too aggressive as if she's not aggressive herself. She is aggressive. And I don't feel like there's anything wrong with being aggressive with conveying your point. Um, at times, um, especially about subjects that make you really passionate. Black women get really passionate. And, you know, people who don't understand that are white people. They be like, oh, you angry? Like, no, I'm just, I'm passionate about what I'm talking about. I have callers that call in. I had the Freak Link documentary. I had a black woman call in and say, they shouldn't release a Freak Link documentary because people need to mind their business and don't nobody need to know what these grapists were getting away with, right? And I passionately disagreed with her. That's a part of the identity of Black women. We are passionate as fuck, right? And so sometimes she categorizes other Black women's passion as aggression while acting like her own passion and shoving certain ideals down our throats, acting like It's not, it's, 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 it's not aggressive. And it is. I don't think that passion turn aggression equals masculinity. But even if sometimes it does, I don't feel like there's anything wrong with that. I don't feel like there's anything wrong with a black woman having a, a passionate conversation and it can be arguably aggressive, whatever. But was it disrespectful though? That's the question. And all of that is subjective, 
right? But Ebony never said anything. Leo. Nobody ever said anything disrespectful. Anyway, black women, we speak a different language. And so I just, for, for, for a certain black woman to demonize a certain sort of a language that black women speak and to categorize it as masculine when she is very well versed in the very same language and it seems she's not able to let go of the quote unquote aggressive or masculine energy that she's referencing it's very um it's it's hypocrisy for me that's what it is but you know let's continue women and create what we want even if that's create the demand no no not here not today <laughs> okay, okay. I, I hear you articulating a young masculine, masculine uh, energy trait um, um, the competitiveness uh, the assertiveness sir. tell, tell me, me what how you would bring feminine aggressiveness aggressive uh, grace yeah, aggressive, not assertive. It's okay for a woman to be assertive. Uh, grace, first of all, what we want, even if that's to create the demand. Oh, no, not here, not today. <laughs> okay, I, I hear you articulating, Ayanla, this masculine uh, energy traits, um, the competitiveness, uh, the assertiveness. Tell me what, how you would frame feminine. Aggressiveness. Aggressive. Uh, grace. Yeah, aggressive, not assertive. It's okay for a woman to be assertive. Um, and the fact that Iyanla can't see that some of her, actually a great amount of her encounters, and the reason why she goes viral as often as she does, is because she is aggressive. She's aggressive, and a lot of what she says is condescending to Black women, and it's not rooted in... Ooh, it's Rhonda. Rhonda is Iyanla. That's her, her birth name. Um, she's aggressive rather than assertive towards black women, not towards black men, just black women. So it's like, why are you acting as if you aren't exuding the same behavior that you're demonizing? <laughs> I need somebody to make it make sense for me. She, Iyanla Van Zandt is easily more transcends being assertive. And I'm not knocking her for that. I'm just comparing that to her analogy about women being in their femininity and not being as masculine. And she correlates aggressiveness with being masculine when she is aggressive. I would say that, you know, my delivery isn't always assertive. Sometimes my delivery is aggressive. I don't always equate it to masculine energy, but if people take my passion as masculinity, then maybe I can't change your definition and how you see things, right? Like your perspective is your perspective. But Iyanla isn't, she's not being real right now. Like she's not being real. She's being a mammy. She's being a fucking mammy. Uh, great. great. <laughs> I think, I think we've, we've lost, lost our grace. grace. We, we, we move in such a harsh and hard way. Grace, grace. compassion, um, nurturing, nurturing, nourishing, nourishing. Um, elegance. elegance. How about, How about majesty? majesty? How about, How about divinity? divinity? How about, about holiness? This is not a language you hear coming out of most women's mouths. But they'll talk about being a boss, being a diva, being you know in charge, and see of us are either not seated in our... Oh, here we go. Now. What's wrong with being a boss or a CEO? Did she just say CEO? Because sometimes you have to remind the man that he needs to love And so she's talking about building men up. Sometimes men need a reminder that, hey, I need you to do a little bit more. And sometimes letting them know what you're capable of, sometimes it can do just that. 
So you don't want to remind men that, hey, I'm doing all this X, Y. That, that, that's a motivational factor. Think about like people in competitive sports, whether it's track, racing, swimming, whatever the case is, it's competitive. And your motivation to do better is the person next to you that is doing better. And you want to, excuse me, you don't only want to be like them. You want to be better than them. You want to achieve more than them. So it's like women accomplish these things, a certain income level, a certain career placement, which has a lot to do with their character development. And they're not allowed to talk about it. They have to make, they have to make themselves small in order to make the man feel more comfortable. There are so many different ways you can inspire and motivate your partner, even if it's just reminding them, hey, listen, I I went out here, I did these, <laughs> I made 580 today. How much you made? He might have made 170. Yeah, you talking to him about how you constantly make it more, it might encourage him to develop a new side hustle. It might. But Iyala is against the notion that women can celebrate their own fucking accomplishments. Me calling myself a boss is nothing compared to all the work that I did to become what it is I refer to myself as. It's nothing. So now what you're saying is I have to make myself small and minimize my accomplishments to make this man. Why is it that you are prioritizing and placing black men's feelings and coddling them on a scale above the existence? Again, like I said earlier in this video, I would really love and I would really enjoy if Iyana would even the kill the way she got all these talking points to talk about how, how, how black women need to lower their standards and shit. It would be really amazing if she had the same amount of talking points about black men and their shortcomings and how and where they need to be held accountable and how problematic some of their expectations and preferences are and how they may still be lonely if they maintain those preferences. It would be nice if she would even the fucking kill, but she refuses to because she panders to black men because she yearns and craves a black man, because she's had so many failed, not only relationships, but marriages. I'm sorry. It's not me going in on her. I'm just saying. Not thrown as queens, or we're in the throne and the crown is crooked. Meaning we're in the throne and we don't really know how to hold that place without the masculine aggressiveness and demanding and attachment. And it's it's killing us. It really is. So in, in a recent interview with our dear friends over at the Breakfast Club uh, that went very viral for very good reason, uh, you said that women are being trained to be men in skirts. Um, yeah. I, I will acknowledge, I will I will say I was triggered, I was a hit dog, and I hollered to, to the entire production team to, to get you here today, because I, I actually think you're right. I think you're right, Ayanla. I do think um, that, I'll just speak for myself vulnerably, uh, when I think of a masculine um, posture and what I would expect a man to do in my life, uh, two things come top of mind, and they are provide, and they are protect. And when my lived experience, um, and I, I think I'm still relatively young, I guess, but I'm 40 in, in, in September. So, you know, I, I, I've, I've had some, some relationships. And I've yet to find a man who has shown up, and this includes even my father who was absent. I've yet to have a male energy that provided or protected me consistently ever. So, so I think that I have taken take on the reins to protect and provide for myself. Because what I'm not going to do, Ayanla, is be without. Baby, it's not happening. Be without more. So that would be without, be without protection, be without protection, and be without the necessities of life. 
Okay. So, so, but, but, but I say that with an invitation, Ayanla, check me, show me the arrow of my ways. Tell me how I might be missing it because I might be. Okay. I too am an alpha woman. So I understand what that means. And I tell people all the time, I was a horrible mother. I was a horrible mother. I was a great father. <laughs> I was a horrible mother because I had never been mother. So I didn't know how to affirm, how to nurture, how to nourish, how to um, guide. I knew how to direct, how to demand, how to discipline, and like you said, provide and protect. Those are masculine energies. And the, the distinction here is men build, women create. So we know how to build. We know how to get to the external and get the work done and drive and push and do it, do it, do it. We don't know how to be still, create it, and allow it to come to us. And I learned that when I lost everything. I learned how men build, women create. Like, what in the word salad is we fucking talking about? Building and creating, you you could almost use them interchangeably, regardless of whether you're talking about the wall of China, uh, building a brick wall from the ground up, or making a baby. Men build, women create. Great, I get it. We create life. Yes, 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 we do. But that doesn't mean that our standards have to... Let 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 the man build. You just create some kids. Because that's essentially what she's saying, right? Men build houses, physical labor, manual labor. Women create life. So you stay in your life. No, some women build and create. Some women push children out. And they also create amazing spaces, amazing homes. They are capable of curating and cultivating spaces, homes, and environments that work for the betterment of their family. And these old school ass gender norms are whack and corny as fuck. They really are. And especially for Iyala to say, let the man think and you feel. The man needs to use his brain and you need to use your heart. Woman, don't use your brain. Use your heart. Men, don't use your heart. Use your brain. What the fuck is going on? Every man and woman needs to use both their mind and their heart. We got too many women that ain't, that ain't, that ain't using, they not using their heart too much. They using their brain. It's a problem that women using their brain. The only black woman I've ever seen in my entire existence in three decades of life that said women don't need to use their brains. They need to use their hearts more. Knowing how much torment and how many fucked up situations our heart and neglecting our mind and logic has got us in. Imagine that coming from a woman like this. Let the man think. You feel. You don't think. It's his job to think. Oh, he he. Oh, he's supposed to be the only one thinking. Okay, we can't put up both our minds and both our hearts together and shit. Oh, oh. Ooh. Ooh. How to create. Because I had already <laughs> built and it all crumbled. The house, the mm. husband, the job, the contracts, the professional. The house, the cars, the kids, the dog. He won it all. He's nothing but a buzz driver, a deceiver, heartbreaker. And you won't let him back in your life. Cause he's taking the house, the cars, the kids, and the dog. He wanted it all. He's nothing but. Oh, 
All right. Okay. Okay. Girl. Meet me in the bush. It was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. Where my other notes at? I didn't think I would need them. I'll just pull them out just in case. Ciao. It's in the bigger book. I don't got time. No career in the world, stripped of it all. All the attachments and necessities of life, the creature comforts, until I was stripped down to the bare bone. And then I had to learn how not to build, build is external, create is internal. And we as women have the power to create and attract anything we desire. But we don't get still. We won't shut up. And we. You know who else won't shut up? She won't. Iyanla won't shut up. Iyanla is not going to shut up. Okay, she's going to continue shoving this faulty advice down our throats while telling us that we are incapable of being quiet and listening. You know who she remind me of? Melanie King, child. Be quiet and listening because you're rebellious. You're rebellious. You won't listen to me, you're rebellious. You won't shut up, you're rebellious. You're not listening to these men and you're not listening to me, Mammy, for these men. You're rebellious. Shut up, woman. Accept it. I don't care what your preferences are. The men say they don't want a woman with a purple wig. You're rebellious. Where did my notes go from today? I know I ain't throwing them away. Rebellious. Manage everything through fear, control, and survival. Mm -hmm. As opposed to feeling, knowing, and blooming or flourishing. Completely different things. Thing. But since we've never been trained, we haven't been trained. So we do it the way we were taught to do it, which is very masculine in nature. It's time for me to get set up for therapy, and I use this room as my office. But the desk is over here, and so when I'm seated at the desk, oh, very external. That's I feel you, 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 that you are describing me to a T, Miss Yala. Now, is this <laughs> why you are conducting a rites of passage? So she she agreed a lot. She agreed a lot about what Iyala had to say. She honestly did. Program so that women, um, all of Black women in particular, can learn to create. Women, so that we can learn our authentic power, that we can learn the distinction between a powerful woman and a woman in her power. There's a distinction, but there are skills and tools and practices and processes that we have to learn. At every age, the 20s have a process, the 30s have a process, the 40s have a 50, 60s. We each have a process. And if you don't want to learn the 20 process, you're going to be doing it at 50. If you don't complete your 30 process, you're going to be doing it at 60. And that means you'll be running on overdrive instead of seated in your power. Yes. And the secrets are there. They come from our culture. They come from our history. But no one has taught us. So me, as an, a descendant of Africans and Native Americans, I have a very lovely blend and mix. And I just, for a long time, I, I, I didn't do it because women in general, they, they, they don't want to hear. They think their way is right. And they're, you, I'm crazy when I say sit down, shut up, and listen. You and are you crazy. What you, want. you know what? You know what? You know what? You are outside of being crazy. You're masculine. You're masculine. Because it's it's it, it it's masculine. See, men can give off very harsh, 
very abrasive messaging and no one checks him for it because it's expected that they will speak in an abrasive way and not give a fuck about anybody's feelings. And they want you, and they could be right or wrong. A lot of times it'd be wrong, but they can come off very abrasive. And that's supposed to be quote unquote okay. And women, women are expected to take that and not return that energy. If they return that energy, they're what? Unladylike, but the guy was just being a guy, right? Iyana expects to be extremely abrasive with her messaging to towards against black women. While calling other black women masculine, when really all of that abrasive shit really comes off. Again, she was a shitty mother. She said that herself. I was a terrible mother. I was a great father. I was a great father because I was able to successfully direct demand and discipline my children rather than have an emotional connection. And that's what all of her advice comes off of, her, comes off as, is her directing, demanding, and disciplining and reprimanding Black women for having such a standard. It's masculine, bruh. I get it, me saying bruh is masculine, but that's it's, it's, it's emphasis. So what if women hop into a masculine bag every now and then? Me being a media ma major, realizing that media is a male-dominated industry, you have to adopt a couple of their tactics in order to combat their bullshit. You have to, Right? But nonetheless, Iyanla be acting like she don't have masculine ways and she does. Sit down and shut up, women. That's some nigga shit. He's a good man, Savannah. Sit down, shut up, and accept it. You're echoing the sentiments of a sexist, of a misogynist, of a don't express yourself is and just take what he says. And even if he strikes you a couple times, strikes being hit, punch, physical abuse, he's a good man, Savannah. You better sit down and shut up and take it. It's the same way where they feel like in the Bible, women shouldn't be preachers. Women shouldn't be preaching a word because they're too emotional. But Iyanla preaches the words that she feels like. I just can't. I just can't. Like, all of this is so contradictory. I just can't understand how Iyanla really feels like she's not masculine. And she is. All of her clips, if you, you can go to YouTube right now and search Iyanla Van Zant viral clips. Every one of them is her being masculine and shoving her way of thinking down someone's throat rather than being a therapist and carefully handling someone's trauma. She's exploiting it because she knows cameras are around and she's being extra and blowing up on purpose, intentionally. And you can see this, but whatever. Well, I want to hear. So tell me where the sign up is. Um, I don't want to uh, let me know when you, when you take your registrations, uh, because I am curious. Um, I, I yeah, yeah. I, I had a very lovely um, b single black mother, um, and, and I'm going to get to the statistics on single black motherhood and, and, and family life. Uh, but she was by, by definition more of a father figure in terms of providing and protecting. Um, and I. And I, and think, I think that's, that's very, very common. common. So, so according to the U.S. Census, Ayanla, 23% of households in the country are single parent households. And we know 80% of them are led by women. How does this affect the child? Uh, both little girls, little boys, non-binary children. How does, how does, how does that, that frame their, their expectation, expectation um, um, of, women? of women? When the mother, when the mother is... It all depends, on, uh, it all depends, it all depends on, on what the mother or a woman demonstrates about being a woman. If she's demonstrating 
that is hard and it's rough and nobody's helping me and 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 I got to do this and you got to do it this way then that's what the children are going to get if she's angry because she's alone if she's desperate because if she's not conscious if she's not careful i mean when i look at the, the damage that i did to my children not being clear about who i am as a feminine expression of the chief architect and creator of the universe when i understand that i didn't know that and how to tap into that and then first of all thank you to dream out loud for sending a hundred dollars super chat thank you so much Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come through rebellious purple wig. Yes, because they started talking down. Melanie Williams and this random podcast started talking down on this woman. Um and she was a dark she was a dark skinned woman, but this it seemed to be like a British thing. So I'm not sure if she was in the UK or whatever. I think I feel like it was like a UK thing. And they came down on her real bad just because of her wig. And the guy who was hosting the damn um, podcast had a whole bunch of silver caps based off his cavities that were visible. I mean, four of them, top and bottom. And I'm like, you like men aren't attracted to your um, men aren't attracted to your to your to your wig. You wearing a purple. And I'm like, you're showing poverty shit, like poverty shit she's showing the fact that she has money and the ability to switch her hairstyles out consistently excuse me consistently and you have two caps at the bottom and two like cheap silver caps all four of them combined are probably like 175 fucking dollars and you busy scolding her and using melanie as a talk piece to scold her even further because she's a woman men see that the, that purple wig and they don't like you women see your silver fucking cavity caps and you haven't addressed that and your oral health oral health versus hair health are two totally different things so like that whole clip made no fucking sense to me it made none when he had more of a marker of poverty then the fucking woman in the pink wig when really sometimes we just like to switch up our hair like that. That doesn't represent poverty. If, uh, Cardi B switch up her wig every other day. Does that represent poverty for her? Or does it represent options and things that are available to her and disposable income? Mm, mm, mm. Nonetheless, thank you so much for the $100 super sticker. I do appreciate that a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. A hundred dollars is enough to make me almost want to twerk. But let me lose a little bit of weight and then maybe I'll get to twerking status. <laughs> <sighs> ah! And then we'll get to twerking status. And I why you start twerking. <laughs> all right, let's continue this video. The damage I did to my children, I love with all my heart. As soon as I discovered how off I was, I confessed it to them and asked them to watch me as I rebuilt who I was. And I'm still very alpha, but I'm in my throne and my crown is straight. <laughs> okay. I'm looking forward to straightening my crown, uh, Dr. Ayana. Let me ask you this. Let's Her crown is straight, but she says she's still in recovery from trying not to be as much as a control freak. And she's still not somebody that has been proven to be in a successful relationship where she can show us that this advice has personally paid off for her, right? And she can't even point us in the direction of people that she has um, mentored or advised where it's been successful for them either. So to say, well, you know, other people's crowns are crooked, but mine's is straight, but I'm still in recovery though. It sounds like if you're still in recovery because you're trying to, you're struggling with letting a man leave because you have control issues. You want to control everything. That doesn't sound like your crown is straight. It sounds like there's some improvement that needs to be done. This is what you think think is required to get a man 
on your level, and there's so many different ways, right? Socials, economics, socioeconomics, that's what this conversation is about. There's no way for us to verify that, that this is successful advice. Other than that, it really just sounds like you want to reprimand Black women for having certain standards, whether they be income or career placement standards. You are trying to... Um, shun them while acting like you're perfect. Well, I would date a bus driver. Okay, baby, it's a lot of bus drivers out here. We want to see you next week at an event with a bus driver because I feel like you just saying that shit to gaslight another black woman, a woman that honestly has a net worth that's a little bit more than you. I'm just saying. Would you really date a black woman or are you just saying that shit because it's cute paired with your ment your 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 talking point that you curated the other night laying next to the beard? It's cute for other women to accept it, but are you really accepting that, Iyala? Show us the bus driver you dating. Not the one you got divorced from, the one that you're dating. Show us, show us them. Show us him. Because a woman called in the day. The woman said, I'm a bus driver. Iyala said, you're not my type. I said, oh, shit. How do y'all know you? Y'all are being honest about something. Let's get to the logistics, though. Let's get to the logistics. logistics. We, know we know that black, black women, women are already college, college degrees, degrees faster, faster than anybody, anybody else. else. Many of us are doing like, 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 like we're, we're doing, doing. Yonla. We're getting those terminal degrees, those JDs, MD. PhDs. We also are the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs, uh, along with Latina women in America. Pew Research said that women are now out earning men, out earning men yes. in 22 yeah. of the largest cities in America, including where I live, New York, DC, LA, you name it. When we talk, and I know that you said that you cannot teach a man or tell a man how to be a man. So I will not ask you to indict men in this question. But I do want you to speak, Ayanla, to how women need to, uh, I don't know, position ourselves so that we can be in our divinity, so we can have our uh -huh. crowns right, how we can create and not build, when some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, uh -huh. they are not yeah. positioned to protect nor provide no, because of some of the statistics we just talked about. about. They're not yeah. earning the incomes. They're not yeah. having the resources, resources. And some, some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. leadership. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if a he bus owns bus? the bus. If he owns it, if he owns the bus, that's, that's, that's a problem. That's, that's a problem. problem. Because the standards. This is, this is where we get into this conversation. This is exactly where we get into this conversation. This was a an, an, an interview about the broad expectations and mentality of women. Right. And as a matter of fact, no matter of fact, let me go back and tell y'all what that actually. Um, the convo was intended to be about the economic and status criteria that women expect and women showing up with so much masculine energy. And Ayala takes issue with the fact that women are using their brains more than they're using their um, hearts because they feel like men should be using their brains more and women should be using their hearts more. Right. So this was an interview about society as a whole, talking about statistics and trying to um, increase the statistics in a positive way for us Black people as a whole. And Iyala decided to ask her a personal question and then told her that her personal answer was a problem. Let's take a listen again. Hold on. And, and I tapped right. into that and the damage I did to my children who I love with all my heart. As soon as I discovered how off I was, I confessed it to them and asked them to watch me as I rebuilt who I was. And I'm still very alpha, but I'm in my throne and my crown is straight. <laughs> okay. 
I'm looking forward to straightening my crown, uh, Dr. Ayana. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Let's get to the logistics, though. Let's get to the logistics. We know that black women are earning college degrees faster than anybody else. Many of us are, are doing like, like, like we're doing, Ayana. We're getting those terminal degrees, those JDs, MD. PhDs. We also are the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs, uh, along with Latina women in America. Pew Research said that women are now out earning men, out earning men yes. in 22 yes. of the largest cities in America, including where I live, New York, DC, LA, you name it. When we talk, and I know that you've said that you cannot teach a man or tell a man how to be a man. So I will not ask you to indict men in this question. But I do want you to speak, Ayanla, to how women need to, uh, I don't know, position ourselves so that we can be in our divinity, so we can have our crowns, right? How we can create in our build when some of us, quite frankly, feel that the men that are available to us, and I'm talking about across the color spectrum, across the age spectrum, trust me, I've done them all, um, they are not positioned to protect nor provide because of some of the statistics we just talked about. They're not earning the incomes. They're not having the resources, and some of them are not even showing up in the leadership. Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if a bus? If he owns the bus. If he owns no. it. If he owns the bus. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. Okay. Because the standards and requisites. Okay. It's her calling her preference a problem for me. But I know Iyala got a couple of preferences. But let's continue. And I'm not talking about him laying on his sofa playing video games all day. <laughs> I'm not talking about that, but the standards and the criteria that we use to measure men is off for who we are as women and who they are in this society. I would date a bus driver if he was, if he loved driving the bus, if he was a man of integrity, if he was good to his mama, if he treated me well, I would date a bus driver. But we think that it's another human being's responsibility to give us what we need instead of us building together. I could build with a bus driver. I'd have my little stash over on the side in my prenup, but I could build with a bus driver. <laughs> so I think some of the criteria that we look for in the reality of today keeps us unhappy, keeps us angry, keeps us in balance. And then when the men show up, we want to beat them up because they're not living up to our standards and criteria. And, and it's not working, beloved. It's just not working. So it's not that it's bad or wrong. It's obsolete. It's obsolete. Mm. We have to come up with a new way of being. I don't believe in carrying a man. A man has to do for himself. My son got his first job when he was nine. Nine, okay? Because you're a black man. You will know how to take care of yourself. But I think the way we... Someone has a really good point. <laughs> in the chat, they said, so at 70, she's still willing to build. Iyala has built her empire. She's had the fruits of the empire. She's lost the empire due to financial irresponsibility. Her partner also being a part of that. Iyala has built up her worth and she's still willing to find somebody to build up. And it's never a guarantee that they're going to stay with you or they love you for you or they just using you for you to build them up. Because if you building up a man that you're jumping, hopping down several tax brackets for, who's to say he's not just taking your investment, taking your ideas, taking your energy to run off and be with the next woman with? So trying to teach a man a whole bunch of stuff, I get it. You should be able to learn from each other in a relationship, but not to the extent where you're literally like teaching them how to be a decent person like in life. At 70? At 20-something, it's cool. Because if we both 20, then women mature faster than men and so on and so forth. But at 70? Man... At seventy, at 
Baby, at 70, I'm trying to build a man up. Okay. <laughs> Woo! At 70. I'm still in the sandbox, just trying, trying to find somebody with a good heart, no matter how much money they make. At 70. And at a certain status, when I'm a millionaire. They said they settling. She know damn well she will. That's why I said Iyanla just want her. She want them cheeks clapped. She want to go to pound town. She want the bus drivers to know that she going to let them. Oh. But she ain't. But she. Iyanla want her macaroni stirred up. That's what I feel. And I feel like she just doubling down for the fuck of it for no reason. She didn't just found some words to make it seem believable to some to, to to some naive people. It's the same thing um, Dr. Umar Johnson does. They just be saying whatever, and if it go viral, they like shit. Let me. Uh, Y'all ain't date no fucking bus driver. Are you kidding me? You, you if you think Iyanla is dating some goddamn after two failed marriages, as a matter of fact. Technically, three marriages because she married the same man twice. They got a divorce and they married again or whatever. But it's just been two men, three marriages. Europe, God bless you. Okay. All right. She's just saying shit and dog whistling certain people to approach her. She not marrying none of them. And the husband that put his hands on her. Broke her jaw when she was six months pregnant. <clears throat> it's not funny though, because I've been in an abusive relationship before. That's not the funny part. the the fact the, the fact of the matter is she married a bus driver and divorced him. So what's the incentive here? I'm like, what is it? What what data are you put, busting out to me to say? These bus drivers are worth dating. It's worth jumping way below your pay scale because here's what I did. And da, da, da. you ain't got none of that personal. Your personal experience is horrific. If anything, it would keep us away from that. So <laughs> she just wants somebody to take her to pound town. That's what I think. And now she's just finding different ways to defend the shit. She just found a different ways to defend the shit. She said on another day she ain't getting married. Cause, uh, she said she she kept talking about that prenup, though. She kept talking about that prenup, though. So mm. you measure it. It's it's just obsolete. I think that's a factual analysis uh, for whatever we want, expect, we're told we're going to get. We got to look at the numbers and what's available on the marketplace. So, so you're certainly not not wrong. In the uh, and, and, you know, let's 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 tell the truth and shame the devil. We know what you got in that prenup. It would never be little. It'll never be small. It's not, it's a big old mound of assets. But uh, that's okay. But that's okay. Uh, let's spend a little more time just so we're really clear in this conversation, uh, Doctor Lazar. Difference between between masculine, masculine energy and feminine energy. energy, because I know that it's not necessarily gender assigned, right? This is bigger than that. This is big, bigger than genitalia, right? Right, absolutely. When we talk about man is mind, woman is heart. And so many of us have guarded, broken, um, um, closeted hearts that we do everything from here. And here, you know, as a woman that's been educated, that, like you said, has a degree, here will run out. Here will lie to you. This will never lie to you. But we've been taught not to trust this. We've been taught not to trust our knowing, our intuition. But a man can have a good idea and be brilliant, you know? So we want to have good ideas. But for us, our power is in knowing. And it's in getting that 
that intuition and moving on it. That our power is in what we feel, not necessarily emotion, but what we feel in our body. But so many of us are out of touch with our body. We'll give our body to somebody else before we really get in touch with it ourselves because we're so busy doing till we don't know how to be. When I talk about feminine energy again, I'm talking about the grace, the compassion, the humanity. I'm talking about mercy. I'm talking about silence, stillness. The grace, the passion, the humanity, none of which she seems to have when it comes to what we deal with when we're out in the world dating and when we're dealing with these men and what they inflict upon us, the grace, the humanity. She's prioritizing all of this stuff to protect black men. But at what point is she's is she going to flip it and be like, black men, here's what here's what you be doing to these black women. A lot of times what us how 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 we respond as black women is a response to what has been dealt to us. We don't just fucking pull it out of nowhere. Right. So it's all this mammy and for the man and for the man. And let's put the let, let's put the woman in her place. But the man, just let him be a man. Ah, can't get with that. Anybody can somebody, anybody find me a clip of her literally putting a black men several because she didn't put so many black women in their place. Her putting black men in their place. I would love it if she would even the playing field here. Because I'm not saying that black women don't have room to improve or grow, but ma'am, all you do is come down on black women. Like we're the soul and only, like you're literally the new Kevin fucking Samuels. Black women do this wrong, this wrong, that wrong. And that's my mission to talk about what we do wrong and how we need to give right. As black women, we need to be a bit more softer. We need to listen to y'all more. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Y'all don't do shit wrong because I'm gonna never articulate that. But I'm just, I'm just the black women. They be, they be wrong. I mean, they need to do y'all a little better. They need to kind of, yeah, yeah. Y'all don't reach their standards, so I'm asking them to lower the pole, local, local limbo. They need to lower it a little bit so that y'all can reach it. Like, at what point are you gonna address the mediocrity and the vanity that exists? within the standard and the behavior of black men in relationships. Will you ever do that? Or is your strategy of pandering to black men, is that worth so much to you that you wouldn't dare go against them? Because I get it when you pander it towards a certain demographic audience or even a singular person. I get that. But he on the baby. I see what the fuck you doing. And it's let's scold black women and put black men on a pedestal. Let's not call them out for any of the fuck shit they do, but let's highlight and 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 and, and put the shit that black women do under a microscope and call them all sorts of fucked up for that shit. But let's just coddle the men and not call out what they got going on. It's given very much Iyala Samuels. It's given very much Iyala Samuels. Kevin Samuel died, his spirit had to jump into somebody. It's the jump into Iyala Van Zandt. Ain't that some shit? This old lady is quite literally, quite literally, a sick Negro. She's sick. She's sick. This 
is a sick Negro. I'm talking about flow and movement. I'm talking about speaking from a place of intuitive knowing, love. I'm not, and, and, and that's not the masculine way. The masculine way is justice, structure, power, is control. That's masculine. Feminine is dominion, not control. But most of us, many of us, I'm in recovery, are control freaks. So it's a whole nother way, a whole nother vibe. She raises her hand. There's a whole nother vibe uh, that we can tap into, that we have to tap into because the world is dying. This society, this system is coming down. And if we don't step into our power as women, we're going down with it, with the fall of the materialism and the collapse of the of the systems and the structures. We got to, how many women do you know with degrees could live outside and survive for three days on the earth? How many do you know? I know I can. I know what to eat. I know where to find water. I and I'm I'm not saying we got to go back to the rustic times of the you know the wild wild west, but I'm saying being in contact and in touch with the earth in a way that empowers us. Yeah. Take the pants off. Take the pants off. Let your hoo ha get some air. <laughs> <laughs> you do to to breathe again, huh, Yanla? Listen, it's funny you say that. I only can survive the wilderness, and I know for sure, and I actually was able to do it for about 12 days because I was on a CBS reality show called Beyond the Edge that challenged me, though. It challenged me to do those things in a way I'd never done before. Exactly. She challenged a Black woman to say, y'all can't even survive without a man out there in the wilderness. And this woman survived for 12 days out in, out in the wilderness. That naked and afraid stuff is completely crazy to me. But I still feel like Iyanla's take is bizarre. Um, I feel like it's heavily rooted in sexism. Survive outside. And this woman actually shared that she survived and i went and looked it up she did it was 12 days so stop assuming that every woman is some and and again if women subscribe to what she is giving out to people what would it be and we, uh, i'm so i'm so dainty i'm so feminine there would be no need to want to figure out how to survive in the wilderness because you would have to be dependent on a man in order to do it that's what Iyanla is preaching. And then she turns around and says, well, could you survive in a wilderness? You're telling us to submit to any and every man that comes up to us and to move our standards around based off of his career and, uh, you know, his career and character trajectory. That doesn't allow us room to really contribute or develop the skills that we need to survive as independent people in the world. So for you to, can you grow your own crops? Can you survive? Like, I get it. Like, that's a question that is at the top of the debate a lot of times. It really is. But if you're also telling women, stay in your place and do women's shit and lead with your emotions, emotions don't lead you, right? Utilizing your heart rather than your brain doesn't lead you to, um, it doesn't lead you to nurture plants and make plants and think about survival or whatever. It only leads you to think about compassion and intimacy and being with a certain person. So Iyanla is very contradictory in and within herself with like within this whole conversation. She wants women to think about planting and sustaining themselves alone but she also wants them to settle for get you a nigga any nigga get, get a nigga any nigga any nigga any nigga no rhythm it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense you need to be smart enough to grow your own crops 
and to do what, but but being smart enough requires you to use your brain and not your heart. Your emo, your emotions don't pull you to to caring about compost and growing. What that's all logic based. That's using your brain. But you said women are using their brains too much and they're not using their hearts enough. So which one is it? Which one is it? Um, before you leave us, I need to uh, ask you about how what you're saying for women to sit in there knowing, be quiet for a minute, shut up and, and, and tune into our bodies, tune into our innate knowing, as, as I hear you say, but how that works alongside feminism, because you said you're not knocking feminism. You're not saying women cannot be police officers, firefighters, play football or anything else. But you are saying that this hustle culture has given women um, a need to feel like we must be in competition with men. Is, is that for, feminism for, feminism for me? For feminism for me is a political. I don't find anything wrong with being in competition with men until you find a man where you don't feel the need to compete anymore. What's wrong with competing with a man in a sense of how well I can take care of myself and doing better at it? Because if you want to deal with me, you need to be able to understand how much I can do and how much I don't need you. You need to understand that it's an uncomfortable truth, but it's a truth nonetheless. You need to understand how much you may not be able to deal with me. Here's how much I can do. So if you want to be an asset, I'm bringing something into her life. Brian McKnight, Kodak Black, Chris Brown, they could get any average joint off the street and they would conform to whatever the hell these musicians want because of the stature, the 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 capital, right? The funds that are available to these celebrities. And they would more so kind of like be settling. But if I remind you, like, look, I don't, I don't need you. I'd rather work. Like, you could do one song and do this for me. It took me a whole three months or whatever to do this for me. But I can do this for me. Like, I can do this for me. Some people are upset at that. But it's just like, I need you to understand that I could do this for me. So I need to show you this. I need to show you this. At some point, I won't need to show you about it. If we continue to get serious, the more serious we get, I won't have to show you that because something or somebody, either you're going to take that place or like whatever the case is, but stop acting like I got to minim minimalize myself in order to be surrounded by you. I absolutely do not have to. I don't. And I shouldn't have to, every time I have an achievement, keep it quiet or keep it on the hush. I only tell my friends and not tell you because you about to feel some type of way about it. No, sometimes I do have to keep you on your toes and remind you that honestly, without you, the goal or a social construct. And Hold on, let's see. Let's get back to the her sentence we almost done here. You said you're not knocking feminism. You're not saying women cannot be police officers, firefighters, play football, or anything else. But you are saying that this hustle culture has given women um, a need to feel like we must be in competition with men. Is is that for feminism, for feminism for me? For feminism for me is a political or a social construct. And a woman, empowerment as a woman is an internal experience that becomes an external expression. I can be solid in my in myself as a woman. I may not want to play football or carry a gun on my hip. I may, I may not. But the, the distinction is I'm not looking to anything outside of myself for my power, not. And I know that everything is coming to me to stretch, strengthen, grow me. 
into my authentic and original mm -hmm. being. And inside, I'm not guarded, I'm not harsh, I'm, I'm, I'm not brutal, I'm not violent. I'm not violent in my speaking. Women speaking today is mm -hmm. so violent toward themselves and toward one another. So I'm not talking about a political construct, the women's movement. I'm talking about the move of women for themselves within themselves so that they can be themselves in a completely different way. It's internal. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, one thing before you leave us, I have to ask one thing about dating. The reality is there are more men right now, Ayala, on dating apps and seeking partnership than there even are women, no, women contrary to popular, popular belief. Um, and a lot of men say that they're struggling, probably because of what you named earlier, probably because the expectations of many of the women are out of sync with what society is offering at this point in time, blah, 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 blah. How do women adjust just our, energy our energy so that we so are more we are successful when it comes, when it comes to, dating. to dating. If we're looking at we just want to date or do we want to be partner? <laughs> that's that's one thing. Mm. <laughs> if you have in your <laughs> consciousness you want to date, you can date forever because you're going to find something wrong with everybody. But if you want to be mm. partner, and my question is, what is your vision? What is it that you see for yourself, within yourself, about uh, being in partnership? And are you willing to be in partnership as a woman or do you want to be a dude having a relationship with a man? And when I say a dude, I mean how you how you manage yourself, how you talk to men. We gotta stop talking to these men like they're boys. Even if he is driving the bus and he don't own it or picking up trash, even if he did. These men be acting like boys. <laughs> these men be acting like boys, but we shouldn't talk to and by the time we fall in love, and the way she talking is it's very militant and almost not even almost feminine. Like it is feminine, but okay. Did it seven and a half to fifteen? For those of y'all that want to call in, I just dropped the link in the chat. Hit the link. Make sure you have a good internet connection. And if you want to call in and sound off on the topic, the call in number is in the chat. That doesn't give us a right to use this divine instrument called a throat and a voice to demean somebody. But you know what? If we demean each other, we're going to demean our men. And we have to remember as women that while we, you know, you put a, a woman, uh, she's got to feed the babies. So she's going to do what has to be done. We have a level of, of tenacity that many men haven't experienced, particularly men of color, because their genetic uh, memory is that if they're too much, if they're too grown, if they're too big, if they're too smart, they're going to get hung. That's a genetic memory. So we have to understand that who they are as men, I don't want to say is fragile or delicate, but it's more sensitive my mouth. Yeah. Why you and our mouths are just our mouths are out of order. I'm sorry. With each other, but definitely with mm. men. It, 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 it's and I'm raising my hand. The only reason I can speak this is because I've lived it, and I knew how my life changed when I shifted from external masculine aggression to an internal knowing where I get, I get my, guidance my guidance and my direction. My direction. It's, 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 it's just, just different. Different. And, and most women think it won't work in the world. But look at me. <laughs> and there are hundreds of me. I'm not alone. Yeah. Indeed. Um, oh, y'all love that line. Just eye-opening. Eye when I hear you talk and I hear the themes and even the tone, it's very um, Maya Angelou to me. I intended to be the high compliment that I believe you received it. Um, and, and none of us are beyond growing and learning. So I deeply appreciate the exchange uh, and the wisdom. Final words to leave us with today. My sister women, my sister women, my sister women. Not how we are is not bad or wrong. What we've done is not bad or wrong. Uh, what we've t been taught or learned wasn't bad or wrong. Let us just consider that there's a greater possibility and another way to be. 
For up for consideration. I'll put it under advisement, Dr. Von Zong. Thank you. Thank you. Take it to heart. Take it to heart. Not put it under advisement. Take it to heart. I know. I'm just kidding. No, I, I do. I do feel the possibilities of what could this look like in a different way. I, I, I yeah. feel that on a, on a spiritual level. So thank you. Thank you for challenging thank that uh, for many of us. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. That was something interesting. We do have a caller. Everybody, make sure you hit thumbs up. Put some pancakes in the chat and welcome our first caller of the evening. The following video is broadcasting live, and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. Mm -hmm. All right, we have our first caller of the evening, Light Visions. What's going on? You are live. What are your thoughts about the topic tonight? Thank you for having me, Jane. First off, I can't follow anything she's saying. It's one minute she's for <laughs> women, and then the next minute she's again. If you listen to what she said, like she makes, she says a point, and then she goes back against the point. And then it's like, wait, what What are you, she's not, okay, like she'll say, what'd she say earlier? I don't know. I don't like somebody that's not, not consistent. It's kind of like a choppy sentence, if I could say. I don't know if you got that, but it just did not, none of it, I can't follow it. Now, I remember one time, was it Tamar Braxton? It got on to her uh, in one episode they were doing, and she almost got her in trouble for um, how she came at Tamar. And Tamar told her, oh, no, you're not going to come at me like you're doing. And then she came back out, you know, Ayana came back out saying that she, she was done with helping people and it makes her show look bad or something. I can't remember. I don't know if any of you can remember that. But it's 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 like she's like I said in the chat before, it's like she's talking from experience and it's like she's hurt and she's trying to let us know she made a mistake. But it's like she's just delusioned in it. You know, like how somebody talks and they just like keep talking and talking and they're just like they're not listening to themselves. She's just talking. Mm -hmm. That's what it seems like to me. And I'm not trying to come at the woman, but is she licensed? I always wondered about that. Well, the thing about it is she does have a legal background and she did go to school to be a lawyer. Um, no wonder why she's so debatable. Okay, never mind. Let me shut up. Debatable. She's really good with words and anybody who has went to school um, for like her name is Dr. Eona Van Zandt and that's it's it's an appropriate name for her educational background. Um, anybody who has a degree in that field, they're they're really good with the words doesn't mean that their ethics are in place or in line with the, the majority of people who look like them or feel like no, but. I've, I've realized that she's really good with words and the words might not amount to what her core fan base is about, what they expect and what they feel like they deserve. Um, so that's... Yeah, yeah. That's that when it comes to her. I've realized like she's just she's just good with words and she virtue signals. But it seems um, like she's talking to third person. Have you ever talked to a person that speaks in third person? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't hear themselves. They will keep talking and talking. And it's like they're in front of you, but they're they will tune you out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean I, I, I can't say that that's 
not her. No, look, I mean, go back and look at it if you have time and watch. She's not responding to the reporter. She's responsive. I mean, it's a personal question. Like, imagine interviewing somebody. Like, imagine if I interview with somebody. Okay. Asking them professional questions. Because, like, this is a professional. This is not about me and my life and my preferences. Because I might prefer short, dark men or whatever. But I might end up with a tall, light-skinned one. But that's that's my that's my own preference based on probabilities, my decisions, whatever the, you know, and you're doing a professional interview and she says, would you date a, and, and for Ebony Williams compared to a bus driver is like the everyday average person, or at least myself, would you date a fast food worker? That's what it is. And so if she would have asked me randomly in the middle of me interviewing her, would you date a man at work at Burger King or McDonald's? And I said, no, it's like, uh, it, it turns into, oh, you shitting on McDonald's and Burger King workers. Oh, you shitting on, like, oh, no. Oh, yeah. Preference. And so it's like, you know, for men who only want to date skinny, pretty women, we don't go after them like that. We go on their profile. We go on the Tinder t- little site called Tinder or whatever. I'm doing a background <laughs> check. And they only want to date a certain <laughs> size of women. Like, who's sitting up there getting upset at that man's preference in his bio? He only, oh, okay. he only wants to date skinny women. He, If you less than a size six, if you more, and I'm, wait, I'm double that. I'm a size 12. So it's like, who's getting up? You know what I mean? So all of these dissertations and videos and people are like, she was so demeaning. She wasn't. All she said was, I don't want to date her. And she's a millionaire. She's a millionaire. Why would a millionaire turn around and date a fucking bus driver? And that's no shade to them, but it's just you talking about this is about socioeconomics. That's what this is about. So it's just like for me, I don't want to date. I'm not I'm not dating a nigga that working fast food because it's about socioeconomics. I don't want to deal with your income. I don't want to deal with your social skills and teaching you how to integrate yourself into how to parlay and have a good time with people of a different social status. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. And I shouldn't have to do that work if you don't already know that work. I'm not Bob the Builder. I shouldn't have to teach you how to make more money. I shouldn't have to teach you how to interact with other. I I shouldn't have to teach you all these things at one time, period. And, and that's my, and, and, and people get upset when people omit themselves from wanting to do certain things. And then when people don't give that type of heads up or leeway, they be like, (laughs) You could have gave that heads up or you could have just said you was never interested. I'm not I'm not about trying to teach you how to be social because I'm not that fucking good at it myself. I so what you're saying is like, OK, I see somebody's profile. Right. Like you were saying. And I see exactly what they said. Now, I've come a, I come across um, somebody's profile that said he said I'm a narcissist. He put it on his profile. Do you think I was going to? Click that profile. No, I skipped right on over it. He sent me. What's sent wrong? Me, what's he, wrong with the preference? Like based on all of that, right. what's wrong? A man can easily have a preference, and there's there's no debate. There's no tizzy. There's not. Oh, mm-hmm. he only want to date skinny women. Let's make videos about it. Let's talk about it to no end. But as soon as a woman gets a preference, such as. You know, a bus driver. Like we she don't has the right. Like we that, don't have the right because we're the lesser. It's always been that traditional demeaning standard. That's that, their standard. That's that old traditional standard. Standards have changed now. So the thing about it is, you have women in the military, right? And you have. <laughs> wait. At one point, there were only male teachers. I'm just bringing this up. At one point, there were only male teachers. Then there end up being women teachers. 
See, everything has changed. Everything, it, everything, everything is gonna keep evolving. And everything has changed. That's why I don't agree with what Iyala is saying because she's talking about women who have quote unquote masculine energy. And sometimes when men get in their feelings and they're they're going through whatever they're going through, like you mm -hmm. life is nowhere near predictable. And mm -hmm. so sometimes men are going through feminine energy. It doesn't yeah. mean they're gay, it doesn't mean they're part of the community, it just means that. They're, they're, they're crying. It may be somewhat uncontrollable. They may not know why they're crying. There might be some days where they're a little sassy, as we would call it, right? But there's mm -hmm. nothing, quote unquote, wrong with that because everybody right. sometimes need to hop into a masculine bag to make sure she can hold her own at her place of employment. And yeah. there's sometimes men need to feed into their emotions because they they be putting them to the damn side so goddamn much that it's okay. Just cry for two days straight. Fuck it. Because you need to get that out instead of acting yeah, like absolutely. for you to cry. So for me, there's nothing wrong with a woman having masculine energy sometimes and a man having feminine energy sometimes. My I want to take this on piggyback on what you're saying. Um it took me two two years ago. It took me it took me up until two years ago to realize I was operating out of masculine energy. I didn't understand that. I didn't, un you know. But once I learned it, I was like, "Whoa, I am detached." I found out I was I had detached. Um, what do you call that? It's called detached syndrome or something like that. And when I got introduced to it, knowing. <sighs> I'm a good mom, you know that. <laughs> but I realized I had to change my style of raising my children. It hurt because I was raised that way. I was raised by a man. But the thing about it was I didn't know I didn't know how to be a part of my feminine side until somebody pointed it out. But they weren't like this woman trying to confuse me <laughs> about it. But I realized Okay, wait a minute. Growing up for me, I had to raise myself on the feminine part. I had to teach myself okay. how to do I, those things. I get what you're saying. I'm sorry, but we got like four other callers. Okay. Okay. So here, right. here's what I'll say in closing. Me knowing you personally, you still do have some masculine aspects about you. But there's right. nothing right. wrong about that. And mm -hmm. that can be very fucking necessary. You're raising... A couple of kids, three of them, and it's just you. You need that. Like, right. you need that in order to survive and protect and provide for your babies, period. Can't nobody come along and say, you shouldn't have no masculine aspects about you. But also, right. I'm not your man and I'm not going to stay around. You know what I mean? It's easier right. to, I guess, quote unquote, let go of masculine aspects when you have, you know, like somebody that's there, but even sometimes when they're not there, you got to tap into a little, you got to put a little bass in your voice sometimes. You no. need that, you need that. Like, again, there's nothing wrong with men. A lot of men feel like if they just cry for no reason or whatever the case, they feel like that's feminine energy. Nobody's taking that away from them. You have, you, like we live, it's, it's 2023. You have the right to get into your, I don't know trans shit, but not that that's wrong, right? mm -hmm. but I'm, like, I'm just saying like, there's nothing wrong with the man sometimes. Um, Expressing the vulnerable. That the, the masses won't consider to be quote unquote masculine. Like there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. And sometimes women have to have, especially when you're a single mom or you're providing or like whatever the case is. So I get it. You feel like you had to tap out of being so masculine all the time, but friend to friend, and the fact that we actually have each other's real phone numbers like offline, you mm -hmm. still have that about you. But I still I feel like if you didn't have it, shit would be worse. I'm yeah, glad I was very naive. You done you, helped me in a lot of stuff that girl, I, I, girl it's, it's beyond naive, girl. I'm like. Girl, what did you say? <laughs> but, but you know what? 
because you your experience you know? was different from mine, right? But you never judge. You wasn't judgmental based on the fact that you were raised by a woman and I was raised by a man, right? You were there for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? You didn't make me feel degraded because you're like dumb bitch, no, you know, <laughs> something like that. But you were just like, okay, Tom, go get you a therapist for real because you really need to hear yourself talk. And that helped me. I was like, whoa, okay, I'm gonna go do that. I also like, you know, there's nothing wrong with being stern and everybody wants to equate, a well, not everybody, but Iyanla and her people or whatever want to equate aggressiveness with being masculine and being aggressive. Because sometimes you try to be assertive. You, you might try to be passive. Passive won't get you nowhere. You'll try to be assertive. That won't do shit. Then you get a little aggressive and they consider that masculine. And no, it's really just standing your ground. Really, yeah. it's really just you making sure you're not being shitted on or a pushover or whatever the case is. It's not being masculine just because you're quote unquote, because you have to take it to the next level or you're being aggressive. A dainty woman would be like, I'm gonna go get my husband. I don't argue with men, men need to, I'm gonna go get, my, but everybody don't have a husband or everybody don't have, and everybody's husband isn't necessarily confrontational. And sometimes it's about how you respond in that moment rather than who you want to go get and come back with. A lot of times it's letting people know what type of responses you can give right away as opposed yeah. to who you can go, who you can go get to handle your fucking situation. Fuck that. I ain't never been in a situation where I'm like, I'm about to go get my nigga to handle you. No, I'm so mm -hmm. slick at the mouth and so slick at the tongue that I, there, there's no reason for me not to say that I'll never do it. Like, right. Never say never. But at the same time, it's just like, no, I'm still at the tongue. I know my motherfucking rights, nigga. And I also know about misogyny and misogyny war and you, and you think because I'm a woman, I'm not about to talk shit to you and I'm going to talk shit to you. Fuck it. I don't care. You but need your masculine energy to be able to use your logic in that situation. You know how to respond instead of react. And a lot of these people like her want us to sit here and just react and react and react. No, we're, we're done with that. We are finished living that way. Like we don't have the right to react. Again, yeah. Ebony yeah. Williams goes up to the breakfast club. Envy is coming at her with all this rah, 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 energy and they expected her to be this sweet little cupcake that didn't respond. Um, let me go ahead for a second and bring somebody else up onto the stream. What's his name? Akeen. Akeen. Oh my god, I cannot pronounce his last name. Iguanago. Iguanago. I don't know if I said it right. But we have several callers this evening. Let's get the, the, this is a man, so we need to get a man's perspective, whether he agree or he don't. I, I hope I hope you guys I hope, I hope you guys can take what I'm about to drop because what you guys were saying was just out of this world. My name is Ekene. You got you didn't get the first name right, but you got the last name very good. You got it right. You got okay. my last name right. Okay. But but let me say this real quick. Um, uh, also to the lady that is listening, a woman shouldn't display her masculinity in front of her man. It's very disrespectful. I got to tell you, it's very disrespectful. And it's very, it puts you in a bad light. That is why you might become alone because men don't like to debate women. A man can debate a fellow man, but a man doesn't like to debate a woman. You have to ask yourself this. What is the outcome that I need in a life or I need from, from life? Your outcome is to be married. Am I correct? Is it to stay single or to be married? Which outcome do you want to, the, to be married? The ultimate outcome is to be happy. There you go. Okay. Because everybody's outcome is not, it's not that I'm, I'm not, sir. I'm not, it's not that I'm searching to be married. What I'm seeking is to be happy. So I am trying to do what I'm supposed to do that I'm led to do. My spirit says to be happy. So when I get an unction in my gut, in my thoughts, 
or in my heart that this person's not a right person for me, I move on and I work on myself more and I level up and then I actually attract more better people. You get what I'm saying, sir? I'm not degrading. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not getting what you're saying because guess what? Relationship is not about your happiness. You so I'm not happy with you. I can't, I'm, a, I'm not supposed to be happy with you. Okay, Guess so what? Relation what? relationship is not about your happiness. Relationship is a duty. Marriage is. I'm sorry. Let me take off take away the word relationship. Let me just say marriage because that's what I want to concentrate on. If you want to talk about relationship, I understand. Relationship can be whatever you want to make it. But if you're talking about marriage, marriage is a duty, not your happiness. You are in a marriage just like a man is in a marriage, not for his happiness. So if your man is not in a marriage for happiness, you sh that is not for you either. Marriage is for the kids, is for your children, for your offspring, for, your leg for his legacy to continue. You see what I'm saying? It's all about a man's legacy. That's what marriage is all about. It's not for you as a woman to be happy. It's not for him to relax and play a video game. No, it's for him to go and kill those calves and bring it home. And it's for you to kill, to cook those calves and serve it to the family. You see what I'm saying? Because if marriage is about happiness, guess what? There won't be black community today because your great grandmothers would have been, would not even have kids. You got you, you, you wanted to say something, right? Okay, so what? So what you're describing is the pregnant and barefoot um, mythology, right? So what about the women who make more than the men? Y'all still expect her to be as submissive? Check let's, this out. Let's just say, let, let me just give you an example and then let's let you go from there. Let's just say the woman makes $375,000 a year. The guy the bus driver makes $80,000 a year. Mm. Is she still expected to submit to that man in a way in which you're explaining? 100%. She has to submit 100% because a woman is a subject of a man, not the other way around. You see what I'm saying? A woman, no matter how much she makes, is a subject of a man. Because a woman doesn't control marriage. A man controls marriage. A man gives, a woman cannot come to a man and say, I'm going to marry you. No. A man has to give her marriage. She has to give the man sex. A woman grants access to sex. A man grants access to marriage. Meaning, you have $300,000 is zero to the man. You see what I'm saying? But what her 300000 can do is help to establish his legacy. But if she can take away her lifestyle, let's say she take away her lifestyle, that family will live comfortably on $80,000 without any issue. As long as lifestyle, buying bucking bags, buying Chanel, doing all these things is not in play, right? $80,000 is enough for any family of four to survive. So how three hundred thousand uh, dollars? Uh, 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 I live in Baltimore. I live in Baltimore. I used to I used to live in Silver Spring. Okay, okay. So you be around the way, so you know. About I, the, I know, I know, the, I know. And the difference between club mix and go go music, right? Like, so you know that I do. The, the average rent here, the average rent here, mm -hmm. right? Is if you're not paying at least twelve to thirteen hundred dollars a month, and it's increasing mm -hmm. like seven dollars every year, you're mm -hmm. living in a place that puts you in danger in one of three ways: pests, rodents, or danger. That's right. Period. That's so right. The eighty thousand dollars a year. You're talking about the 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 woman has the kid. Have you ever mm -hmm. seen a after a woman gives birth and with that hospital mm -hmm. bill and all that, mm -hmm. and the woman might want to take off and 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 spend more time with the kid as opposed to giving it to the daycares. That yes. that eighty thousand dollars a year around mm -hmm. the, the, the mm -hmm. Baltimore area, if you want to live in just a decent place, it's not let's, it's let's, not let's put it this way. 
a, a, a family wants to live in Montgomery County, right? Montgomery County, you're paying about $2,000 a month, am I correct, in rent, am I correct? That's just rent. That's not the BGE, yeah, that's, yeah, not no. the one, that's not the gas, that's not the kids, that's not no, the... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, yes. I know. I'm a math guy, I'm a mechanical engineer, so I can break it down really good for you. Check this out. If you take if you take two thousand dollars times twelve, is it not twenty four thousand dollars? Eighty thousand dollars in eighty thousand eighty twelve. You saying times twelve? Let me just be. I just want to make sure I understand correctly. You're saying they only make two thousand dollars a month? No, 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 no. I said somebody that makes eighty thousand dollars and pays rent of two thousand dollars a month. That's twenty four thousand. Remember when tax is taken off, right? He's taking home if he has kids. With tax and everything, his effective tax rate becomes anywhere between three and in between one and three thousand dollars. His effective tax rate, meaning that after the tax refund, right, he's take, he's paying taxes about one to three thousand dollars, which means his eighty thousand turns out to be seventy-seven thousand dollars. So of seventy-seven thousand dollars minus twenty-four thousand dollars from that. When you minus twenty-four thousand dollars, right, remove about four thousand dollars in gas electricity so now it's twenty six thousand dollars right and twenty eight thousand dollars so he still has a lot of money to go am i correct but there is something called miscellaneous so miscellaneous is about twenty thousand dollars for that family which means there are things you have to buy for your kids shoes um uh, one or two things that you got to do throughout the whole year so ten thousand dollars must be gone so now you're looking about $34,000 to $40,000 that is gone. So you still have about $33,000 left, right? Now your wife needs stuff. So what I'm trying to say is this. At the end of the day, the family of, the family of four that lives off of $80,000 will have about $5,000 in reserve left. But the only thing that makes the cost of families in debt is because the mother of the house wants to live a certain lifestyle. It's the lifestyle that breaks the bank, not the bills. True, and I, and it's crazy to think that accepting a man of a lower income, you end up placing a blame on a mother wanting to live a certain lifestyle. There's no room to live. There's no room for comfortability there to live a certain lifestyle. With what you're saying, not to mention we didn't include taxes. And you talk about no, I've already included taxes. I included tax. I made it in fact, actually, what I did in tax, I made it effective tax and rate. It's not about a certain lifestyle, but once a year we should be able to go on a family vacation. And a That's family right. vacation. And look, 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 listen, a family of four, and I've been on plenty of family vacation. It was only two mm -hmm. or three of us. The family vacation costs a lot of money. Right, mm -hmm. especially if you talk about Disney World and Orlando, mm -hmm. it's so mm -hmm. much money to go there. Or you, you, you be in the middle of a Disney park and you go in there to have one meal, and it's three of y'all, and it costs y'all hundred and thirty dollars per day. And that is right. So that is right. Yeah. But, but but no, but but Disney World is 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 a little bit of a requisite for children, and 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 it, it's a lot, but it's not. Now, for somebody making eighty thousand dollars. A year to be trying to, or was that the salary you gave, or was it something different? That, that's the salary I gave. A man to be making eighty thousand dollars a year after taxes, like let's before before before, before tax. Let's talk about the amounts that people deal with when they're on interviews and when they're pitched for jobs. When when they tell you you're making eighty thousand dollars a year, it's taxed afterwards. No, 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 no. They, they, they don't do that because I, I, I have a, I have company and I do, I do, I, I know all those things. Usually, when you present salary to somebody, it's usually before tax, not after tax. No, it's not, sir. Can, can okay. let, let, okay. let, let's chat to come in and then we'll keep y'all put in the chat if when y'all, when y'all, when you go on job interviews, the amount that they give you is it pre or after tax? Put a six in the chat if the amount that you get is before taxes put a seven in the chat if the salary that they offer you is after taxes they always want to give you the more beautiful number when they're recruiting you to work and provide labor for their mm -hmm. company they're always going to give you the pre-tax amount 
always, always, all. They never give you the, because first of all, they can't guarantee what your taxes are. Everybody's taxes are different based on their children, their dependency, their merit, their status. There's no way for them to accurately give you an amount that's after taxes because they don't know what your specific taxes as a person and your assets or whatever are. Every corporation, every corporation knows what tax is going to be charged on your no, employee. No, because guess what? You you're gonna fill out you're gonna fill out you gonna... I'm starting to wonder about like where you like 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 be, be, because what you're saying doesn't make sense. Every employer doesn't know every candidate. Listen, listen. Every candidate has a different tax amount. And you'll see all sixes in this chat. There's not near seven, right? So when you're applying to work at, 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 at different places, there's no way for them to know the differences. And all I would the have, different I, I, I would have, I would have, I understand what you're saying. And this is the reason why they give you the pre-tax amount because how much is taken off? That, that's, that, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Pre-tax. That's what I'm saying. Pre-tax. Is different than your amount, so they they don't know what every candidate is. This is why they give you a pre-tax amount. I'm starting to wonder about the. Uh, hold on a minute. I, I think I think we we both misunderstanding each other. We misunderstanding each other. Did you say that they're going to give pre-tax or after tax? No, okay, okay, ma. Okay. Did you say they're going to give pre-tax or after tax? Because I think I may have they're misunderstood. They're going to tell you the pre, the pre-tax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I think I misunderstood it. Yes, they will give you pre-tax. That's what I've been saying. They're going to. They don't. The price that I gave you, the eighty thousand. This is what I said. Let's not be dramatic about it. What I said is that the eighty thousand is pre-tax. That's what I said earlier. What I said. But that's exactly what I said. No, but that's not what you said. That's not. No, what that's what I said. said. That's Maybe. what I said. I said eighty thousand is pre tax. That's why I told you the effective tax rate is three thousand. Is up to three thousand. Then I said the final. The final is seventy seven thousand. And then I went down from there. That's what I did on the calculation when I was talking to you earlier. I said eighty thousand is the rate, but the effective tax uh, effective tax is three thousand, and then what you have is seventy seven thousand, and then you go down from there because that's why I said effective tax rate. The is being dead is because the mother of the house was to live a certain life. Except in a man of a lower income, to a family, and it's three little people. Mm -hmm. Before tax, not when you go on job interviews, the amount that I let's before, 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 Let's the listen, everyone. Cost, there's no room for comfortability there to live a certain lifestyle with what you're saying. Not to mention, we didn't include taxes. And you talk about no, I've already, already included taxes. I included taxes. I made it actually what I did in tax, I made it effective tax rate. It's not yeah. about a certain lifestyle, but once a year, we should be able to go on a family vacation. And a That's family right. vacation. And look, 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 look. listen. A family of four, and I've been on plenty of family vacation. It was only two or three of us. The family vacation costs a lot of money, right? Mm -hmm. Especially if you talk about Disney World and Orlando. Mm -hmm. It's so much money. To go to, or you, you, you be in the middle of a Disney park, and you go in there to have one meal, and it's three of y'all, and it costs y'all $130 per day. And that, is right. so, that is right. That is right. But, but but no but but Disney World is 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 a little bit of a requisite for children and and, and it, it's a lot but it's not now for somebody making eighty thousand dollars a year to be trying to or was that the salary you gave or was it something different? That, that's the salary I gave. A man to be making eighty thousand dollars a year after taxes, like let's before before that. before tax. Let's talk about the amounts that people That's deal with when they're on interviews and when they're pitched for jobs. When you, when they tell you you're making eighty thousand dollars a year, it's taxed afterwards. No, 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 no. no they, they, usually, they don't do that because I, I have a, I have company and I do I do I, I know all those things. Usually, <laughs> when you present salary to somebody, it's usually before tax, not after tax. No, it's not, sir. Can, can, okay. let, let, okay. let, let, 
All right, there we are. Bruce. You see what? You see what? You know what I'm laughing about this. I told you before I tax. I never said after tax. Before tax means pre-tax. Before tax means pre-tax. Wait, no, I, I didn't hear what you said. What you say? I said what I told you earlier in that conversation up till now. I said before tax. I never said after tax. Said, I said before tax, which means pre-tax. You said the amount that employers offer you with your salary is mm -hmm. already has has tax factored in. And no, I said, no, 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 that's no, not no, how no, it goes. No, no, that's no, no, exactly no, no, no. What you said, and no. that's exactly what I just played. No, what? Well, I think we, that's why I said that you and I must have misunderstood each other because I was selling what, what I told you was effective tax rate that. That's why I brought it down to seventy-seven thousand. I said the ta the, the salary is eighty thousand. Then after tax is 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 about ten thousand dollars. But the effective tax rate, the effective tax rate, because what happened is this: your tax rate is can go from fifteen to thirty-five, depending on your salary, right? But there is something called effective tax rate, which is what you get after deductions. After you've claimed your children, that is effective tax rate. So it can go up to 15%. You see what are I'm you, saying? Are you a bus driver? I'm not a bus, I'm a mechanical engineer. But I work with blue collars all the time. And this is what I this is why I said that it's very dangerous in a society when, when our women uh make certain statements. I don't have anything wrong with that lady saying that she wouldn't date a bus driver. I don't have anything wrong with it. That is a prerogative for who she wants. But when she said, except if he owns the bus, that's where people have problems with. So meaning that that bus driver is a shit to her until he owns a bus. But guess what? Most people didn't come to own something. They started somewhere. So she wants to be at the finish line. But guess, but this is where I'm going to break your hearts. If you as a woman, uh, you're 20 years old, you're 25 years old, and you demand something of material like that from a man, that is understandable. But when you are 30 years old, 35, 40, and you demand what somebody younger demands, you must, you, you're not serious for, for a relationship. Because guess what? A woman's age diminishes her quality in life, diminishes her, um, her place in terms of marriage. We got to stop lying to women about all these things. A man is like a wine. As he ages, he gets matured and he gets desirable to the to the woman out there until he's 65 years old. After you're 65, you're comparing a man's maturity to wine. And in layman's terms, like we was told when we was in school, men mature mm -hmm. slower than women, period. They mature slower than us. We yes, exactly. 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 So you can call them moldy grapes if you want to, because that's all that wine <laughs> is. However, they're mm -hmm. very, very behind. It. And so that's why women dating men of their own age, right? Which may be around but, about like- But it's, like, but it's against right? nature. It's against nature for a woman to date a man her age. It's not, she's not supposed to do that. She's not supposed to date a man her age. Oh. It's counter, it's, I'm telling you, I'm telling you for real, it's counterintuitive. It's against nature for a woman to date a man her age. I'll tell you why. Because women are born with value. From the very day she's born, she's born with value. A man has to earn value. A man begins to earn value at the age of 30. By the age of 35, he keeps, his value keeps coming up. By the age of 40, now he has attained value. But a woman is born with value. Her value begins to diminish as soon as she turns 25. That's when the woman's value diminishes. That is why it's very inherent that a woman that is 20 years old goes with a man that is 30 years old. 
A woman that is 25 goes with a man that is 35 or 40. You see, a man should be always older than a woman because a man's mm -hmm. value is very, a man slows down. Um, a man's value is very slow compared to a woman's value. A woman's value is very fast in depreciation. A man's value is very slow in depreciation. You see what I'm saying? We have to always understand that this is nature. A man didn't set this rule. This rule is set by nature. Wait, hold up. Who is slow in depreciation? A man depreciates slowly. A woman depreciates faster. And that's your problem. But okay. Okay. I'm sorry, it's, it's natural, it's not me. It's natural. Jay, may ahead, I ask man. you a question? You know Go what? Ahead. Here's what I'm going to do. There is, I want to bring someone up here because I do need to run and check on the cat and use the okay. restroom. Okay. But I do have someone that is going to help to direct this conversation. And I'm literally only going to be gone for 100 seconds. I was just oh, glad that you didn't have a concept on African. Is that an African concept instead of American? No, I feel like it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I feel like American men have this thought process too. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's African Amer uh, American, the same thing. Bananas and they fucking, um, they, they depreciate like they basically like, like a, I, I don't I don't even have a comparison, but you know how fast bananas depreciate, right? Like Ooh, we absolutely. Ain't sugar. however, we create life and all these other things. I need to go use the restroom real quick. Samantha, girl, get get them together. Bring them to the place. <sighs> Where are we at? I mean, so first of all, and someone just said it in the chat, uh Queen Dora D. Um, to to your women depreciate faster comment, sir. Y'all dick stop working around like thirty three. Like, please stop. Please. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not here. I'm not here to shame a woman for her biology because if I start doing that, it's going to get. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to shame a woman's biology. Women are supposed to back down when a man is talking. You're talking to a panel full of American women. That shit ain't cutting in here. I'm not finished talking. Please listen. Thank you. Okay. Number one, you can't. You can't cut a man off. I'm still not finished talking. You're not going to roll over me just because you're the only man on this panel. <laughs> It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's a problem in life. This is your space, and you've been talking the whole time that you've been up here with your red pill, fresh and fit in Nigeria. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not red pill. I'm just having a conversation. I said, man, subjugated to a man. No, that we're not doing that. No, you have burning the case. Well, that's the problem. No, that's your problem, sweetie. No, that's we, your problem. Because you can't shut a man down. When I talk, when I talk like a man, you wait. No, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on. Let me just ask that everybody be quiet. Um, okay. No, I'm probably saying your name. How, how do I say your name? Ekene, Ekene, Ekene. Just, you see the way it's pronounced with that letter, right? Just say the way the letter is spelled, right? You see that letter? E-K-E-N-E, -E, right? Just say the name like that. The Ekene. You got it right. You got it right. It can, yeah, that's right. You low key condescending. But okay. <laughs> as hell. And so, yeah, okay. So, I can, you've had a, a, a large amount of time that we've allowed you to talk. So, oh, there's someone else here, and, and you've presented a certain perspective. It might be a man's yeah. perspective, it might be. I'm I'm not sure what country what, what where are you from? What country are you in? I'm Nigerian. Nigerian. Okay, so you've given the Nigerian male perspective. Now there's somebody else here to provide a different perspective. And you've had a great amount of time to talk, no lie. Yeah, so, but, but she shouldn't she shouldn't insult. She shouldn't insult. She shouldn't go against the man's um, um, uh, biology or maybe try to talk about a man's dick. I don't think that's the best way to approach it now. You see what I, I'm saying, right? I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. However, you think that she shouldn't go against you, but that's some submission bullshit that us. Uh, look, I, 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 I'm not. I've never been to Nigeria. I've never been mm -hmm. there. But us Good. Americans, we not just accepting whatever any man say, whether you're from Nigeria, Europe, 
American here, there, or whatever, we have an opinion too, and we want to get it off. So you feel like she doesn't have the right to respond to No, that's not true. Or have an opinion about your no, I said that she shouldn't be disrespectful. That's what I said. Another opinion in this show is about getting a, 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 a aggregating different opinions from different places and different people. So you have mm -hmm. to allow her a time to talk. I get it. I get it from whatever part of the diaspora you're from. It's women need to bow down. You don't need to come up against a man. You're not allowed to disagree with me. But guess what? American women, you're you're watching an American show. Well, um, I don't think I don't think that's what happened. What happened is that I said that she shouldn't attack a man's anatomy. That's what I said. Because she just came straight up attacking anatomy. She shouldn't do that. It's not, I, it's not, it's not, it's not good for a woman to I even present that, herself like that on television. You felt attacked based off of the things that you were saying, and she's providing her different perspective. There is something by attacking that, my, uh, by attacking anatomy. Listen, listen, listen. There is something okay. that you said within your spiel when you were allowed to talk that some people felt like was an attack. Some people felt okay. like that because you're from a different place, you're from a different origin, and you're a different. You're you're a man. Right. So women have a right to respond to that. And so you yes, might not right. Write, right, and you might categorize her response as, you know, an attack or whatever. But there are a lot of women in this chat who feel like what you said was an attack on their existence. So I have to let both of you all speak and you can't say, don't shut a man down. Don't come again. Like, it's not about shutting a man down or shit. It's about e e hearing every side of the story. So you have to allow her some time to talk. And just because you're a man and you feel like women should be submissive or quiet or just accept what you say and not buck against it, that's not how us American women roll. And so it's time for her to talk. And it's time for you to be quiet and listen because she was quiet and she listened to all that you had to say, despite how offensive some of what you said was to her. Some of what you said was offensive to her. Just like you feel like- I can address, I can address it if she asked me to get her. A couple of words that she said was offensive to you, but it's just a difference of opinion. And sometimes it's the, the lines between the difference of opinion and it, 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 and offense, they can become blurred, but it's definitely time to let her talk because you have had a lot of time. The chat been turned up. The chat been talking about you. <laughs> There's one person in the chat. Oh, that I, I, the I, other I, eight I, them I, feel I, like I understand how we, I understand the chat. That's that's okay. Okay. So let's go ahead, and it's time okay. for us to be respectful to her, just like we okay. were. I felt like some of the things that you said were respectful to women in general. But I let you get that off because that was your point. So it's time to let her talk. It's time to okay. let her talk. And we got to okay. let her talk. So let's go ahead and get to that. Um, Samantha, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts about where we are in the conversation? <sighs> Lord have mercy. Um, Ikene, you don't need to address <laughs> anything because honestly, I, 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 Honestly, I prefer if you would just mute yourself right now because I feel like if anybody up here asks you anything, you're gonna be talking for the next 45 minutes about how a woman's a woman depreciates after 30. That comment right there was extremely disrespectful. And one thing women are sick and tired of men valuing us or trying to place us on this valuation scale like we are some inanimate object that is only here for your pleasure and your subjugation. We're tired of it. And not only that, Black women are the only ones who are constantly told by mammies like Iyanla and, and then extremely misogynistic men like you that Oh well, your happiness does not matter. You need to not have standards. Your, you know, you you need to not aspire to do anything in life because your sole purpose is to be here for whatever dust ball head ass man decides that he wants to have you in his life and make you his personal slave to clean his house, cook all his meals, 
take care of, of his rusty butt kids and just that's what you do day in and day out. And then when you're done and you're completely beat and, and tired, you got you gotta come come into the bedroom and then be ready to service said dust ball head ass husband who does not care about your happiness. We're tired of it. We would rather go to work. Hell, it's why statistically single women are not only happier than, than married women, they live longer. Being married to y'all shortens our life while us being in your life extends yours. We come in and make your life better and y'all take life from us. We're tired. We'd rather just get up and go to work and live by ourselves. And that whole, oh, you're going to be alone. You're going to die alone. Don't threaten us with a good time, baby. Please don't. A lot of us are getting up and walking away from dusty marriages that we settled for with men who we knew weren't good enough for us before we even accepted the ring. But because this society is still halfway in the dust bowl, we're, we're still being told, oh, well, a man wants you. So you, just, you need to just go ahead and take that. And then three, five years into the marriage, you realize that you're not even happy because this person don't, they, they say that they love you, but act like they don't even like you. But you're expected to just sit there and stay and take the, the half ass or, or hell, downright awful treatment just so that you can say that you're married. And can I ask you a question, Samantha? I'm not done talking and no, you can't ask me a question because I don't feel like sitting up here for the next 45 minutes or another episode of Fresh and Fit Goes to Africa. I can't. <laughs> okay, keep talking. I'm listening. If you don't want me to ask your question, I guess because you're having the conversation by yourself. But keep it, going. It, I, I can't. I can't. We so are, it's, a self, it's a self conversation that you're having. No, I'm addressing all the the disrespectful crap that you said about. You, you've you've said a lot. Not, you've said a lot, but hold on. Why are you talking? Because Jane already asked you to be to to pipe down to to be quiet and to allow someone else to actually complete a thought. Because the because both Jane and Light Visions, they both they remain quiet. They they let you say whatever disrespectful, short sighted antiquated opinions that you have about women in marriage, they let you get all of that off. But you just want to keep going further into Samantha. the end. Samantha. I, I would please stop. Please stop. Because at this point, you're disrespecting the owner of this platform. This is Jane's platform and it does not matter that you are a man that is irrelevant here. So you that's your defense on her show. And the fact that you keep interrupting her guests after she's already asked you not to, you're disrespecting her at this point. Now, maybe hey, you Jen, 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 about Jen, I got a question for you. Because you are so misogynistic. Maybe you don't care about disrespecting a woman. Maybe you think that women are here to be disrespected, but not the three of us. We not up here to be disrespected today. So, like I said, I am talking. Please be quiet. If you cannot control yourself, feel free to mute your microphone. Jen, I got a question for you, Jen. Listen, I don't. I, I, I would rather I would rather hear what she had to say because you you did have you had a lot more time to talk than she did. So I don't want to cut into her time by allowing you to ask a question because that just deflects and allow the microphone to be more on you when you've had more time to talk than her. So I I do feel well, like she was addressing me. Okay, okay. As long as I'm going to have time to respond, that's fine. Okay, that's good. Go ahead, lady. Go ahead. <laughs> Let her talk, but I won't allow you to interrupt her time to ask me a question because okay. then that'll turn into a conversation between me and you, and that's not okay. fair. So okay, go go ahead and talk. Listen as long as I'm gonna have a slot to respond to every lecture you're giving me. That's fine. Well, I'm not asking you any questions, baby. So you don't have to worry about responding to anything that I said. No, I'm not gonna ask, respond to you directly. I'm just gonna just make a point. Listen. That's all. That's that's it. Women are tired in general we're tired of the immaturity we're tired of the infidelity we're tired of the insufficient funds we're tired of being told to accept all of that 
they were tired of the the dicks that stopped working around actually more like 27 because after all the the smoking whatever y'all are smoking out here and drinking hennessy six days a week and not drinking no water and going to jack in the box and and zaxby's every day hell two three times a day y'all most of y'all are in horrible shape your half of your body functions don't even work properly and you're popping Viagra like Tic Tacs at 30. But we're, but we're just supposed to just put up with that. And not only that, but settle for struggle love. Yes. And whatever, whatever decrepit financial situation that, that the man might be in simply because he's a man. Yes, decrepit. <laughs> the cricket? yes vocabulary i mean that's that's cuz basically that's what what the conversation even started started about Iyanla telling a woman who makes $650,000 a year that she need to settle for somebody who don't even make 10% of her salary that's the point and that don't make no sense, Samantha. At it's all. Dumb. Why would you tell your daughter? Do you have any daughters? I ain't even gonna ask you, but I'm gonna just say it. Why would you tell your daughters? You're a business owner of your own business. Why would you tell your daughter to go out there and date a man who work in a restaurant? He work in there. He don't own that restaurant. And then you come back and tell her you have to do this because you are 25. And you have to submit to that man. You have to work through him owning the restaurant. Would you tell your daughter that? No, you wouldn't. That don't is, make no sense. Is that a question or you would tell question? her? Is that a no, question no, no, no. Or Let me make sense with you. You would tell her logically, using her brain as a father to a daughter. You would tell her, no, you need to, if a man want to marry you, he got to be just like me. Where you're at right nope. now. Let me yeah, tell you, you what I'm good. You can't Let me tell, tell me, what, man. You, you cannot are you, tell me. Are you, gonna, are you gonna ask me a question or answer my question the same time? See, here you go. <laughs> Deflecting. Answer the question. You answer that. Okay, you, so it, I'll answer it, my question the same time. It can I am I pronouncing it right? I might have forgot. It can I is that right? Yeah, you got you you got it right. You got, got it right, hundred percent. You get it, you get it better. All right, I got it right. Okay, so a kidding. What's your answer? Would you advise your daughter if she made six or seven figures to date a guy that made like 60, 70 ish thousand dollars a year? Would you instruct your daughter to do that? Absolutely, yes, I will. And I will tell you why I will. The reason why I will is this, right? I have had, I, 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 I have a lot of friends of different financial strength. Or capability. Money doesn't phase me at all. One thing I care about in a man is his credibility. Because credibility matters to me a lot. I will tell you why. I'm from a family where the mother made more, far more money than the father. And my mother respected my father every single day, even though she made 10 times more than my dad. But one thing that my dad had that I appreciated so much better than most of my friends that was the truth that comes out of my dad's mouth. Up until he died earlier this year, right? I just buried my dad last week in Nigeria. The last two weeks in Nigeria, I came back last week. Was the integrity, the day my dad was buried, the day he was laid to rest, a lot of people came from very diverse places from Nigeria to honor my dad, everything they said was that he was a good man. My dad didn't have money. My mom out, out, out my dad financially. But they came to his burial, more than my mom's burial, and they all said one thing, United, in unison, he was a good man. He was a man that told the truth. He was a man of integrity. So I will tell my daughter, to go to a man that makes sixty thousand dollars a year with integrity, and a man that makes one million dollars, that okay. is a criminal or a bank fraud. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to sound insensitive, but I'm asking you mm -hmm. about money. You talking about character? Yeah. 
you like, oh, yeah. Well, so, mean, so character is better. Character is better than money to me. Right, right, right. right. So your yeah. your mom your mom took care of your dad. No, I didn't take care of my dad. My dad, just like this guy, and sixty thousand dollars. My dad had his own thing. My mother outpaced my dad financially. I didn't say my dad was broke. My mom outpaced him financially. But guess what? My dad was honored for his integrity. Right. I'm not talking about integrity. That's not a part of this um, of this conversation. We're talking integrity has nothing to do with paying the bills on time. And if you need a loan to pay your bills because you don't have enough money, integrity has nothing to do with that. Nothing. A man that, a man, a, there is a man that earns sixty thousand dollars, and there is a man that earns two hundred thousand dollars, and I can show you both of them. The man that earns sixty thousand dollars, due to his integrity, pays his bills on time, and the guy that earns two hundred thousand dollars is always chased by by creditors. You know that? You know that happens. But is he living from paycheck to paycheck, or does he have money to save in case there's an emergency? See, that's the I thing. That's why integrity doesn't play. Um, and that's why you talking about integrity and moving the goalposts when I'm asking about your mother taking care of your father because your mother made more money than your father. You never, you never took care of him. That's never why the of conversation him. is structured the way it is. And I think that that's why you want to distort this conversation and turn it into something different. If your mother took care of your dad and you I'll would... Say, I would say again, my mother never took care of my dad. No, I definitely need you to let me finish. Okay. So if your mother took care of your dad and mm -hmm. you're instructing your daughter, they got to don't make a whole bunch of nothing. Just make sure he got some integrity. There are a lot of broke niggas who got integrity. There are a lot of people who aren't within the tax bracket that you are in who have integrity. It doesn't mean you should just jump into that pool for the sake of, I want integrity. Like, that doesn't mean you should just jump into that fucking pool. So, I got a, Jen, I got a question for you. I definitely keep asking you to let me finish. I don't want to have to mute you on my end but I'm just asking for you to let me finish my thought or my show because you've said a lot. People have a lot to say about what you think, but I definitely need to respond to what it is that you're saying. So your mom took care of your dad is what you're saying. Your dad didn't make as much as your mom. Your mom took care of your dad. And then when we say, oh, would you instruct your daughter to date somebody that's lesser than her just because he had quote unquote integrity meaning he loves his job and he loves his mama i absolutely will it seems like you're speaking from a place in which you've always been taken care of by your mom um and it seems like you're passing something down to your daughter that really doesn't it, it doesn't work in her benefit it doesn't make a lot of sense and but you know what i'm you know what I can speak for an American standard, right? Because you said you're like Nigerian. So in, in Nigeria, it might be something different. But over here in America, it's like it, your, your, your mother was taking care of your father and you're encouraging your daughter to date down. Because that's what you're encouraging your daughter to do. You're encouraging her to date down. <laughs> It's like whoa. Do you want me to respond to that? Like what you you absolutely can because I'm 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 finished with my point. Okay. Let me say this. I think I've said it many times, but I think you're trying to like you know skew the way you want to skew it. I said it not one time, I said it more than 10 times. My dad had his own money. My mom had her own money. They put good in their in their game, whatever they do. So no one. My mother did not take care of my dad because he had his own money, okay? So, then secondly, I gotta ask you this question. You said, did you say that integrity is nothing but money is something? So you, you place money over integrity, is that what you said? Nope, let me answer your question. I said integrity doesn't pay the bills. I can't. But call do you it. place money over integrity? No, it's, it's not about where I place anything. It's about me being honest and making a statement. Just like people want to say, he's a good man, Savannah. He's a good man. Him, him okay. being a good man 
man or him having integrity does not pay my bills. Okay, if a, drug, if a drug dealer can pay your bill and a man that drives bus cannot pay all your bill, who would you go with? Child, the, the what about is on. On. No, I'm asking you a question. At, at if a drug time, dealer can pay your bill. At the same time, this question don't even apply to me because I'm not willing to deal with no drug dealer because I'm not willing to deal with the risk of them looking over their shoulders. Okay. The if, if a, a, if if a banker... Look, look, I'm I'm not with the and see that that's where this conversation it broadens a bit, right? Because mm -hmm. it's not only me discriminating, because people want to call it elitist, people want to call it classism. Oh, if you don't want to date a guy that drives a bus, then you're being classist, right? This is classism or it's racism. There are men who make a lot of money, i.e., drug dealers, i.e., rappers, i.e., pilots of airplanes. I don't want to date any of them either because their lifestyle does not align with what I want and what I need. I need more presence. A pilot is always gone. They're never, I, I need more presence. A rapper has this lifestyle where they always around drugs and women and this and that. And I don't want that. And there's a lot of money there. So it's yes. not about being classes. It's not about um, being elitist and not being any of those things. If some people want to categorize them as some things, if people want to categorize my preference to not want to date a McDonald's worker, a bus driver, a pilot, or a rapper as classes or elitist, when honestly, I'm not even in the same tax bracket or the money range as a rapper or a pilot. But I can tell mm -hmm. you now, I don't want to, I never want to date two. You couldn't pay me to date a rapper or a pilot because they simply won't be able to be present enough for me because it's not about yeah, me. Let, let me put it, let me put it this way. Relationship. Let me, let me put it this way. This way I'm going to make a, a lot of women see life, okay? So you there, think is nothing wrong, there is nothing wrong about women being hypergamous. At all, they are, that's how they created. They are created to be hypergamous. That's nature. Nature made a woman to always look up, not Take, look why down. Why are you preaching struggle? But, can you? But, but, you you have a you you have a thick accent. Can you can you explain what like what hypergamy? It is? Hypergamy. Hypergamy. Basically, dating up, dating up. That's what it is. Dating up. Like a woman marrying up. I'm That's what I'm talking about. Why you're preaching? Okay, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm headed. So, I'm headed. I'm headed somewhere. I'm headed somewhere. I'm headed somewhere. Um. So, hypergamous is something that is inherent in women. Beautiful women always marry up. Average women throughout history always marry average people. Is there something wrong when, with that? No, 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 that, no. That's why I'm referencing history because nothing is wrong with it. Women that are not uh, that are not beautiful or average tend to marry lower. But this is the cover for beautiful women that marry up. When that's where most of these ladies don't. That is the pill that those most of these ladies don't want to swallow. When you attain a certain age as a woman, no matter your beauty, you cannot get that which you deserve. You think you deserve. No, you cannot. It's Cap. not me. It's nature. Cap. I don't have nothing to do with it. It's nature, not me. That's what yeah. I'm trying to let you guys understand. Uh, Samantha uh, is pissed off about it. She's mad. She's no, angry. She's, She's calling names. But guess what, Samantha? I'm sorry. Nature will not let you do that. If you're a 40-year-old woman, think you can get a millionaire out there, you're lying to yourself. It's not going to happen. The thing about you naming this is, do you think when it comes to men, it's any fucking different? Okay, guess what? If I said, I said it earlier in this discussion. I said it earlier in this discussion. I said that a man that is 60 years old, a 60-year-old man cannot get a younger woman, isn't it? Let me put you on mute. Let me put you on mute. Because what you're doing right now is you're dodging the question and you're playing with words. You're acting like when women get old and dried out like a prune or a raisin, they don't have no other motherfucking options. Do you think that niggas have a different approach? 
or some shit. Nope, 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 nope. They don't. Men don't need that. That's what I'm trying to say. I t- that's what I was telling you that men of certain age and certain and certain brackets, right? Are also this a nature. Okay, if you're a man, you earn sixty thousand dollars, right? And you want to marry a beautiful woman that is 20 years old that has the option of getting a millionaire. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. She's a nine. And you earn $60,000 and you want to go after a woman that is 20 years old or 25, you must be out of your damn mind. Natural, you can't get her. But if a 40-year-old woman would then shit on a $60,000 guy, now she is playing with her future too. So people have to be realistic. They have to be realistic. If you are certain age, any certain money as a man, you can't get a girl of certain age. It's not gonna happen. You see what I'm saying? So the same goes for men. The same goes for women. But the only difference is that for men and women, it has to deal with age. The age is imbalance. I hear you getting into the men stuff only because I'm challenging you to the 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 reverse, the opposite of it. So like now you getting into the men stuff, but and, and I'm being honest. honest. Like I've gone, I've gone, I've gone to. I've gone to uh, this is the thing, right? When I go at, to men at first, first, you weren't presented it like that. You were presented it like you women, y'all reach a certain age, and it's just like, listen, y'all need. To but I understand what you, because that was where the diverse, that was where the discussion was at the time. That was where the discussion was at the time. But when I go to Manosphere right, and tell them the same thing, men don't they don't go crazy. None of them will come to me like Samantha did. They understand that I'm telling them based on nature. A man can take that red pill, right? And swallow it and it's painful, and they will take it. But women go crazy when you give them that red pill. You said men would just take the willingly and women won't. Men take that repute, knowing that fully where well, they cannot get they can't get it. They can't get a beautiful woman, 20 years old, sixty thousand dollars, a woman that is nine, 20 years old, 25 years old. They know they can't get her. They don't even attend. But you're gonna see a woman that is 40 years old thinking she can shoot a shot at a millionaire. It's not going to happen. And then demand respect, demand that the man doesn't have option. No, if he earns $250,000 a year, even $150,000, he can exercise his option because he has it. He might never use it, but he can exercise it because guess what? It comes with the money. Women don't like that. But that's the that's that that's what it is. There's nothing. That, no, you 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 can't speak for all women when you're saying something comes with money. Yeah, some some women don't like. Yeah, you're right. Not for all women. Some women don't like that. There are several women who value something that is like monetary backing when it comes to a skill that they might they might easily possess the skill. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It, it literally could be being pregnant and barefoot. They might be good at cooking. They might not care about popping out three babies. And if there's a monetary benefit for them, it might be right up their alley. Whereas oh, other women may, may feel like, I don't want to be pregnant and barefoot. So mm-hmm. when you talk about a monetary benefit, like, and like some women do appreciate that. And at the end of the day, we're talking about women who are providing a monetary benefit to men and how uncomfortable they are about that because they aren't the one to provide it. It's easier for a woman to accept financial um, guidance or leadership from a guy because a guy is traditionally supposed to lead or whatever the case is. That's true, that's true. But when it comes to them not being the breadwinners and being whatever... It is nowhere near as easy for them to accept that. They are always... I, I, I would say this. I would say this, Jane. Uh, it's, not all, it's not good at all for a woman to bring money into a family. Let's be honest. It's always good that the man already has everything going on for him. 
before the woman steps in because well, she's yeah. a help. She's Isn't a help me. Get anything like yeah. Huh? Well, this is a, a competition. No, no. Man, get out no, of here. I'm not. I'm, you, I'm you not saying that. I'm, I'm not. I'm you're not saying. you're talking is from another country. We okay, don't I'm live not. where you live, and we do not. We're not raised. You raising your daughters and your children differently. Okay, that's good for you. All right? I think you guys but, for you me, I had to do it by myself. I'm raising my three mm -hmm. children by myself. Did you not hear that? So okay. I can't you miss, settle you miss, for you your, misunderstanding. I can't settle for your eighty thousand that you want to just give me for my okay, three. You see, no, because I'm gonna do it by myself because I make more than you. Okay. And I okay, had good, to, good. I had I to. A, if if you was my man and you couldn't do it, then that's okay. You got to move on. I'm not worried about you and what you make because at this point you can't do it for me because you didn't want to do it at the beginning because you got mad because I make more than you. That's what we're talking about. Why would a man be mad because you make more than me? No, let me tell you how it is as a mother. All right, let me let me talk to you. This is what's okay. going on. You talking about a woman has to be in her twenties to be married? I was in. My 20s when I got pregnant. And that man mm -hmm. did not take no responsibility. I did. I was in the military. And this man went to another woman. Do you think I had time to sit there and mope and cry and submit to this man? No. No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. So, yeah, let me talk to you. A father. This man did not be a father to his daughter. He walked out. Because... He wanted to live another lifestyle, as you put it. Do you think I had time to run after him for his lifestyle because I was 26 years old? I didn't go looking for another man to help me take care of and raise my daughter. No, you know what? Right after I had my child, I was still breastfeeding and I had to be deployed the second time. Did you know I had to put, put breast things all over my breast? My breast was still... I was still sitting there having to have my daughter suck on my breast when I left. You got some, you got some, you got some nerve to come up here and talk the way you talking. Because I, don't, I didn't I don't have know, no time. I don't know you no, 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 sir. So you just telling me your story. I didn't have story. no time. I didn't have no time to submit because of my age. And as a matter of fact, when I deployed, a man told me he, he was from, hung, what was it, Hungary or somewhere. You know what he told me? I would marry you right now. But I can't because you are tarnished. You're a black woman that's already, you already have a child out of wedlock. Mm -hmm. So this is the way y'all think over there. Yes, so yes, that's I, right. Uh -uh, I kept it moving. I didn't let that hurt me. But you know what? That's not for me to weep and cry about. I'm supposed to still take care of my responsibility as a black woman. That's right. So it doesn't matter how we, we have to take the hits. We take being degraded because we sit here and made a mistake with having a child with the wrong person, but you're not looking at who I really am. I'm getting up every day making gourmet meals. I taught how many myself. Kids, how many kids, how many I'm getting kids up do you every have? day how many teaching my children. Have? I homeschool my children. Okay, these are things I had to do to save money. How many and kids do you want to come up here and tell me? I know how to work on cars too because while I was in the army, I had to uh -huh. learn this. Yes, See, I know. how many kids do you have? But you want to sit here and talk about I need to be submissive, but you don't know what I had to submit to. I had to okay. submit being alone and cry my little tears at night and wipe my baby's asses and take care of I them mean, and keep it moving. I, I, so don't, you, uh, I don't want to hear what you got to say how many because you, you save it for your girl, you save it for that woman over there that you, you got up under you. Okay, do you hear me? Not for us. Okay, I'm asking you how we, many kids do you have? We were raised differently here. We were, raised, we were raised differently here. Uh-uh, don't ask me about how many I have because you you're not going to sit you here trying to calculate you, you, you your you business you strategy you does, you does, you does on how much it. money I need because, no, we're not doing that. No, okay? I'm not doing that. That's not what I want to do, but I want to find out. If you have a first, you have a first child at 26 by another man, right? After you, you had that first... No, I said you had a first... You had your first child at 26 by, by a guy that... that a worthless human being. Am I correct? You had your first child at 26 he by worth, somebody. I mean, he's a he's what you would say is a good man because he he was he did he uh he he was in the navy he did good there 
Uh, and then he went into the army. A good man to me is somebody that provides for his family, not somebody that ran away from his family. Well, That's he provided for his other family that he made. So uh, no, does that count? It, no, to you, to you. Because your child is his Listen, child, right? he didn't want to provide for me, but he, he provided for the other woman he took off okay, with. But, well, does that okay, still good. count? But does me, that still count? Because I know it over there, y'all can have new wives and stuff like that, and right? we take care so of all of them. We take care of all of them. We take care of all the wives and the children. That's what we do. But that's See, the, but we don't, that's we don't skip. We don't skip. We don't skip. Y'all all over there. Over here, they're not. They're not designed but, like but, that. But 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 I'm asking you a question. How many? You had a child by one man, right, at the age of 26, but you still went ahead and had and had extra two more kids. Am I correct? What are you trying to say? No, what I'm trying to ask you is this. I'm trying to establish something. You went ahead and had two more kids by the same man or some, somebody else? It sure went by him. Okay. You had, but what about, okay, what happened to the father of the, of the two more kids or the fathers of the two more kids? We, are, they, are they in the life of those kids or? They pay child support. So this is what you got to understand, right? As a what woman, do I need and to as understand a, that no, I'm no, no, let me finish. Work. Let me finish. No, let me finish talking. Me. Let me, no, no, I'm not gonna. No, I'm not gonna no, come at you. But we can not. We can not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna degrade you. But we still have to face the consequences of our life decisions. No, it ain't no consequences. You interrupted her with your question. She wasn't done talking. You interrupted her with your question about me and her were having conversations. She was answering my question. She was answering my question. I wasn't interrupting her. her and then talk about how she's interrupting you. Stop it. I'm not, I'm, I, didn't, I didn't say she's she's not interrupting me. We're just having a conversation. She's not. I didn't say she's interrupting me. You're, you're trying to talk say that. over her like you were trying to talk over me and to Jane. She wasn't. Finished. Okay, um, ma'am. Um, so, but you you have two more kids, right? By I just you, by, you by two, but they're not by this, by this man. So what, but, 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 what are you trying? What are you trying to prove? This is what I'm trying to prove. This is what I'm trying to prove. A man did you wrong when you had a first child, and you were in the military serving this country. I honor you for your service. Thank you. Then you also after that had relationship with maybe one or two extra men for two more kids, right? The thing about life is this. We might not like, we might not like the way life is, right? But we also have to blame somebody for their, for their mistake and also blame ourselves for our mistakes, okay? Because nobody is fully 100% to be blamed for decisions that they make in life or the, whatever thing that happens to them. But the decision that you made in life, you have to blame yourself 100% for your decision. Whereas the other person is taking 100% for their own decision. When we Wait bring a minute. Kids, okay, we not gonna go down. You, you ain't gonna do that. We ain't gonna do this. You need to choose better bullshit because you, you gotta choose better. better. I'm sorry, you have to what? choose better you, because you first of all, first you of have all, to choose better. You have I'm not gonna let you get away with this. So you have to choose left, better. But but I actually you've taken this conversation so far left, but I'm glad you actually took it to this dusty ass point because that is exactly the problem with everything that you got up here and said about how women need to sub you know, need to be submissive no matter what to their man and all that stuff. You obviously have absolutely no clue to as to what type of men we are dealing with in this country. Now I, I know the kind of men you're dealing with. Some of them are very, very dusty. Portion of, of, of about the culture in, in that country. But what one thing that I am mildly familiar with with. When you told Jane that you would that you would encourage your daughter to date someone who makes significantly less than her, so what would you do uh, about the the dowry situation? Because typically in Nigeria, if a man can't pay a dowry; he's supposed to end the relationship, right? Because it, it's it's basically indicative that he can't afford to even support a family. Excuse me. Uh, do you know how much? Do you know how much dowry is in Nigeria? Do you know the price? The price for a dowry? Do you know how much it is? 
if a man can't pay it, and, no, do and you know I how much? Do you know the significant price? Asking, do you know how much it is? I know it ain't no Dave and Buster's ticket, so I know he gonna have to. No, it's very money. small. No, down in Nigeria is very small. It's as cheap as ten dollars. Ten U.S. dollars. I'm telling you for real. Ten dollars. I will explain the diary to you. I'm going to explain it to you, okay? When you pay a diary in Nigeria, right, that's physical cash, which is approximately about 10 to $20, right? What it is is a deposit that you give to the father of the, of the, of the, of the, of the bride, right? So he takes that money and he has to keep it somewhere. It's like a contract. It's a contract signed. So he has to keep that money in an envelope and keep it hidden. If you decide tomorrow that you're not going to marry that girl anymore, right? He's going to take that money and give it back to you. That means that the relationship is broken. If he doesn't give you back that money, the, the exact money that you gave as a, as a diary, if he doesn't give that money back to you, the relationship is still intact. Until the father returns back the diary, right? Then the relationship is broken. That's in my hometown. Um, or my state. In some places in Nigeria, it can be a cow or a goat. A cow and a, a cow or a goat is approximately anywhere between hundred dollars and four hundred dollars. But not many places do that. You see what I'm saying? It's not. Many, uh, but if you break that relationship, they still have to return it back. They still have to return the cow or the goat back to you. Y'all rent over there in dollars since you you said ten dollars. No, no, it's a, I just gave the approximation of the currency in dollars. That's what I'm trying to understand. What's the yes. currency? You, you was putting the currency the can be the currency can be anywhere from uh, five hundred naira, which is about two dollars, to as high as about uh, um uh, I would say about uh, you you, you ten thousand naira. Yeah. Right, place something at ten American dollars. The yeah, I, I converted it to American dollars, so it can be easy for you guys to understand. Yeah. Place in American dollars, what it would be y'all rent over there, so that we can really understand. I'm sorry. What What's y'all rent over there? If you you just told us it was ten dollars to do whatever recreational thing. So no, 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 no. That's for the diary. That's for the diary. The diary is about between between two and uh, ten or twenty dollars, depend on the on the on the on the community. Dollars. Yes. Right. What's your rent in American dollars? Rent? Yes, in American dollars. I live in I live in Dallas. I don't live in I don't live in Nigeria now. Oh God. Actually, I try actually, actually I live in both countries because I tra I travel but the rent in Nigeria depends on the city. Let me explain it to you. The rent in Nigeria can go anywhere. Uh it's very, very cheap. It's actually okay, very so, cheap. Okay, so let's say the, the average rent for a two bedroom in Port Harcourt. Mm, you can get that. You can get for two bedroom in Port Harcourt. You'd be you'd be surprised. That is about four thousand dollars a year. What? I'm sorry, you, you guys are shocked, but that's what it is. Four thousand dollars a year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're not from here. You just that shit. That's too. That's too cheap. But, that but, like, but, wait a minute. Hold on. You, you live in Dallas. Wait. Hold up. Hold up. You say you live in Dallas because I'm I'm up in this area now. How much mm -hmm. you pay? For your uh, what you live in a house? I know you do. Four thousand dollars a year, three hundred and thirty-three dollars a month. You tell me where the fuck you live in? Not three there where you live, Jane. That's a lot. Matter <laughs> yeah. of anywhere, it's a matter of common sense. Like who the fuck you think you're talking who to? With a family what? of four. He said a family of four too. That don't make sense. No, no, no. no. I, I, you guys, you guys, you guys are not following me. My conversation and your conversation has to do with the American lifestyle, not Nigeria. We're just getting into Nigeria okay, right now. I don't live in Nigeria. I live okay, in the but U.S. Okay, we're asking you questions, straight up questions, and you giving us a history lesson. We don't need all that. We need for you to be upfront. How much do you pay in rent, or what? Are you have a home? Are you paying a mortgage in Dallas? My, my 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 mortgage in dollars is about twenty five hundred. That okay. is almost. That is. That's all the fuck you had to say. The Thank first time you were mine and see some damn. You guys, you guys, you guys, you just. Yeah. Yeah. 
what are you what are you smoking you just asked me about nigeria and now you 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 did you did, did you forget you just asked me about nigeria right that's what you did that's what you did at the very that, and that's my answer. I answered you at the very beginning. At, Kenne, at the very beginning, she asked you about your rent, about expenses, when you started saying that eighty thousand dollars was enough to take care of oh, a whole that, ass family. Now that's for the that's for the US. That's for the US eighty thousand dollars a year pre-tax ain't no, enough to take care of no whole family. It's not, especially if the kids are small and both of y'all gotta work. Daycare is more than your rent or your mortgage. Especially a dad. So I want to say this: Is your wife your wife got a job? Yes. See. So he say. So he just be making shit up. On the she, 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 he he it all. Just did. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I've told my wife that she needs to stop working. And guess what she wants to do? She <laughs> wants to even work part time so that she can get out now. of the house. But I know she has to stop working because I gotta have to mosey her down to stop working because she can raise the kids, right? That's real good for y'all, yeah. Mm -hmm. Get, yeah. Guess well, what? Guess in what? It's very, it's very, now. No, she, actually, my wife, my wife is African American. Right? She's not American. She's not Nigerian. She's African American. My wife is just like you, African American. Yeah. Okay, she's not Nigerian. But what I, what, but what I'm gonna say to you is this, right? It's very, very apparent that a mom raises the kids at home while the husband goes and kills the calves. Oh, here we go. See, you see what I'm, I'm saying? No, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to be little women, but guess what? You don't want anybody, uh, somebody else raising your children. You don't want that because this world has become so bad. You don't know what they're teaching your kids out there. You don't know who is handling your kids. It's good to raise your kids yourself. Hold on, sir. Go ahead. You a little forward or not? I, I wanted to ask a question that was a little further bit back. God damn it! And now I forgot it. Uh, she starts smoking. <laughs> damn! You gotta stop. You you gotta stop talking over me when I'm asking you to stop. Shit! Oh, I I'll, I'll, I'll pay attention I'll, next time. Okay. Hey, Jane. How old is his wife, sir? How old is your wife? No, hold on. No, 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 no. Don't answer that, sir. You, If you want to mm -hmm. answer fine. You can answer it later. We're going to keep some order and operation as to what we're doing and how we talking and stuff like that. Um, shit, I had a fucking really good question. Well, I'll, I'll go back. Well, uh, Jane, while you're um, trying to uh, think of what you were going to ask him, but what my my point uh, a few minutes ago, uh, what I was wanting to say was the the problem with what you were saying, telling women, you know, oh well, you should basically just take any man as he is, and supposed to be submissive to him and un and follow his direction. Most of these men out here have no direction. They have no direction, mm -hmm. they have no drive, they have no motivation, they have no goals. They don't know where they are going in life. All they know is that they want to get some pussy, so that's all they care about. And if they can get some that lives in the house with them to make it more convenient, then they're cool. But as far as actually directing and taking, taking a family or a relationship anywhere, they have no damn direction. So, the, so somebody in the relationship has to has to have their head on straight and get things done and in our community specifically in the black community it typically is the woman we are the one and that's why you see black women financially outpacing their men and doing so as far as education too because we're having to go back to school when it, being single moms and stuff like that because we had kids with a man that presented himself to us as if he would be a good provider, a good father, somebody that we would want to marry. And then after he pumped and dumped a, a kid or two in us, then all of a sudden he's gone, not paying child support. He get a job every time a friend of the court catches up with him, he quits. We have to go out there and do for ourselves. We are forced to be in our masculine just so that we can survive. And because black women are just 
damn good at taking jacked up situations and finding a come up in them. I got a question for you, Samantha. And we're, and, and we're, we're, we're moving forward. And now we've got a generation or two of, of men in our community that are mad because we're outpacing them and all that stuff, but they're completely ignoring the fact that they created the situation and they forced us to have to do that. But it's our, it's our I, got, I got a question for you, Samantha. I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. My question is this. Uh, <clears throat> um, uh, why would, uh, would you date a man that you know clearly that is dusty, can't keep a job? What? No, would okay. you date a man that is dusty and can't keep a job? Would you date him? Okay. Like, if he okay. was transparent I mean, enough to approach me and say, hey, I might be cute, but hey, I, I ain't shit, but it's going to be fun. Let's Let's go. No, of course not. But they never present themselves to us in that way. There's a difference in accepting somebody and trying to move forward with somebody that you know is going to be a good fuck buddy, <laughs> and somebody that you're actually thinking about getting in a relationship with. Thank you. Like sometimes you just have people that you just y'all have y'all do what y'all do, and it's not no. Y'all don't even consider the next level because that's not what y'all about. Y'all just. But, but, but why would you? Why would you even deal with somebody like that? Why please would you deal with somebody like that? Please don't do like that. that because no, don't do that. No man okay. approaches a woman with and and actually presents himself truthfully in all of his ain't shitness and then gives her the choice on whether she wants to deal with his ain't how, shitness. How, not Samantha, no, Samantha, you when a man approaches you, when a man I, I, your representative Samantha, Samantha let's let's have, let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. I I I stop because you're but what you're doing, you're playing semantics and you're playing semantics with shit that don't even happen. Men send their representative that looks the best, though the whole lie on your resume thing, they that that is what happens when, when you got a man who ain't shit and he know he ain't shit. <laughs> He sends his representative. Let me let me ask you a question. When you when you deal with a man, because you know what, I got to ask you this question before I lose before I lose what I'm on, before I lose my thoughts. Because you, I, I don't even know how you understand what any of us are saying when you spend most of the time talking over us. You say, "I understand, I understand, I understand." You ain't listening to nobody. Samantha, no, no man. I'm listening. I'm listening to you very good. In his dusty nature. So don't ask me, oh, why would you commit yourself to somebody? You've said, that, you've said that like 10 times already. You've said the same thing 10 times. In his dusty self, he lets the dust creep in after he's got her. <laughs> okay. When, do you, how, who vet, when, when you're dealing with a man, do you vet a man or do you get your dad to vet a man for you? My dad who vet shit, a man? so I don't have him vet nobody. That's the problem. Nobody's vetting a man here. for you. No, nobody's vetting a man for you. <laughs> I just feel like let me just say this real quick. We I can't vet y'all. Like, what the fuck? Like, niggas be out here dating. That the is the problem. You can't be dead. You can't be dead in somebody you can't vet. Brother, I barely said anything. You got to listen Go. to what the fuck I got to say. Go ahead and talk, man. It's not it's possible not, to niggas, vet y'all. They they bring up this random ass shit and then be like, what? What about your father? Are your father? And it's not that I'm trying to meet the father. It's always just some fucked up statistic that's like always. Okay, he existed. Um, Y'all want to calibrate how great he was. We have a great relationship now, so I don't feel the need to go back and it. It's weird. It's it's weird. The like. Let me ask you a question. What about you and your dad right now? I, 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 Jen, Jen, can I, can, can, I, can I say something? And then, hold on, hold on. And last but not least, and, I, and I'll close right there, is what Iyala Van Zandt said today in her live stream. I wish I would, like, pull it up right now. Um, She was like, a lot of y'all have expectations for men that your father couldn't even meet these expectations. And it's like, I want a man to be great, a provider. And you're saying y'all expectations, your father couldn't even meet them. 
Like that was supposed to be some sort of hard hitting, gut wrenching diss from Iyanla Van Zandt towards black women. Like what the fuck? Okay, okay. My father, honestly, my father was trash on on the parenting tip or whatever. But does that mean my standards should be trash? That y'all got standards. Your fathers couldn't even meet. But the funny <laughs> thing is, like what the fuck? Right. But the crazy right. thing is, Iyanla's daddy also was absent. Iyanla's daddy couldn't stay out of jail. He was never around. So for her to be trying to throw that in black women's faces like she had daddy of the year, ma'am. <laughs> you know, you guys are not going to learn anything if you're not going to listen to people. I'm sorry. All right. I wanna, I wanna what you got to say? All right, go ahead. What I'm hearing right now is this. I'm, I'm listening to a group of women that understand totally that something has been done wrong to them from childhood or in their adult life. But the thing is that you don't want to listen to men. Because listening you don't want to, to listen to men to know what men want. Thank the relationship is not about you or listening your happiness. To men, it got us where we are. Exactly. No, no, you have to change your lifestyle to find the man you want. I'm sorry. Not I all can't, of us have, that's they, not I can't pamper you guys. If you want to be single the rest of your yeah. life, don't listen that to no man. Period. Are electing to if be you want to be single the rest of your life, men. right? Don't listen to no man. Don't care what men think. I got to tell you, it's a free world. Stay where you are. Leave these men. They, they have that uh, high expectation. They live in their la-la land, right? That's what you believe. Let them live in their la-la life. But until you change who you are, you cannot get the man you want. I'm a businessman. I'm a married man. My tax bracket is very high. But guess what I'm not going to tolerate? A woman that will not respect me. You see what I'm saying? I'm sorry. But I got to tell you this. I'm telling you this, and I'm telling you as a man that has been there, done that. That is well connected. Yes, I'm on YouTube space to talk with you guys because I like what, what I'm saying. But I got to tell you, until you listen to a man, you're not going to get shit out of a man. You might deal with a pookie or a rare, rare guy type of guy, a poor guy that has nothing. But if you want to deal with those guys high there, you better be under his game and under his control because he will not tolerate your bullshit. I'm telling you and I'm telling you for real. I'm speaking like a man now. You're speaking like a misogynist, but I don't on. give a damn if I speak like a misogynist. I'm a man and I'm a man, I'm a masculine man, and I operate in my masculinity, and I'm not gonna apologize for that bullshit. I'm letting you know. If you want to stay single the rest of your life and have kids by three men, that's your choice, that's your problem. Oh no, you no not man is gonna bail you out from your, your life sir. decision. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're you not knew the man was, wasn't you shit, and you went for him. They're, they're, they're you knew those men weren't shit, and you went for them. You knew those men were dusty, you went for them. It's your choice. You have to pay that price. I'm sorry. It's a life, life lesson. You have to live with the consequences of your decisions. And why is it always on the woman who needs to The man has control? to live that, too. Put him on child support. If he doesn't pay child support, you put him in jail. Because, right, no, because you've been misogynistic, you've been disrespectful, you, you've been sexist, you've been... I don't give a damn what you call me, but I'm telling you the truth about world. life. Life, we, life will teach you that lesson. The hard way. The shit that has come out of your mouth. But for one thing, you're not going to take shots at anybody on this panel for their, their relationship, status, how many children they have. I'm just letting whatever. you know. I, and I, not only that, but I'm you're not going to babysit you. On this panel and say I'm that not it's only you. the woman's fault because she ran into a man who wasn't shit. Because guess I'm what? It's most men, women have access to sex. You grant that man access to sex, and he took advantage of it, and you live, you. you and him live with the consequences. But Put him on child support. Put him on child support. Put him in jail. Woman. And that is the misogynistic bullshit that I'm not going to sit here and take. I'm sorry. You can call me a misogynist. You might be a misandrist. That's fine. Whatever you mean, misandrist and misogynist, that's okay. And what, we, what we know is this, right? 
You are, if I make a bad financial decision, I live with the consequences. Wrong, if you make it, it's not that might work in your house. Your black wife might allow that shit. Might allow oh whatever he says. Oh it's it's law because he's the man. Not that don't fly in all spaces in America. And I would think that you being in this country long enough, you would. Know I've been in this country for twenty something you. years, and I've seen women and live like, with the consequences of their life decision. Not you're not you. exceptional. Get up here and act like the actions of I'm men sorry, you're not exceptional. People have made that decision and live with the and men have made the decision and live with the consequences. I know guys that I went to college with at the university to study to study mechanical and aerospace. And guess what happened to them when they got a woman pregnant? They had to pull out of school and they live with that consequences. So many of them didn't even continue with education because guess what? They couldn't keep their motherfucking condom on. What? What does you? Okay. I got to tell you this. I got to tell you this because I got to say this to you, right? Let me put you when right. When I was because from the age of 17, from the age of 17 to I was uh -uh. 30 no, years no, no. old, I she always had no condom talk. on. I never she took no condom talk. off for one day. You can't talk. We don't need to know what you do in the bedroom. We don't. We don't need to know your, what condoms you wear. We don't need to know none of that about you. You can no. control. You can control it. You are the woman, you can control who puts semen inside you. You can do that. Do that. And as a man, control who puts semen inside you. Hold on, you because you really said that like oh, rape doesn't exist. Right. And with you First, being speaking, from that, there is 41 contraception out there. Use them all. 41 contraception, use them all. You up here just the great, you're very great. Like rape is not a thing. You don't want not. anybody to tell you the truth. Not. Stop. And y'all and you not all you also not gonna sit up here and act like men don't have control over their own semen. Guess what? Those idiots, you that. shouldn't be messing with those idiots. Don't now, mess with those idiots. Those help. idiots don't mess with them. They are messed okay. up, dusty you idiots that are men that can't control their pennies. Don't mess with them either. Let me tell you something. Okay, we've moved past that. Okay, we've moved past all of this that you talking about happen, okay? So right now, what we're talking about is where I'm at right now, okay? We ain't on that, what you saying about what I did. We're not on no, that. No, 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 I'm not talking about you. Right I'm not talking now. about Let you directly. There are many women, now. I'm looking at the comments, what they're me. saying right there. If you do not listen to me, this is important for you right now, and I mean it. Shit, I done hmm? listened to you far enough, damn it. Shut up. Now, you what I'm saying is, I am where I'm at right now. I'm no, not sitting here If you tell me to shut up, this conversation is over. Don't ever tell me to shut up. If you tell me to shut up, this conversation is over. Don't do that again. You, you have done too much. No, I'm You've been disrespectful. Like, you miss, never Ayanna tell me said, to shut up. No, that you is the line you know for. You need to shut up for the last 90 minutes. Because you just degraded You degraded the fuck out of me. Oh, Jen, it's nice talking to you, okay, Jen? I gotta get out because you this sit here talking about all this yeah, and Jen, what, what we did, out, okay? but now Thank let me tell you what I'm doing now. I'm not sitting here looking to cry about what the fuck happened. Yeah, he need to get off because we're not talking about that. We're not talking about what I did before. We're not talking about that. We're talking about what I'm doing now that I've done raised my standards and I know who the fuck I am and I'm not gonna settle for no motherfucker like that. Why are you talking to me like I'm your child right now? I'm not his fucking child. Okay, we got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. His head is still stuck in that color purple mister, and he think all all wives should should conform like like he you know had Sealy subjugated. No, he want to have something to say like all these misogynistic men do. But they want to have hold on one second. Let me take like, this off. Yeah, if yeah. I knew that, that's how uh, easy it was. It would have been to get him to uh, hush up and drop down. I should have told him uh -huh. to shut up an hour ago. And my and my mama came out. Shit, that. Shut up. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Hey, mom. He just. Yeah, sorry. Uh, Y'all hear me? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. No, I had to leave the room. Because I have the TV on, because I can't see the. Uh, I had to use my phone to go in and type the comments. So my son knocked over the thing in the room. But anyway, what I once wanted to say today to this is that um, I can see where both sides are coming from as a man. But of course, I'm an American man. 
I grew up in Chicago. All I ever saw was aggressive women. I've been to the channel business. Chicago's an aggressive city. It's an abusive city. And I saw plenty of ancient men that were both broke boys and that had a lot of money. And I've seen a lot of guys with integrity that were professional, that were men of God. And what I could say is that I think that what we're relationships to work and for our communities to build is that we have to have that attitude. I, number one, our, the black men have really fallen hard. You know what I mean? Black men, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, black men have become really, we're in a really bad state. You see what I'm saying? It's not like, you know, uh, Yes, our women have advanced. I'm proud of them for their accomplishments, stuff like that. Uh, and black women are, even uh, according to statistics, are considered the smartest or most educated women in the country. So, but the bottom line is, men have men fallen down a lot. And our society is And I think that, 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 that is, that is, is what's poised in our relationship. And then, and then one, one fact, that, fact that, that as far as the numbers, 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 numbers are just, there. The numbers are just there. there with the men, and they're increasing with the women. So by default, you're going to have a bunch of Nicki Minaj, Kenneth Petty situations where the woman is going to be carrying, you know, carrying the water. So I think that the bottom line is that both men and women have an attitude. Boys and girls growing up have an attitude of building and contributing, doing what they can, being humble, but at the same time being able to stand in, you know, understanding what their purpose is. Very good point. Actually, as a matter of motherfucking fact, <laughs> I drink. Because, I mean, that's the real issue here, because we could talk all day about men providing and protecting. Well, the only way you have a bunch of men that don't provide and protect is if, for one, the providers, the schools, our institutions have failed us, our churches have failed us, our families failed us, our families failed us. So it's very difficult. If you've been in danger your whole life, that's why you think women go for drug dealers and gangsters and people like that, because the guys who make the money or who are educated, they're missing an element that women would really. Like. And because of how they're raised, you know, to be totally opposite from everybody else. Like me. And they don't know. How to go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Yonla told us to accept. That's why we accepted that bullshit at that time. We was of that, the mentality that she wants to get into is a mentality that we have already experienced. When we were first out of high school, college, the household, whenever it was that you didn't have a curfew no more and you had your own little spot and you didn't have to, like, that's when you were dating people that you knew damn well you had no business dating. Like, just... You you ain't even know how to put it into words, but like their life placement, what they had, what they didn't have. Like you knew you had no business dating that fucking person. But I think I'm starting to realize the as somebody who got passed over and then ended up falling the streets anyway, is that uh and now I'm a single dad and I'm separated, is that I think that our churches our and our schools are failing that nobody's teaching how to, how to teach men how to, how to, how to actually deal with deal with life as it is you can come all day with you know this is the way a marriage should be there's this way a modern woman the reality is we have to have an attitude of actually wanting to help inequality is really high inflationally high so the people who are who are able to provide and all that don't give a damn about their community and the women who are with them don't care about the community neither so we can't keep making this a man versus woman thing. We can use it as a barometer and we can use it as a measurement to say, hey, you know, you men are way behind. What's the problem? It's not even a man versus woman thing. It's a socioeconomic conversation. It's not a gender bashing thing. It's not a this one versus that one or whatever the case is. It's really a socioeconomic because like even if, again, Asking a millionaire who makes three or six hundred thousand dollars a year 
<laughs> to date uh, somebody who makes 60, 60 or seven thousand dollars a year. Like they don't have the same social etiquette, circles, skills, and to teach all that, like it it can it can be a chore if it's not. Well, the person who makes sixty thousand needs to understand their role and understand that this is the circumstance they're in, and know that they have to expand themselves. And the person that has the money has to know that they're with somebody who makes sixty thousand. They have to try to be able to, whether this the man or the woman doing it, learn how to try to elevate them and motivate them to get them to to pick up. And they and hey, they chose the sixty thousand. Like if you're whether you're Nicki Minaj and Kenneth Petty or you're, you know, a high, quote unquote, high value man with, you know, whatever chick that you, you know, want to say is ideal for the day. Um, at the end of the day, that the same principles apply. So, so people, like you said, it's people's mentality and it's the way we're educated. You know, that's another problem, too. How are you supposed to get a bunch of men who own things and stuff like that when you go to schools that teach you how to be workers at best for jobs that might be there by the time you graduate? You see what I'm saying? I think it's more of a, a mindset thing. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, you see a lot of, you know, there's a whole lot of like women going to college and getting their degrees and yeah they they teach you i guess how to be employees but we're also one of the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs too so it's it's not there's a there's a mind a mindset gap be between us Black that is ready to build and it's like a lot of times, like it's like black men, it's like it, it's either like hit or miss. Like either they're they're you know great with building and they you know they actually mean it, or they say that they're you know wanting to build and really they just they're 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 just gonna live off of you. But then at the same time, they resent you because you make so much more than them. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's <sighs> well, like me, they're messing around and they kind of like you know, puttering around. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. It's that we, and I don't mean to say this, but I, I'm going to say it. When I started learning that, I was I was sitting up and I was accepting toxic, toxic, like toxicity. There was a lot about it that I was taught and I was fuming it to my children. Right? I didn't even I thought this is the way I'm going to raise my children. And when I realized what I was doing was affecting it wasn't just affecting my children, it was affecting me too. Right? So once I started to sit back and watch and really learn, like go within and actually <laughs> learn in depth it, I wasn't blaming nobody but I took full responsibility and accountability um of what I accepted. And yes, I I forgave myself for the toxic raising I was raised. You see what I'm saying? Because we have been raised in a lot a lot of people are comfortable in that toxic that generational toxicity with that toxic generation. And once you get to the point where you understand it, it don't hit you hard. Sometimes we ignore it because we need to use it sometimes. But once I learned that, okay, I can't do that no more because I can't be, okay, I can't sit here and just whoop on my kids. Like, we used to get whooped. We used to get whooped in public. We can't do that. Do you see what I'm saying? And when it comes to dating, we can't date the way other people dated before us either. And the thing is, I'm not going to accept a man after I done worked so hard for my own home for my accomplishments, I got my own car. All you know, I'm working. I've worked on my credit score. All this for a man to come in here and say, "Oh, I want to add myself to what you have." Oh no, you don't. You don't get to squat in my house because you need to have your own house. 
your own yeah. everything. If your 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 credit score is not as high as mine. You can't be talking to me. Is that wrong to have that type of concept? That's what I'm asking. It's not wrong, but depending on how well you're doing and depending on how well we don't do, it might be unrealistic because the numbers are not there. But what I would ask what do you, you though, the numbers are not there. So you're telling me I can't if if I'm wanting a man that has a, okay. I'm not even going to tell you my credit score, but I want him to have a high score just as I have worked hard for. Is that wrong? You're saying the numbers aren't there. That Just because something well, don't I'm seem not realistic don't mean it's not mean, accomplishable. I can see that, but I'm saying that uh, I, what I meant by the numbers aren't there, I mean that literally. I mean, if you can find that man, find him and get him. But if you see a whole lot more of those that don't got it than do, don't be shocked. But what I would say is that like... um. I didn't want to know. I'm not going to say what I wanted to say because that would be that's almost like saying settle for less. But what I was going oh, this is what I was going to ask you. Well, then, if a man came in that had a lot more than you and then he kept this, he had the same energy that you got as a man. Is it going to be any easier for you in that relationship than one where the man was a little bit less on the economic scale for you? Like, would your ego and your be able to take that if he came and usurped? What it is that you was doing. I'm going to say just like this girl said on Ready to Love. She said a man wears three. I'm okay wearing my panties. When it's that time, it's that time. When I know that it's time to submit, I will submit. But now I know how to watch out for who I'm to be submissive to and who who don't, if you're not, if I don't see that you have that to be submissive to, I'm just it was nice meeting you and I'll move on. I'm not sitting here wasting time anymore to have an interview for you to come play into my life and then I'm back in the same cycle in the same situation that I learned from before. That's just my mindset right now. I have to be this way because I have children to protect. I don't know if a man is dating me for my children or I don't know if I'm being dated to be hunted on. There's a lot of stuff going on today that we as women have been put in a situation where we have to be alpha. I'm sorry. Yeah. I will be a woman when it's time. That's but I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and bow down and I'm not going to belittle what all my survival tactics that I've learned and sit here and something happens and it was all my responsibility and it's my consequence because I laid it down at that time? No. Well, to a degree it is. Because again, it depends on what they showed you from the beginning. And keep in mind, below a certain economic level, women have way more options than men. So that's why we're so unsympathetic because we we be thinking like, dang, if I could sleep with whoever I wanted, I wouldn't make not make the mistake you made. You, you know what I mean? That's how we think because we don't have the same options that y'all have. You see what I'm saying? That's why we, I'm just being honest. That's the secret why we're so unsympathetic. Like that guy was not particularly good looking. I'm not that all that. You know what I'm saying? Where you got you guys are gorgeous. So we don't have sympathy for you because we're like, man, you can sleep with anybody you want. How, you and men are pretty upfront. For the most part, except for those real, real snakes, snake oil salesman type of dudes. Girls love those dudes for some reason. Probably Scorpio males, <laughs> like my brother. But, um, but no, I mean that's the reason why. Because it's like you could have chose anybody, and a lot of times women be choosing those type of dudes when they girlfriends, your cousins, the guy friends, the guys you've been trying to get at that you friend zone who are better than the guy you end up laying down with all told you the nigga wasn't shit and you still went for him anyway. Don't tell me that don't be happening. You right. right. But so, that doesn't that mean I can turn I, down the one that you talking about because he doesn't meet my standards. Is that wrong? No, it's not wrong. It's, it's just the only reason I use it. It's wrong if you're just like that. that is below the standards. Yeah, it feels wrong. But I mean... But, I mean in general, no. The only thing I would push back on about the preference thing is that while men don't get no flack about preference as far as size, boy, do y'all come y'all go go after our throat when it comes to preference as far as skin tone and race. I'll just put that part out there. I'm not saying we've been on our best behavior. Made some sense, or that was of importance. You ain't say shit. 
So say it one more time. You ain't saying nothing. Like I thought you was really gonna say something that was like that I was gonna be able to take over to the other side. You went oh, I was about to, but I was letting her talk and then I got off into another tangent. In, in I I have the thought in my head, but it kind of left. Well, I'll, but, I will say, I will say, I will say I will like touching on the preference thing. Usually, when skin tone and race and ethnicity come into play, it's never just a a stated preference. It usually comes with a side of bashing and degrading black women and comparing the whether it's the light skinned or biracial preference basically you're the, the the woman that you're preferring pitting her against mm -hmm. dark skinned black women or pitting the white or latina woman against black women in general oh black women are this that and that so i went and got consuelo or i went and got yeah, that, that does a woman that is when we have the issue. Y'all date whoever you want. We really don't care. But when, but when we're we're hit with the well, I'm dating, uh, I'm dating Becky because Keisha is also ghetto and y'all loud and y'all masculine and blah blah blah. I've met a whole lot of loud, loud masculine white chicks. I've met a whole lot of like my ex I, I grew up, I grew up around a bunch of. Me too. That's when black women have a problem. Okay, okay, okay. You can date yeah. who you want, but leave us out of it. What do we have to do with it? No, that that part I agree with. That part I don't agree. I don't think it's necessary for that. I was just saying because uh, I was about to go to the next point as, as far as what your preference was about who to date. The only reason I was about to get back to that point, the only reason I, I just, you know, I wanted to address it, on it, but basically going back to the point about you know, your preference as far as you know, men meeting your standards. Um, because I'm sure my mother didn't meet all my needs, but I once I get old enough to recognize what I need, I'm not gonna just keep, you know, making the same because you tend also another thing that makes people make bad relationship decisions is brokenness within yourself. Same thing with me. So once you're aware of you know, you know, the, that's also up to you it's steering away from the day. So so but as far as like um who you wouldn't date as far as economics is concerned. Like I said, the only thing that would make that a bit of a like, well, I don't know, is just because of the fact that um, poverty is rising and black men are really, I'm sure we'll have a resurgence, but right now it's really b bad for us. And even though times are hard, and there's a lot of black women who are having it tough, but black women are surging at a faster rate than we are. So that's the only reason why I would say, you know, you know, good luck to your to your standards. Maybe how to trying to figure out a way of how to build each other up might be a good alternative, considering that there's just no way that every single woman, black woman, are going to be able to find black men to meet all of this. It's just that's what I meant to say. The numbers aren't there. Like somebody's going to have to either a, a date down and try to build them up, make you the petty style, and get into a poly relationship. Otherwise, or or settle be being single. Because just because, as of right now, you know we're we're kind of down right now. We need to we need to have a resurgence. But that's not on us to to get y'all together though. Because black women been holding y'all, holding black men up and building y'all up, and and we're like we've we've literally been doing that since before we walked off the plantation. And black women, I mean the the cycle for us will build a black man up literally from nothing, and then when he gets to the his desired station in life, then. But in the words of Kanye West, you get on and leave your ass for a white girl. He yeah, that's what quick and leave, leave us quick after we years and it happens. Blood, sweat, and tears into building building that man up, thinking that we were building together, 
and then he get up and leave once he got his thing together. But you so, know what? I said that that managed fear peer pressure thing happened because ideally, like all of us grow up wanting to provide, protect, and be down for who's down with us and who was shooting with us in the gym. Even if men are cheating, that's not the same thing as actually doing what you just said. So to get to the point, because temptations are temptations, but to get to what you just said, what happens is that what I've seen is that with certain dudes, they start to have other men now who are who just like the groupies, were not would never talk to them or have nothing to do with them if they weren't reaching a certain status. Now they want to talk to them, now they want to hang out and start putting all kind of poisonous ideas in their head about how, hey man, you could be doing this. Hey man, you know, you know, he left behind, get a younger woman, and you know, you can be doing what we do. You know, and uh, for those guys, you know, sometimes it might be about being able to just roll over a woman. So that might be because I think women are in their prime in their 30s if they take care of themselves because they still fit the same fitness from their youth, but now they're smarter and they're making more money. Anyway, I like a woman that makes money, even if I ain't got none. But the point that I'm making is that, uh, I think some of that happens. I've seen some of that happen. The end, you know, you got a husband, you know, you built him up. He appreciates you. He shouts you out. And then he gets Andrew Tate talking to him and Russian fit and academics talking to him. And then, you know, some, some Becky's, you know, trying to flirt with him. And next thing you know, he has different ideas. Yeah. 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 Jane, 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 you feeling good over there? <laughs> She's like, uh, uh, I'm, I'm feeling good over here. <laughs> you okay? All right. Dang. Is she? You good, Jane? Let me go ahead. You sleepy? Actually. She